All right, I believe we are live. So the plan for today, I will be streaming, of course, and we will be trying out the challenge campaign. The rules are as such below. I basically have to work with only wolf units, except uh, for garrison fights. And of course, my lord will also be a part of the battle and will be used as such there will be summons and so on but the main challenge is if i can win legendary with uh with just just wolf rats so i tried out the first a few turns of this campaign and i think i have a pretty decent plan also fla with the second first happy to have you here hoping uh i'm hoping this this uh all goes okay hopefully we don't lose you know by turn 10 but Overall, I think I think this shouldn't be too too bad. I am I am cautiously optimistic. Uh, of course, late game armies will be much stronger than mine due to the fact that you know we only have wolf rats, which is a little bit scary. But uh, you know, I think with enough micro we can deal with it. Bubba's big blast in chat too. Hello, happy to have you here. They are an old school viewer of of myself. Uh, so, you might have, actually, I think you might have been there during my other challenge runs. You know, I sort of stopped doing challenge runs for a while just because of, uh, just because most of the people that came to watch were from the multiplayer side of things. But, uh, recently because of all the new campaign folks coming on in, I think it's, it should be fun trying out some campaign stuff again. Alright, now first things first. We've got to delete absolutely everything. We're also going to try and uh, get this guy to overload so that I can get some extra resources. And sort of the way that Thrott's campaign works is that you have your uh, two resources here. Mutagen, which lets you upgrade your units, and your growth vat resources, which once it reaches a certain amount, you can get some free units out of it. And they uh, are sort of linked, but the growth vat um, we'll be using it super early, simply because uh, we don't need any better units. The first tier gives you some wolf rats, and you don't really need more after that. For the specific type of wolf rat that I'm recruiting, I'm going to go for the normal, the very normal uh, variant. And that's because they do a little bit more damage. Um, for anyone who who's new, uh, I am... A, uh, an avid multiplayer uh, player, so I'm hoping that those skills will carry me today, but we'll see. Bubba's Big Blast needs to be a restaurant? I think so, yeah. <laughs> Alright. Let's see, we got a right to, I'm pretty sure, this one we just use immediately. Because it gives some extra growth. And we should be underway into the first battle in just a second. We're going to attack this fort over here. And as long as we don't get uh, absolutely destroyed by the dwarves this campaign, I think we'll be okay. The idea is I will be trying to resist and uh, sort of trying to trying to avoid the dwarves as much as possible early on. Um, you really do need a lot of uh, upgrades on your wolf rats before you can actually take them on easily. Or cost efficiently, that is. If you were a restaurant, you would only sell vegan food just to make everyone angry. Well... You know, you'd you make a small selection of people not angry. I feel like that, that has to be a win, right? See, anything else I need to cover? I can't proc this yet, but I can upgrade that. Wonderful. Uh, let's see, we'll turn on building upgrades. And continue onwards. Now, siege battles should actually not be too bad for this one, despite having only wolf units. Uh, just because of a little little exploit in the AI that we'll be trying out. So super excited for that. Jonathan saying, I uh, definitely appreciate your video. Thank you. Very interesting to learn about how spells work under the hood. Yeah, um, I plan to continue that series for sure as as time goes on. It's, uh, it's a very fun one to, to make and research and so on. So I think one more turn of recruiting and then we will be good. You live in a... Uh, you live in a hipster town. Interesting. Let's 
Yeah, it's all about location, really. Ah, uh, there we go. All right, so now we can claim our monsters. And then I can also do a little bit of experimenting. So I'm going to take these guys. And then we're just going to give them a whole ton of mutations. So I think that should be fine. Nice, and uh, I'm hoping I can overload them so that they... So that I can uh, sell them off for a ton of resources, but if not, that's fine. You can see uh, we didn't get it that time. He has 13 different upgrades, and is going to go down to 25% health, but that should be just fine. And now the war with Kislev begins. Here we go. Crushing defeat. Oh, wow. That's a bigger army than, than I experienced in testing. This could actually be a little bit uh, more difficult than I had planned for. But I think we should still be okay. Let's go ahead and continue the siege. And if they sally out to fight me, that would actually be the best case scenario. As it would let me go ahead and... Uh, let me hopefully just overrun them in the fields. Gotta bet. Get back to work. Good luck. Have fun. Hope the campaigns go goes well. Thank you very much. I'm sure it'll go fine despite the uh, slight amount of bad luck we just got. But all right. Man, they went for the they went for the basic walls first. Kislev. You know what's up. Alright, so it's mostly archers. Uh, the biggest problem are, is probably going to be the Empire Knights. But uh, we should be able to to work the AI a bit. Figure out how to uh, how to get in there and really really screw them up. I, I just need to find a gap in the walls. And then if I can find a, an open space, I think we will be okay. So let's try it out. Battle number one with dogs only. I really wish we could have gone a field battle, but... Uh... This should be just fine. So, first things first. Let's unman thought. And we're going to try and sort of get the AI to position all over here so that we can attack their far gate. Let's see, indeed, we managed to get that. Which is really nice. We're just going to avoid all of these archers. And then sort of slip past and get in over here on this side. Alright, and then this should make uh, the battle much easier. This campaign will involve cheese, although I have done some campaigns uh, that are no cheese runs. And those ones uh, are actually... I really want to get a YouTube video on that sometime, but the, the editing to put those out is crazy, man. Alright, so there's a little bit of uh, archer repositioning here. Uh, strangely enough, we can't attack any units on the walls. Uh, so that's going to be uh, an interesting predicament. But um, right off the bat, as the initial wall breaks, we can go ahead and get the wolf rats in. And they sort of have a, a thing where they pile on top of units quite well. And that will actually allow them to, uh, to hopefully overrun these guys. Now, cycle charging is going to be super important as the wolf rats, you basically double their damage by charging in. So, sort of disengaging and charging back in. That's going to be the name of the game today. For these guys, uh, they're sort of useless just because of how mutated they are. So I'm going to pull them back. And then I'm going to try and slip some wolf rats through. So you can force path through units. I don't know how well it'll do here sort of at the gate. But um, if we can sort of move past these halberds, we should be able to get a lot more attacks on them. Those guys are running for the hills. Completely fine. Thought we'll need to get in here too. And if we can just get these halberds to route, then uh, then I think we're A-OK. -okay. So let's go ahead and uh, just try pushing through with all of the rats. Maybe get in a couple more attacks there. And as soon as they start running off, there we go. We can spill into the city. Alright, so that's the first hurdle out of the way. These guys are just uh, chilling. Way far back. And then we're going to pick off these sort of units one at a time. The archers too are going to be... Some really nice pickings. And uh, preferably if I can actually get into the city and capture the capture point, that would be really great. We do have pretty overwhelming forces of, of rats here. So I'm feeling fairly confident. Let's go ahead and hotkey all of these guys. Group them up here. And most of the infantry will be, will be pretty slow. So I think we can dive in on the Empire Knights. Specifically, I want these guys. These guys have uh, armor piercing. 
so they will be much more proficient against them. I don't have any other armor piercing effects just yet, but if I can get that charge on the knights, we should be okay. Let's go ahead and speed up that too. Charge into those Empire Knights and then see if I can avoid getting charged by them. Looks like, yeah, there we go. The AI botched up their charge, which means that I will get a pretty nice counter charge from these armor piercing wolf rats. And I do really want to get uh, as many surrounds as I can in this campaign. As if I can actually surround the units, then they'll be taking a whole ton more damage. It'll hit their leadership. And if I'm not routing units off super early, uh, then I'll be running into a lot of problems. So that's the plan for today. We have the capture point, which means the AI is on the timer. And uh, usually you can actually just just capture the victory point if the battle goes on for a bit too long. All right, next up, uh, we'll start chasing down some archers. Now, these guys are are pretty are pretty stuck. I think uh, just a little bit more cycle charging might be enough to get them. These archers are taking a ton of damage. We'll have to disengage since uh, we do not want to stay in prolonged combat at all with our wolf rats. Some more knights are coming in too. So we'll go ahead and counter charge them with our armor piercing rats. And then just bog them down with a few extra just to make sure that we're spreading out the damage. All right, that should work out just about fine. Already at the 100 point mark, so the Empire forces will be running in just a second. And uh, we do really want to make sure that we're just holding the point. So by delaying the infantry as much as possible, uh, they won't be able to recapture the point, then we will be okay. How's Thought doing? So far, uh, he's he's going to be very important here in uh, in our early battles, just because he's the only unit that can fight for a prolonged amount of time and a couple more archers free for the picking so that's quite good all right now the wolf rats uh they do have absolutely terrible leadership so i'll have to worry about them uh sort of routing and rallying um but usually once you pull them back into battle for the second time that's usually enough to keep them nice and safe this capture point is looking pretty good the main problem, though, is that the Empire Knights are going to be a little bit of a problem still. They are extremely tanky early on in the campaign, but I think one more charge from these armor-piercing wolf rats should be able to get them. The uh, charge bonus effectively triples their damage, so I think with that one charge, those knights should be routing in a second, but I was wrong earlier, so I guess we'll see. Meanwhile, it uh, looks like the capture point is being held quite well. The Empire forces are sort of starting to pile on a little bit scarily. Will they actually be able to hold? If they if they do, that's going to uh, prolong the battle a little bit longer than I would have hoped. Oh, come on, not like this. Four, three, two, one. Oh, come on, there we go. Easy fight, guys, easy fight. Never in the slightest was I worried about this battle. All right. So there we go, that's uh, that's Kislev battle number one. <laughs> oh boy, oh boy, this campaign is gonna be intense in some fights, but we, we got there, we got there. <laughs> All right, so uh, nice, we, we got, you know, one to two losses, feeling pretty good. This feels like vampire counts, 100, oh, minus 100% zombie upkeep. Yeah, a lot more speed and a lot less helm and gorst. Although the, the wolf rats, you know, they, they do lend themselves a lot more to micro than than your usual uh, zombies and so on. Oh, nice. All right. Tons of food. And I think we can upgrade this to tier four. Indeed. So I'm going to take the fort and then reinforce it myself. Uh, we want this for sure. We're going to get um, the wolf rat building eventually. But um, I don't really need to recruit wolf rats here really um i can sort of do that at hell pit and i sort of, i al i already have a 19 stack so i guess it's not too important <laughs> how do you make that work uh you just have to make sure you hold the point you know just uh classic first person shooter strats just just hold the line um but man my that there there obviously was a little bit of luck there but but we got there all right so I'm just getting these buildings mostly because they give income and also because they unlock these upgrades, which will give me extra food 
as I don't really need many other upgrades in this challenge one. Hey, and look at that. We can even get the wolf rat building. Perfect spend. Beautiful. All right. So we've captured a fort. We've done the first uh, siege battle, but yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm feeling pretty good. How are you guys doing, by the way? Do you guys play a lot of campaign? I'm sort of, uh, I'm still trying to figure out exactly who my audience is. Um, because, you know, Warhammer 2 is ending the, it's going to the end of its life cycle. Oh, wow, there's a whole Kislev army here, even Pistoliers, but uh, I should be able to win that. Oh, Crushing Defeat, the AI, or the Auto Resolve has no faith in the Wolf Rats. And we're going to be playing a lot of these battles, by the way. Auto Resolve is terrible for the poor rats. You only play campaign, nice. I'm sure most of you guys are looking forward to uh, Warhammer 3. Oh, thank you, thank you, Zatch. Yeah, I, I, I'm i sort of a little bit conflicted on, uh, on the content. I think obviously it's a good idea to lean towards a lot more stuff that's relevant to campaign, um, but my roots are definitely multiplayer. Um, that's sort of, that's sort of what I've, uh, what I've spent a lot of time on ever since, um, ever since, you know, I sort of completed most of the campaigns. Uh, let's see, the plan, by the way, right now, I'm going to try and catch out these Pistoliers. They are a little bit annoying, as they do have skirmish mode. And if I can catch them out early, I think that should be okay. So a big old surround will probably be enough. You're basically a campaign only, but multiplayer is fun to watch. So that's good to hear. All right, there we go. There we go. This is a good surround. Uh, yeah, skirmish mode is a pain, but um, if you can get a good enough surround, I think it's more or less okay. I will lose a few rats sort of on this initial engagement. But uh, if I can catch out just a few of them, I think we're good. There we go. We got a few of the rats in. A few of them are sort of slipping through this way. Oh my gosh, the AI. The skirmish mode AI is intense. Let's see if I can uh, sort of make a dive in here. Actually, this is not looking too great for my poor rats. We might have to uh, disengage here. We'll see. We'll see. Um, if I can run down just a couple pistoliers, um, I would call it a win. Just because I won't have to deal with them later. And uh, most of this army is the garrison, so... I think we should be fine. There we go. That's one Pistolier mostly down. The rats are routing really quickly just because of uh, legendary debuffs. And also because we're pretty low on food right now. But I think it should be just fine. They will be rallying. A couple more of that cavalry getting caught out. Another one over here getting finished off. And uh, there's, what, two more of them left that I have to really contend with? The infantry really isn't too much of a problem, as they are, um, the infantry, they are not maneuverable by any means. So, essentially, I can, uh, I can pick them off one at a time with my wolf rats. Uh, yes, difficulty is the hardest difficulty setting. So, full legendary, I would not have it any other way. Uh, and it will make things difficult, but definitely quite fun. It is a, it is a challenge run, of course. And nice, it looks like we managed to catch out a few more Pistoliers. Now, units have a max uh, route limit. They can only route three times before they shatter off the battlefield. So I have to be really wary of that. And to make sure that I don't just uh, lose all of my guys outright. Throt can disengage pretty safely here at this point. And then a couple of these archers are down too. So overall, despite... Uh, sort of how sketchy those initial engagements went. I think we're actually doing okay. All of these wolf rats, uh, if they route off one more time, they're going to shatter. So that's going to be a little bit scary, but... Well, we only have a few pockets of, uh, of infantry left. I think that should be just fine. Yes, yes. On range, uh, range units will fight really well in melee. That is true. <laughs> um, but sort of uh, the idea... Is that, you know, any if you just have high enough damage, then they won't really be able to trade well against your units. And and that's what I'm going to be mostly relying on here. So these guys are just going to be sitting back for a little bit, regaining their vigor. I don't really need to spend time wasting ammunition on uh, on the AI, as the battle is, is not, uh, you know, it's not favored enough for the AI right now where I need to cheese them that hard. 
which means that we get to go by a little bit faster. In fact, uh, I can probably times two speed this. And yes, I do have my speed bindings on uh, on the hotkey, just because. Oh, hey, I think we we accidentally killed off all the archers. That's actually really good for me. But yes, I have my speed settings on a hotkey just because of uh, some old speed ones that I used to do. All right, so let's get these guys routed. I think a swift charge in the back should be able to do that. Thankfully, the AI does not have access to AoEs yet, but as soon as they do, uh, that's going to make things quite a bit scarier. And we're just going to be uh, sort of using Thwat here and cycle charging. Um, any units that route off are more or less uh, done for as, you know, we have the full wolf rats around. They uh, will pretty easily get chased off here. And uh, this is a little bit of a scary engagement. So let's go ahead and, uh, and pull back. I don't want any of them to route off again and start shattering. And as I say that, quite a few of them route. I don't think we got any huge shatters there. Oh man, we got a few shatters. Okay, I got to play this a little bit more carefully then. I don't want to accidentally throw uh, throw this battle overconfidence. Very slow and insidious. That was a little bit of a misplay, but we should be okay. Uh, now, sort of uh, what, what does sort of suck is that the AI is not on its aggressive mode right now. So it's going to stay fairly tight knit with its forces. But uh, right now should actually be a pretty good engagement. Uh, sort of fighting this lord with a little bit of wolf rat support in theory should be able to win there we go we've cleared out the infantry and he just has to win this uh, duel some more infantry is coming in though so I'm going to disengage with thought and then a pullback yes I was that was very close to a full army route admittedly but uh, you know we're doing okay Oh, look at that. The full wolf rat surround routed off their lord almost instantly. That is really, really good. All right, nice. So then uh, the rest of this should just be a little bit of a simple cycle charging. Thwat, a little bit, getting a little overzealous there. Um, I need to pull one of these guys back so I can chase him off. And uh, generally, as long as you stay close to him, you should be okay. Oh, one very fun thing, and I made a video about this before. Um, the, uh, the AI has... Uh, or no, not the AI. Uh, wolf rats. They have higher um, uh, sort of balance of power costs in battle than most other units. Oh boy, please don't route. Please don't route. There we go. We're good. Yeah, um, wolf rats have higher balance of power costs than other units in the game. Most units have balance of powers equal to how much they cost. But for wolf rats, um, they actually cost like double. Which means that it will actually be a lot easier to push the AI into army losses uh, than it would be usually. Alright, I have to be a little bit careful here. I'm staying close to the Lord to make sure that he continues routing. But uh, it does mean that my wolf rats are getting a little bit scared there. I need thought to, uh, you know, I need thought to engage in melee. Sort of uh, the whole idea of this campaign is I'm trying to split up the forces of my opponent. Oh, we lost another wolf rat. Oh my gosh, darn their leadership. How much leadership do they have anyways? 17. <laughs> oh my gosh. And that's like on the higher end of their leadership. Brutal. Absolutely brutal. Um, but if I can just kill this guy, that should be a pretty big leadership hit to the Empire. Or to Kislev in this case. And then uh, and then it should be clean up. There's a couple weakened units that should be easy pickings. So that should be fine. Wolf rat leadership bars are your Warhammer 2 PTSD tri triggers, yeah. They, um, oh my gosh. It's a, it's a really finicky unit. The thing is, if they had high leadership, they would be one of the best units in the game just because of how much damage they do. So I think, uh, you know, it's just enough control, we should be okay. Funnily enough, when we get charged in the back by base experiment, um, that will cause our wolf rats to basically be on the verge of routing off, so. A little bit scary, but uh, but losing their general is going to hurt the Empire a lot. There we go. We, we've routed a couple more units using Thwat to sort of work as the uh, as the grouping tool is is quite good. And actually, uh, this we might be able to get a mass route on the Empire side. There we go. A nice double charge from both sides. Yeah, nice. This is really good just because of uh, the leadership of their other units. Like, you know, one unit siege, other units routing. That will generally get them to, to break too. 
Um, let's see, Thwat, he can more or less just continue in the fight. And then these wolf rats are going to break off and uh, start picking off some targets. Let's go and get these guys over here. These guys onto these uh, extremely weakened spearmen. Thwat um, can more or less solo the entire army at this point, I think. He, he should be pretty good, right? These are just state troops. I guess it is legendary, so the AI does get some pretty intense combat buffs. But yeah, there we go. Nice little cleanup. And we might even be able to push them into army losses soon. Let's see. Oh my gosh, we lost another wolf rat. <laughs> we lost a wolf rat to chasing off units. All right, that's fine. Uh, let's see. So this one unit of spearmen should be able to break in just a second. These guys are going to charge right on in. The AI is being a little bit smart with its uh, swordsmen there. So I might just pile on to one side here. On this, onto this one unit of, uh, of swordsmen. And then that should be okay. Their leadership is quite low. What are we looking at? 25. So that's going to break half of their leadership on the charge. Plus a ton of damage. And oh wow, look at that. That was a lot of... Uh, that was a huge leadership hit. So nice. We broke off both units that Thwat was engaged in. And then I think one more charge should be able to clean up the rest. Man, two really dicey battles at the start, though. Um, just mostly because of the... Uh, mostly because of, uh, of sort of just the AI building a ton of garrisons. But I think with this final break, we should be able to do it. There shouldn't be any mass routes on my guys. And there we go. All right. Oh my gosh, what a fight. I'm sure all my rats just have hundreds of kills. We'll take a look. What do we got? Close victory. Nah, not even close. There we go. Nice. All of them hovering at about the 50 range. A couple at 100. We got Rusty. Happy to have you. Biblington too. Oh man. We just had a, a fairly long battle, but we managed to clear out, you know, about uh, 1,300 Empire troops with our nice 20 stack of rats. Oh yeah. Yeah, I love full surrounds with rats. Oh wow, we even got Chosen One here too. Happy to have you. Oh, and Human Boy. Oh my gosh. For anyone who doesn't know, Human Boy does do uh, YouTube videos. Do check him out if you are interested in the multiplayer side of things. Um, I'm going to raise this settlement just to, uh, just to try and bait the AI to resettle it. Um, that should actually hurt the armies quite a bit. And I don't think I can defend a lot of territory right now. But yeah, we got Human Boy, JT, saying spicy, nice. Now, uh, this right here, you've seen I've been cycle charging a lot. This will increase the damage of my rats by roughly 30% one cycle charging, plus the 10% speed. That is a high priority thing to take. But all right, nice. That gave us just a little bit more money to squeeze out a couple more buildings. So I'm feeling good about that. And uh, yeah, we're going to push this way and probably towards, uh, you know, maybe France. You know, I think I'll clear out Kislev and the Dwarves first. That's sort of my plan. Plan A. We should do some Skaven Mirror sometime. Chosen not asking a uh, human boy. That would be fun. Honestly, we, we do not get enough Skaven Mirrors in this game. Just uh, just because they've fallen out of favor. I know, right? I'm playing campaign. It's insane. Um, but yeah, I, I wanted to sort of see how well my campaign content does nowadays. With all, uh, with all the new viewers and so on. All right, nice. We're going to get Zoinks. What is this place called? Zoi... Zoi Shank. All right. Sounds a little bit more normal. So we could auto-resolve, but it would actually kill most of my wolf rats. Thankfully, I am well well versed in the in the art of times four speed. So I think we should be all right. Well, oh, Rusty, not a fan of the Skaven Mirror. How could you, man? How could you? All right, if you guys had to see a mirror matchup between uh, two factions in multiplayer, what what would be the most acceptable mirror? As for the mirror that I enjoy the most, it'd probably be the dwarf mirror, I'd say. But um, but yeah, what do you what, what would you guys sort of enjoy watching the most? Obviously, vampire counts is the is probably the least favorite mirror out of all of them. I think most people wouldn't enjoy that. Also, uh, pro tip, you can split up the archers because they're always on skirmish mode. So you just sort of stand nearby them until they run away. And then you get the full surround. 
Cav beta is now live. It is. Yes. Yes. Was there a, a question in chat? I might have missed it. Oh, actually, vampire accounts. All right. Bubba's big blast. Absolute madman wants to watch zombies fighting against zombies. I won't. Uh, I won't judge you for it, but um, I'm totally judging you for it. The vampire accounts mirror. Really? That's like the least dynamic one out of all of them. Hey, Phil. Yep, that's right. We got we got mass dogs. You can see uh, on the full surround, they route off units basically instantly. So, you know, it's uh, yeah, it's just uh, a matter of set up the surround and then charge in. And then that's going to be the entire day today, along with, uh, I don't know, there might be some other shenanigans, but we'll have to see. Let's go ahead and get the Rad Ogre summon in there, too. All right, nice. Oh, yeah, Black Orc only speed run. That'd be good. Now, I did a poll earlier, by the way, guys. People almost had me do a Rakarth uh, dogs only run. And I feel like that would have actually been really interesting, but not enough people voted for it. Um, but essentially, his army doesn't start with any dogs. You have to raid some Norskin territory first to actually get the recruitment of the dogs. And that means that the starting army that you're supposed to fight at the very beginning um, could actually just walk to your capital and end the game instantly. So uh, I was I was interested to see if that was possible. But, you know, instead we get a much more uh, a much more relaxed run in the form of. Of dogs only now uh, i think i will loot and occupy this one it would hurt the sort of the public order a lot here but i do sort of want that replenishment this makes you feel bad about all the times you tried using wolf rats and just had them route instantly oh it it's it's rough you have to be super careful to make sure that doesn't happen see does uh does thwart have any wolf rat buffs um in his top tree Oh, he does. Look at that. 12% damage and melee defense. All right, that's pretty sick. We're going to work towards that as soon as possible. What's that, level 12? All right. And uh, also we want allies. So with the Ek, the one true legendary lord, we're going to ally with him. Uh, he can sometimes win the War of the North and come out as the main Norskin force. So I definitely want to be friends with him. And doing a full Wolf Rats unit campaign pretending it's not it's not how his normal day goes. Yeah. All right. All right. You have me. You got me. All right. Now, the real question, though, do we ally with the Beastmen? I feel like if we do, everyone's going to hate me. So we'll just have them as our uh, sort of ally, you know, under the table ally. All right. Nice. So I should be able to get another growth bat soon. And uh, I sort of have an idea for the growth bats. I'm going to proc it specifically uh, to deal with Rebellions, just because it's my only source of free units, um, as I can't use my Regiments of Renown like I usually would. It makes makes things a little bit weird, but uh, overall, I think we're still okay. CA really needs to to fight to get Sertha Ek into the canon. Oh my gosh, that would be amazing. I would read a Sertha Ek book. I feel like there's a, there's, there's a deep history there given, uh, you know, how, how powerful he is with the chariot. All right, nice. Valiant defeat, my army of wolf rats. Uh, interestingly enough, we don't need to build, um, what are they called? We don't need to build uh, siege towers because I guess our Lord could use a siege tower, um, but that would be sort of useless. So none of that, none of that. Uh, nice, and we can siege Erengrad next turn. So, uh, I have to figure out how I want to deal with rebellions. If I'm sort of bouncing back to to crush them, um, then I'm not really conquering nearly as quickly. And I do want to deal with Kislev as fast as possible, just so that they don't get their explosion of units like they usually do. All right, <laughs> Nintendo dogs is that a is that a thing? I've never heard of it, but I wouldn't be surprised uh, if that was something that existed. Nice, so we got ton, ton more wolf rats, ton of uh, mutagen, and actually I can probably start uh, sort of working towards that and figuring out how I want to, how I want to upgrade the laboratory and so on. Oh, and I think I forgot to do some of this stuff, right? What do we got? We can, uh, I think I have to do one of these. 
to sort of progress to the next tier. It's been a while since I played a Thwart campaign, but um, you know what? Oh yeah, this is this is great. What, it costs 20 food though? Man, that sort of sucks. You know what, Let, let's just do it. Let's see if uh, if these unlock at some point. Plus, um, you know, I want to get my max regeneration after capturing the city, so I'll pretend that it was totally worth all that food. In fact, I probably should have spent it after, because now I have minus five leadership. But, you know, who's who's counting? Let's go ahead and upgrade these guys. Uh, let's see. I want them to... There we go. 50, which means I can growth that it up. How many dogs are you losing on average? Uh, about 200. Or like, yeah, about 200, 400. Um, it's not an extreme amount. I'm feeling pretty good about it. All right, so now for the fun part, actually upgrading the dogs to uh, to sort of have just be just be absolute god tier dogs. We have a couple things: the hunger and undead. Think about it, guys. We can make our dogs scurvy dogs. You know, some people were asking why I wasn't doing uh, you know an undead run, but this is pretty sick. Um, alternatively, we also have uh, this minus ten leadership. Minus 10 leadership? Insane. Um, upkeep reduction, of course, is A tier. Uh, warp lightning is very not okay. It's not that great. Um, but the speed and physical resistance is good. I think overall, the biggest winners here... <laughs> oh my gosh, this one. The extra damage for no replenishment. This would actually... Once we get late in the campaign, I think that's going to be pretty good. But um, And this one hits friendly, so I won't be taking that. Uh, so I think I definitely want the Contaminated and uh, probably the Armor debuff too. So I'm going to grab these guys, give them Weeping Blade. Nice, they didn't explode or anything. And then I want to sort of, uh, I want to get a few of these guys with the Contaminated effect. So that, you know, the AI just has a constant minus 10 leadership and that will counter any sort of, uh, you know, legendary shenanigans that they run into. So nice. Um, these state troops are going to have a really, like, hard hit to their leadership. I'm feeling pretty confident. Suddenly we're playing the sc clan scurvy. There should be, uh, there should be a vampire coast faction helmed by uh, a vampire skaven called clan scurvy. That would be amazing. Is there... Do the vampires, uh, do they only infect humans? Are there any elf or skaven vampires out there? Like, please, someone call Lore Master of Sotek, and I, I want to know. All right, we're going to do the same strat as before. Of course, we could just try to push through the main gates, but um, I don't think anyone really wants to see wolf rats grinding up against the main gate for too long, so we'll stick with that. Do you have any good... Early uh, campaign start for Nakai and how Albion is uh, occupied by Dark Elves. Uh, I haven't tried a Nakai campaign run in a while, but um, I'd assume probably Saurus is a really nice start. Probably tons of skirmishers is a really good idea. Um, you know, I, I'm not sure. Overall, I feel like, you know, if you throw in a little bit of cheese, Legendary can be really easy. Um, so it depends on how cheesy you want to get. If you want to play standard, uh, cavalry is really good, sort of a mixed army sort of style. But of course you need to be able to manage your cavalry quite well for that to work. Alright, let's go ahead and get this capture point, why don't we? I'm going to stall up these uh, melee empire forces with my dogs a bit. There we go, we're going to slow it down so that I can micro a little bit easier. It's getting a tiny bit faster. Um, I also really want to get those cycle charges in, so we'll pull that way. And then, uh, yeah, just try and overrun them. Oh, no, we lost uh, one of the dog units. That's a bit unfortunate. But at this point, uh, we have the capture point. Uh, in fact, there aren't the army's actually pretty small, so I'll probably just overrun them. No need to really camp the capture point or anything. Let's go ahead and deal with these spearmen. Thwat can uh, hold the fort, I guess. Whoa, there's a lot going on in chat right now. Also, we have quite a few viewers, uh, which is pretty nice. Happy to have you guys here. If this goes well, I will happily play more challenge campaigns. There's a, an undead Skaven in the Dread Fleet. Really? That's sick. Is he just undead or is he actually a vampire, though? That's what I want to know. 
Uh, and since we're here, how do you uncap wolf rats from four to five on the ladder? Uh, I guess you have to ask CA about it, really, right? Um, I would love it to have rats be limited to five, but unfortunately not. Unfortunately not. It is a Zerg rush, yes. This is this is Giant Grant Games, and uh, today we're going to be trying to beat Warhammer 2 Legendary with Zerglings only. Nagash made the rules, so he can do uh, he can do what he wants. Oh, imagine them having stock. That would be pretty sick. Um, it would bug out the AI a little bit more, which would be amazing. All right, uh, we cannot afford to spend food. But look at that. The food that I spent earlier for that regen, amazing. Look at that. We're going to heal to full. This is going great. And then we're going to upgrade their speed and damage. Oh my gosh, this campaign has zero ways it could go wrong. Absolutely no way we're going to get destroyed here. All right. That's what we call foreshadowing, guys. Uh, I'm going to probably upgrade help it. We'll see. He's not a vampire, was raised by Noctilus. What, Noctilus? He raised a Skaven? I feel like that... That feels strange. I don't know. I feel conflicted about this. Does he like Skaven, or did he just do it on a whim? I must know. Wow, that's an expensive building. Um, real quick, can we upgrade the laboratory? We can! Let's see, that's useless. That's less useless. Um, yeah, we'll take this. Nice. Spend our money. Get a commandment up. Um, let's go ahead and get food because we desperately need that. Man, chat is chat is flying by. I'll I'll need to be mostly focusing on chat to even keep up. Uh, ooh, look at that! They like us. Yes, Sirtha, trade with me. Oh my gosh, amazing! We have we've established trade with Sirtha Ek. Truly, this campaign run is blessed. Letting the rogue idol depress you. Yo, rogue idols, man. What a cool unit that is absolutely not viable in multiplayer. It's decent, but, um, you know, greenskins have so many other monsters. It's rough. Yeah, you can bring four of each type of rat. He meant on Ent Ladder, I see. Yeah, well, uh, you know, I don't write the rules anymore, so. Um, yeah, I, yeah, well, you'll have to talk to uh, the rule writers, but from what I understand, they are busy people. Okay, yeah, distant lords, I know. I've heard the, I've heard the, um, what's it, the, the advisor say distant lords so many times in my life. I've played so many campaigns. I think I'm ready for, uh, for that to be done. Uh, apparently this is trespassing. Were we trespassing against these guys? All right, that's fine. Meanwhile, the beastmen just trying to keep up with my speed. Not even able to. We're too fast. Uh, let's see. Remember to bless this man's cheese. Oh, by liking. Oh, that 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 would be great. Of course. Uh, yeah, the the like and subscribe. I don't know. It, it always feels really weird. Um, I have been pushing for it a little bit more because I really, really want to get the early access to CA's uh, content, their main content creator program. Uh, this is not a wolf rat, so we cannot use the scheme of doom unless we unrecruit him immediately. Um, but yeah, <laughs> yeah, ogre is my distant lord. Yo, I was thinking an ogre's only run that would be interesting. I don't know if it's possible because it's so difficult to spawn ogres. But, uh, you know, maybe one day, if someone figures it out. A sub? Oh, well, thank you, McDonald. Thank you very much. Oh, the Beastmen, they beat me to it. What monsters? How could they? Manticores on other factions. Feral Wyverns. Uh, I feel like Feral Wyverns would be a little bit too expensive. The reason Manticores are good is simply just uh, because they are so insanely cheap. Um, that's, that's really what makes them... Um, that helps them out a whole ton. Uh, I sort of want... Do I want this? 20 turns? I guess. Let's go ahead and... Uh, oh, plus three leadership? You guys do not know how important this is. <laughs> this is the best upgrade in this entire challenge run. Amazing. Oh man, if, if I have people subbing for this, then uh, maybe I should do more challenge runs. And speaking of, um, viewership is actually really high for what for what I usually get. Um, so thank you so much, guys, for, for sticking around. But... Uh, you know, I don't want this to just become a thank you stream. We got to figure out 
uh, how to actually win this. Now, we're going to get a rebellion here. And that means it's a perfect time to recruit uh, a guy. So, um, quickly in chat, first person to, to give me a lord to pick, a lord type, and I will go for it. So, um, so you know, if you wanna, if you wanna see a specific guy, let me know. I'm thinking um, some spellcasters is probably good. Yeah, it doubles my wolf rat leadership. It's great. You got the warlord. Let's see. He has sneaky. That's pretty good. Perceptive. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Plus two. Okay, we got master assassin. It's done. The vote's over. The vote is over. We got Biblington. Oh, yes. Biblington, you madman. The confident. Plus four leadership to the army. All right, guys. This run has zero ways it could possibly fail. Um, let's go ahead and get these guys out. And then uh, we're going to rename him. Let's see here. How do you how do you rename these guys? How do you rename these guys? Uh, da -da. Is it here? Uh, there we go. Rename. All right. Um, D. Bolton. There we go. Now, uh, real quick, I only have so many names that I can go here that are, uh, you know, people with dogs. So at some point, Chad is probably going to have to help me out with that. Um, but uh, for now, I still have I still have like one more that I can do. I tried looking up names earlier, but I couldn't uh, figure it out. Now. I think we're gonna go for the mad dive to Kislev to give uh to give Kislev the swift end that that we want to give them. And then uh, and then it's just a war against the dwarves. Now the Empire is gonna resettle, but I think we can live with that. Ooh, and we got some undead here. We can't ally with them just yet, maybe later. <laughs> okay, that's true. Philosophical Spartan. I, I may very well change it. It may very well. Yep, Lord, Lord Emma, and a unit of rats, Clifford. All right, yeah, I'll do that. Let's see. Uh, I'll, I'll take note. I have a, a notepad up for all your suggestions. All right. Nice, nice. Loyalty low. Oh my gosh, already? How's your loyalty? Four? Oh, that's not low. All right, now uh, we'll have to see how good these rats are on uh, on defense. I hope they can do okay. Oh, we got an ambush, which is really nice. We have a ton of uh, summons too to help out. Rat ogres will have generally a pretty rough time against rats. Um, we can't upgrade them, which sort of sucks, but I think we'll be okay. The AI does get a leadership debuff from getting ambushed, so that should help. And they don't have too many range units too. Let's see, uh, C W N N win. I've never heard of, I've never heard of that, but I'll I'll write it down so that you know other people will, will know about it. The hound, it's the hounds in the underworld. Oh my gosh. Oh, and Welsh myth. That's cool. That's really cool. I will try it then. All right, but uh, we got an assassin. Worst case scenario, we can cheese the AI with his ammunition for a long while. And uh, we'll see if this works. We'll see if this works. Uh, the goal is to route off this unit of rat ogres as fast as possible. So actually, I'm going to hotkey. And yes, hotkeys are important in campaign. There we go. And then one and a two. And then this guy's going to start shooting the Lord. And there we go. The rat ogres getting charged in by the rats. The great thing about wolf rats, they get just absolutely the best surrounds. Um, there's going to be a lightning bolt there. That should be fine. And you can see once their charge bonus and attacks start coming in, the damage that they do is insane. We routed off one rat ogre. The next one should be gone in just a second. And then it's just a matter of chasing them off. Which can be a little bit harder than expected. Especially if all my wolf rats start breaking. Come on, you're winning the fight. Not like this. Come on, just route it off. Route off the rat ogres, please. <laughs> please. Oh, there we go. There we go. I wasn't not worried in the slightest. Now, it's going to become a common theme today. Where, uh, where our wolf rats simply, simply just break for apparently no reason. But, um, you know, if anything, it prepares me for multiplayer. Uh, where, where that also happens, you know. Wolf rats really, they are actually a really good unit in multiplayer. Um, I would highly recommend uh, trying them out. 
Oh, right. So that's that done. I can uh, now chase off these clan rats. I think the other unit of rat ogres got finished off. And I'm going to see how good this ability is. Oh, no, it's cellular instability. Never mind. We don't want to use that. Because if we do, uh, it's going to explode my very valuable unit of uh, wolf rat bombers. So let's go ahead and just hold on to that for now. That should be a fairly nice surround on those clan rats, I think. Yeah, it looks like we're good there. Nice. I still have one more route on my wolf rat, so I'm feeling pretty safe. Hey, there we go. And we broke off his lord. All right. Now, um, I have to be a little bit careful here because... Uh, to make sure that the AI doesn't actually no, no I do want the AI to to route and come back so that I can get another battle off of him uh, Which would be really good for my uh, level leveling on this Lord All right, uh, let's see name Equals chasing rat forks as in like a name for one of my dogs, maybe Yeah, yeah scurvy dogs. It's a scurvy dog spam stream uh, Anita, she's the owner of most of the 101 Dalmatians. Nice. Uh, let's see here. And Ita. There we go. Actually, quite fitting. Uh, let's see. And I want food. Give me the food and leadership. Are pack masters allowed? Uh, I said no for this one just because uh, you can end up being pretty cheesy with them. And I already disbanded my pack master, so. Snoop Wolfrat, all right. Oh man, I've been missing a lot of names. Wolfrat, there we go. Uh, Puric Victory, uh, you know, I'll while I look at the names, I'll just times four through this battle. What else do we got? Caesar Millen. See, I'm not going to get that many lords, so I'll have to save these names for later. Maybe my next, uh, my next like rats only run, I'll do it. By the way, really nice way of, uh, of just winning battles quickly. You just group lock in times four and then take a look at chat. Uh, is he going to lightning bolt? Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh, oh geez. All right. Well, there goes, you know, a good number of rats. They served well. We almost lost that battle while I was looking away. Oh my goodness. <laughs> How many did he kill? 70. Oh my gosh. Oh, so many good boys. What else? I think I got most of the names. I think we're good. Pro tip, your enemies were secretly made out of food the whole time. Yeah, I, well, I think uh, I think Skaven, they, they know that their enemies are food. Name equals... I, I have no idea how to say that. But I will write it down. All right, we got a ton of names now. Let's go ahead and get more food. All right, so that's that rebellion out of the way. I want to make sure we are replenishing. Oh, just just because of hate, just because oh because of Hades. Sorry, I was see uh, in the multiplayer scene. There's a guy named Hadries um, that I was confusing with with your name. Yes, yes. All right, hydrate tease. There we go, Hydrates. I don't know how you want me to say it, but uh, but there we go. So we're going to Siege Kislev. We're going to try to get them to sally out. If they don't, um, then uh, we might have to wait a bit. We'll see. Is this going to rebel? No, actually. Really good. Really good over there. Um, so I think this guy's going to start going this way to Erengrad. And then we'll be good to go. Damage buildings is fine. Building upgrade. Is it worth upgrading this? What do we get? Monstrous plans. 10 more gold per tick. That's pretty useless, I gotta say. Um, let's go ahead and upgrade that building instead. Oh, yes, after Hadri's? Oh, okay, never mind then. Never mind. <laughs> oh my gosh. Have I been getting enough sleep? Who knows? Who knows? Rat Polian, all right. All right. Uh, oh, hey, nice. They sallied out. I'll probably have to start naming these guys. I don't expect to be losing too many rats, so once we start naming the rats, I think we should be pretty good. All right. Hard to keep up with the multiplayer scene more. You were... Oh, uh, what's it? You were stuck on syrup rats. That, that's, that's pretty good. I think, I think that, that's all right. 
Let's see here. I'll, I'll, I'll take note. Server. Oh, no, not Sarah Bratz. Server Rats. <laughs> there we go. All right. All right. I think we're set. I think we're set on the names, but feel free to, you know, throw them down if you feel inspired. Now, there's tons of guys coming in from the sides. Oh, wait. Kislev brought a bunch of armies. All right. Well, we might be in for a long one this fight. Let's see how it goes. Ah, yes. The dreaded single swordsman in the woods. I assume there's more. Yes. There we go. Uh, oh, actually, is that just... The madman decided to bring... Ah, there we go. No, there's his infantry. All right. Can we win this fight as fast as possible um, before the reinforcements show up? Honestly, I'm not sure. One interesting thing that will happen, though, is that the reinforcements are sort of... Uh, it's sort of a good thing for me, actually. Specifically because um, these are not the full armies. So I can sort of just overwhelm them one at a time. And then I think, uh, and then I think we'll be okay. The archers are routing off nice and handily, very quickly. That is extremely good. And, uh, man, this is gonna be quite a fight, though. We have Kislev forces coming in from all directions. There's one behind me, which, uh, we should be able to single out and pick off. So let's go ahead and do that now that we've, uh, chased down a few archers. So, we gotta be careful here. We don't want the Kislev forces to regroup too much. If that happens, uh, there will be a few issues. Let's get some, oh, wow, that's a lot of guys. Never mind. Never mind. We'll keep picking on the guys in the middle, then. All right. Let's see. Uh, let's see what we got. This is probably the smallest force that I really have to worry about. And there are handgunners there, too. Which does uh, fill me with a little bit of joy that I'll be able to chase them down. Uh, we're going to have to zoom out for this one. We're going to have to zoom out real far for this one. We're going to have to micro our rats as best as we can. This is why I play multiplayer, guys. Um, I play multiplayer so that I can do weird challenge runs in campaign. This is the, the only reason I have honed my micro over so many years. For the singular purpose. Oh, wait, let's get these handgunners. And then these guys are going to go head on up north. Those guys are dealt with. The guys around Throt are good. And I wish I could keep up with chat, but... um. There is a lot to, to manage here. I think these spearmen are actually ripe for the picking too, so let's go ahead and get them. Feels like those pistoliers will pull more... Uh, oh yeah, um, I'm not really putting in a lot of micro to chase them down. Um, in theory, you can catch them with wolf rats by uh, pushing them ag against the edge of the map, but they're already almost out of ammo. I think we should be fine. All right, nice. That's a unit of handgunners down. And then those swordsmen should be out of here. I can start chasing these guys, and the really great thing, once these guys start rounding uh, off the edge of the map, I can start really, uh, I can start to pick off the reinforcements as they come from the edge. These guys are all melee, so I can more or less uh, just ignore them until the later stages of the battle. So that should be pretty good, and there we go. There's our first unit of reinforcements to pick on. Big brain plays, play loads of multiplayer. And then get good at single player, yeah. Um, yeah, there, there does exist a, uh, a cheeseless legendary campaign um, that I've been editing recently, actually. Um, where I do, yeah, I play, I play campaign with zero cheese. And it was, a, it was actually a lot harder than I would have expected. But having that multiplayer experience is actually really good for that, I must say. All right. Oh, those guys are holding longer than I would have hoped. So let's go ahead and run away over there. And then we're going to try and pick off uh, these archers here in the distance. I think that should work out quite well. As for Thwot, he's getting absolutely mauled by endless hordes of spearmen. Let's go ahead and pull him out and get him into safety. And then these guys, they're going to split up. Uh, it's super important that I go for the flanks here. As that will make sure that they route off as fast as possible, just because we're taking a lot more damage. There's a couple of pistoliers here on the sides, too. I'm definitely going to chase them off. And then as long as my rats don't route off the edge of the battlefield, we should be okay. But they may very well. Now, these guys are going to start chasing down the pistoliers. These guys over here. Do we have these guys routed off yet? Uh, they're barely holding, but I need to disengage. But here we go. The pistoliers, uh, they are slowed down by the forest, too. So actually, it should be fairly easy to um, to catch them out here. Nice. All right. Things are stabilizing. 
Pro tip, when you only use doggos, you never suffer a casualty. Oh yeah, that's true because they always are uh, are routing off the battlefield instead of dying. That is true. Uh, but I have actually lost a few dogs before. Um, just because if they get full surrounded, it can, it can cause them a few issues. What's going to be really great though is when I can get undead on all of these guys and give them the hunger. Then they're going to be regenerating. Uh, it seems like a hellish challenge. What turn are we on? We're on like turn what? Turn 15 or something? I'm not sure. Um, but the challenge isn't as hard as you might uh, expect if you if you've played uh, as much, you know, Rat Warhammer as I have. I don't think it's easy by any means, but uh, but I don't think it's impossible. All right, nice. This Lord should go down pretty quickly. Actually, the infantry is going to be a little bit of a pain. Um, I need to make sure that this fight goes well because of the Lord. I really want to make sure that he goes down. So let's go ahead and deal with that infantry. Give Rot that buff. Those Pistoliers are going to be gone. Or those Outriders, my bad. And then uh, there's even a little bit more infantry here that I can deal with. But there's a little bit too many of them. I don't want to get shot to death. So we're just going to retreat into the forest. Is this Lord routing yet? Uh, looks like he's just barely keeping it together. Oh, that's not good. Thwat, run for your life! These guys are going to have to pull back. Uh, this is Kislev's uh, capital, by the way. So this is the Kislev. Um, so if we win this fight, it would be huge for us. Um, capturing... Uh, capturing such a large uh, settlement. But um, but right now I'm sort of just... I'm hoping I can just injure their forces a ton. And then probably retreat into a... Uh, retreat and then kite them out in the next battle. Is going to be the plan. Um, now these outriders... This is this should be really nice pickings for me as they are in the forest. So I'm covered from any ranged fire. And any fights that I take in here should be to my advantage. We got one wolf rat routing. I think that's okay. And uh, there's a ton of archers over here that I'm going to try and surround. All right, nice. Here we go. The big charge. And then there should be a good surround over here. Thought is running for his life. The only, the slowest unit in my entire army. Just trying to make sure that he doesn't get overrun by this angry mob. And then a uh, nice trick. You get all your guys to attack one unit, but then you pull a few out to uh, to split. And then go for the surround. That generally works out quite well. Nice, and then I think we can times four it again as we sort of just run clean up. These guys can chase those pistoliers. Those archers are down. Uh, I think my wolf rats are slightly faster. 102 speed against the... Against the... Oh yeah, my wolf rats are very fast. Oh my goodness, that's really good for me. Let's go ahead and catch these outriders then. And then catch these guys. Uh, I accidentally lost Thwat, but, you know, what can you do? <laughs> now, if Thwat routes off the battlefield, um, I am so screwed because my entire army is going to be getting hit by that crazy leadership debuff. And then everything's probably just going to route from there. But um, for now, I think we're okay. It's going to be a scary battle, though. I don't have a whole ton of armor piercing in this army just yet. Oh, is that a mortar? Oh my gosh, it is. Man, the Kisla forces, uh, they just they just keep coming. Alright, and then we're going to pull these guys back. The thing is, the battle gets easier and easier as time goes on. Just because there's less that I have to uh, to manage with my army. So I'm hoping uh, that goes alright. Alright, the Outriders just being, you know, Outriders. Very annoying. Thwat, uh, bravely keeping the entire enemy at bay, yeah. I don't know if I'd call him brave, but, but definitely keeping them at bay. Let's go ahead and cycle charge. Um, against Lords, uh, you definitely want to cycle charge every 10 seconds just because of their very high melee defense and the melee attack boost you get from cycle charging is what really helps them out but uh we whittled down the empire forces pretty nicely we still have the majority of our wolf rats i'm going to try and pull the these outriders this way away from the infantry just so that they're a little bit less annoying oh but it's not working out too well Alright, uh, we might just have to tank their ammo then. And try and get these guys to split up a little bit more. Oh, I think we might have a good pull. Come on, keep running. Keep running. Yes, there we go. Alright. Finally, we managed to uh, to get a good chase on those outriders. And then uh, Thwat is going to do his little trick here. A little bit of a surround on both sides. And then collapsing on in. 
There we go. And those outriders are gone. Very sweet. And then we're going to have to pull these guys before their leadership breaks. Because if it does, they're going to be routing off the map immediately. Especially because of how fast they are. Alright, what do we got? We only have a... Uh, most of their army is crossbowmen. So I think, as long as I don't get a mass route here, I think we are uh, clear for winning this battle. But um, it's still going to be a little bit sketchy. I think this little pocket should be beatable. We have a couple great swords, but I think I have a couple rats with the weeping blade effect. No, they all routed, I think. Actually, I'm not sure. Um, but we'll see. We'll see. I'll figure it out once I actually charge in. The great swords will do a lot of damage to my wolf rats, but... Ah, here we go. Yeah, these guys. Weeping blade. Minus 50% armor. It's going to hurt those uh, great swords quite a bit. And uh, then they should rout just due to the damage. And there we go. I did lose, uh, I did get a couple of wolf rats routing there. Just a little bit painful, but we will make do. Their leadership is tanking, so I'm going to uh, restore their vigor. Many units lose leadership uh, when they're at low vigor. So we're just going to take a quick break and I can take a look at chat while we wait. Is it wrong that you would kind of love to see an outrider grenade launchers firing into those big blobs? I think the... I think the, the feeling for that is very instinctive to all humans. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Um, sort of like uh, wanting to squish cute things. Or perhaps you guys just want to see me suffer. You know, we did see a really big um, warp lightning cast on all of my wolf rats earlier. Sadly, it was at times four speed, so we didn't get to catch the full glory of it. But it was quite intense. Really brutal, too. Um... <laughs> But, uh, but we, we replenished through it, so not too much of a problem. Alright, nice. So that's a unit of crossbowmen down. Now, this battle, it is quite advantaged for me, but as soon as my rats route off one more time, um, we're going to start seeing some shatters from them. And then that means that uh, my overall army is going to start depleting. And that there's going to be a little bit more to worry about. Oh my gosh, Tariff? What the Tariff? What are you... What are you doing here? We got celebrity. We got a celebrity here, guys. Um, for anyone who doesn't know, Tariff. Tariff produces absolutely amazing short Warhammer content. Um, definitely check him out. Uh, and yes, this is legendary. This is indeed legendary. Yeah. But yeah, I, uh, I've been playing legendary since like day one of Warhammer. Um, just because I wanted the challenge. Um... I, I could not stand playing anything but Legendary at this point. Nice. Chilling in the algorithm. Nice. Good to hear. Good to hear. Chilling in the algorithm as in... Uh, as in uh, for your stuff, like the short form content, or, or this just popped up in your feed. Because it's pretty rare to have streams show up in other people's feeds. Also, by the way, this is not going... This is sort of going south now. I'm going to see if I can get uh, some picks on... The rest of the crossbowmen because they are very high uh, value here but i think my wolf rats are probably just, just gonna route off the battlefield very soon they are extremely low on on leadership and uh hopefully ai skirmish mode saves me there we go it saved me ai skirmish mode <laughs> I, I hope ca fixes that um just because it is so easy to cheese as uh as their range units basically don't shoot most of the time this doesn't look winnable. All right, challenge accepted. Challenge accepted. Look, we just finished off four units of crossbowmen in seconds. We just have, what, three more heroes and uh, a million units of infantry left? Uh, actually, if I can kill off these heroes, that would be really good. This guy's getting a little bit overextended. I'm going to see if I can do a little bit of baiting with Roth. So the infantry, if I sort of camp with my wolf rats here a little bit closely, the infantry should chase them. Nah. Gonna have to do some more baiting with Thwa. Human boy saying this isn't winnable. Oh my gosh, you guys. Men of no faith. I have hundreds of wolf rats. This is totally winnable. Totally. Totally. Alright, let's get them lined up. Let's get Thwa over here. Let's just do some of this action. Look at that. We routed off a unit of spearmen with no losses. You can't get trades much better than that. Look, the AI is even making this super easy by spreading out in a line for some reason. See, you know, when things don't seem winnable, you just turn on the hacks and then the AI just starts derping out. 
Look at that. I'm not even trying. This is times four speed. Okay, I'm sort of starting to lose rats right now, but overall, it's it's actually going quite well. Come on, Thwart, don't die. Uh, that's an easy pick. I'm going to take that. We've picked off most of their ranged units, which helps me out a ton. Thwart, he's getting chased down by some swordsmen. Ooh, we got some more fresh pickings over here. Gonna do some cleanup. Oh, that leadership hit. What happened to the leadership of my wolf rats? <laughs> Get back over here. Don't you dare rout. Oh my gosh. I don't even know what happened. You know, that you sneeze and they they really just want to run. Uh, yes, it, it is hooked up to the chat. Um, I don't actually have a hotkey. Uh, you know, for most of you guys, you know that I do a lot of programming. So uh, you wouldn't be surprised about it. I actually turned off legendary mode a while ago, obviously. Uh, is this a good pick? I feel like... It's a little bit scary because this unit of swordsmen is here. Um, you know what? That's a bit of a bad pick. I'm gonna go for these swordsmen on the on the left flank instead. Actually, you know what? I really need Thwart just because he gives leadership to my wolf rats when they dive on in. Um, but yeah, I have no shame in cheesing this. By the way, um, this is a challenge campaign after all. All right, but first things first. Uh, I need to regain vigor. That's the very first thing. Because um, once they hit max vigor loss, it's like a huge loss to their to their leadership. Breaking dogs. Yeah. Look at the AI. If I had one AoE, do you know how good this would be? It'd be amazing. Absolutely amazing. So the AI, uh, what they do, they generally try to make a formation to match uh, yours. And generally that can be quite wide. And that's uh, that's what I'm going to be doing here to try and... And screw them over because you can see these guys on the far side they're not going to do very well um at supporting the other flank and as they sort of pull in that direction it should be a okay come on can we can we route these guys off uh, i'm not sure we're gonna sub out the rats uh some cycle charging tips you know just uh pull in with one unit move in with the other then you're pretty good oh thank goodness they routed all right thwart Give leadership. All right, so that's uh, that guy routed. We're going to pull these guys over and swoop around to try and pick them off as they retreat. Uh, they're going to come back, but that's okay. okay. There's a couple low uh, HP units that should be pretty easy pickings. Um, and then I'm going to just sort of just nibble at the sides. True wolf rat style. Uh, let's see. Oh, that's strange. That's a weird attack order. Oh, no. No, not the leadership. Come on, you darn wolf rats. Keep it together. This is going to be really dicey, but I want to... I really want to win the battle just to prove a point. Um, but the micro is going to get a little bit more intense. I expect to be here for probably... I don't know. Probably another 10 minutes while we try and pick them off. But, like, there's not a lot of them left. There are not a lot of forces for the Empire left. And the heroes should be pretty easy to finish off if it's just uh, Thwart and my rats. You will prove nothing. No, wolf rats are the best human boy. They're the best units in the game. I will prove it. It's not a challenge one. It's actually the optimal way to play mul campaign <laughs> and multiplayer. Why not? I'll prove that wolf rats are good in multiplayer with this run. Okay, nice. So we'll pull these guys back. A couple of units of spearmen that are easy pickings. Just a little bit of charge and disengage. They didn't take any damage. It's a little bit unfortunate, but we're okay. All right, and uh, one really nice thing, I've managed to split up the Empire forces a bit with these wolf rats, which means I can now do a little bit of regroup action and then uh, get some free pickings over here. These guys are more or less isolated. Sadly, they do have this uh, Empire captain here that will be providing leadership, uh, but that should be fine. Now, Thwart's going to tank the charge as the wolf rats right now are in no state to tank any amount of charges. And then, oh my gosh, that damage. When you get a good surround with wolf rats, it is just disgusting. Let's see, will they route? There we go, they routed off. And then I should be able to pick off this infantry and hopefully kill off their lord. If I can do that, that would be great. But um, I think he got a pretty solid charge on Thwart. We're going to have to pull back. Wolf rat spam, the finest tactic in the game. Maybe not. But yeah, that's, uh, yeah, I guess that, that's what people are here to see. Will it be good enough? I'm not sure. Thwart is going to have to hard carry a little bit on these uh, Lord fights. 
but I do have a ton of leadership debuffs on these rats. So we're going to get the mass around on this guy. He's freaking out because he's surrounded by, you know, roughly 300 rats, uh, which means it's an easy route for him. Uh, thankfully, the mutations on Thwart make these guys insanely good. Um, and just with a little bit of micro, it's easy pickings. Now, we got two more lords. Uh, I can't fight them together, that's for sure, but I can fight them one at a time. We've lost another wolf rat to a route. Perfectly fine. They've lost another unit of infantry. So they now basically have only high HP units of infantry. But uh, I think with a little bit of reforming of ranks, we should be good. Whoopsie daisies. We were already at times for speed. Let's go ahead and regroup again. They're not going to have to do a lot of carrying all the way through. Probably. Probably. Uh, as soon as I can get terror on my guys, I think I'll be a lot more comfortable. Oh, I should have gotten the vampire thing on my wolf rats earlier since it gives them uh, undead. And then they'd give fear, I think. Human boy, you say uh, you have to do stuff today? Cool, cool. Are you hopping out soon? Wolf rats viable with <laughs> three, with 30 a bajillion APM. Maybe. Maybe, but uh, you know, I think I think this is achievable. I think most people can manage this. Can I get a free pick? These guys are sort of pulling away, which means I get some free charges on the back, and that they won't really be able to trade too much damage back in. Eh, it's a decent trade, but it's not a surround, so uh, I'm going to pull back before we lose all of our leadership. Uh, we did catch out the AI though. They were trying to reposition, which means now we can go for the six surrounds. And then this should definitely be a break. As they get the minus 10 leadership debuff. There we go, swordsmen. And great swords, routing for the hill. And then we're going to pull away again. Alright, so that was a pretty good pick. Oh my gosh, if we if we win this, guys, it will be glorious. Because this is the fight for Kislev. Um, their capital. No! Oh, okay. So they're going to come back, but uh, they're probably down to one more route before they're gone permanently. We got Thwart. Oh, no, they are gone. Oh, right. That's speed buff acting against me. What are you going to do about large monsters? Uh, the same thing I've been doing to all the single entities. Mass surround with wolf rats. Um, I think the later stage of this campaign will be a little bit difficult, but um, with the mutations and upgrades, I think we'll be okay. So, wow, look at that vigor. That's actually pretty good. So, uh, plan number one, I need to pick off these guys on the edge. Um, although having them route off is really good for my, uh, it's really good for my, you know, sort of, uh, leadership when they start breaking, as the Empire will be hurting on that front. Um, it is sort of sketchy because they will sort of just get free hits in on my wolf rats and probably break their leadership if I'm not too careful, so I will want to pick them off. Those were great swords, so they, they survived a little bit longer than I would have hoped. What do we have left? What? I got six. I have seven units of wolf rats left. The enemy has, uh, what, five? They, they only have like seven or eight-ish units of infantry. We've lost another unit of rats, though. Oh, no, guys. Not like this. Not like this. Look, at the very least, we'll win the second battle. But, uh, but it will sort of suck losing this battle. I really want to win it. And even if it's a loss, yeah, it's not like I've lost that many dogs. The Empire have lost basically every single unit down to the last man, just because uh, we've been on top of chasing guys off, so... Overall, I think this is already a pretty good win. Uh, so this sort of flank overload into Thwat, there we go, into Surround. Will it break them off? No, the, yes, there we go, they do break off. All right. That's big. That's big. We caught a unit of great swords, guys. Um, at the loss of maybe one of our wolf rats. Now it's imperative that we chase them off. So I need to make sure that I'm not chasing them into this formation. And that I'm properly chasing them out of it. And then we're just going to run them down. And then there's even a couple unit of, uh, of swordsmen here that I can probably pick off too. So that should be quite nice. They still have a hero and a lord at full health. Well, I still have four units of wolf rats, so... I see no problems here. Okay, you know what? Uh, there's probably a few problems. I'm going to do some cleanup. I'm going to finish off the great swords, and then I'm going to run for the hill. Let's go ahead and do that. Let's clean these guys up. All right, human boy, you win today. You win today, but I will be back. I will be back. All right. 
Let's get out of here. We did well. We did well. How many kills did we get? Can someone, uh... Can someone throw in some guesses? We did pretty good. <laughs> oh my goodness. That value. So, uh, out of our force of 1,000, we fought an army roughly four times the size of our own, and we managed to kill off about... Uh, what's this? 1,000, 2,000... Yeah, yeah, roughly 3,000 forces from, from the Kislev. But we lost. We did lose, which is, uh, which is really rough. Darn it. Darn it. We'll get him on the, on the rebound, though. 3,100 lost. Darn it. it. It's still a loss, though. All right. Let's pull back. We'll, we'll get him second time. <laughs> yeah, yo, I should do a campaign that is just a, a times four speed campaign. That would be pretty fun. Oh, hey, he's loyal again. Oh, kill 1,000 enemies. Easiest quest I've ever done. Exotic animals. I think we have that already. All right. How do we want to do this? Do we just fight them again? How beat up are the forces? I think we can actually just win this on the second fight. Um, you know, give them a good old bait and switch. Go here, fight this guy. Or this guy. Because then I'll have to fight a settlement battle. If I go here first, I think, uh, how... Ooh, it's gonna be close. I don't know if I have the speed to, to reach there. Um, you know what? We'll fight this guy first. Wow, he ran away. He ran away. What a guy. All right. I'm gonna fight this guy then. I swear if you run. Oh, yeah. Here we go. The ambush. Yes. Uh, we do still have to siege Kislev, but I think this is worth it. Can you turn off the ambush? I wish I wish you, we could, but, you know, whatever. Uh, you thought you thought it wasn't winnable before the battle, but after I killed half their forces without losing a single unit, you were convinced. But I still lost it. I still lost it. Brutal. Brutal. Also, by the way, can you guys believe we've been uh, playing this for one hour and 30 minutes and we've already almost conquered Kislev. This is a, a really good run so far. All right, so Thrott, he's going to go here. Oh, he stole, they stole our potion of strength. Does this guy have it? No, he doesn't. Um, let's see. I don't want to fight the Lord just yet. We're, we're going to go for a bit of a, a full surround here and I have to be a bit smart about this. The ones with the mutations are going to deal with this unit of spearmen so that they uh, are dealt with just a little bit faster. So let's go ahead and get these guys over here. These guys over here. Pull these guys back. We're gonna use hotkeys as everyone should. There we go. Give them a one. Give them a two. All right. There we go. And then we're just going to get some beautiful splits. The AI trying to react as fast as possible. The AI also known for its extremely high APM, despite being absolutely terrible at at managing armies. All right. Very nice. All right. So uh, now we can just times four this. We can pull these guys back. And uh, strangely enough, um, I might be able to win this without actually having to fight the Lord. Because wolf rats cost so much on the balance of power. Um, you can just, you can just win, uh, with wolf rats alone. But it looks like the Lord will be fighting. Let's go ahead and deal with him real quick then. There we go. All right. Nice and clean fight. That's Kislev number one done. Actually, Kislev number two, the first one routed. Which means now we can go back and try and capture that settlement. Once you hit rank seven and above, it's just at the threshold Oh, uh, what's it? Where units will start to not break on the sidelines. Oh, I, I sure hope so. We're going to be stacking as many leadership buffs as we can to make sure that these guys keep it together. Maybe a bit of a stand your ground action on Thwop. I feel like that'd be good. Woo. Yeah, as soon as you get veterancy. Uh, what's it? Do you guys know what the, what the um, sort of red skill tree buff for wolf rats is? I think it's pretty good. Also, let's get Enslave, plus four leadership. You can't, can't pass that up. That's definitely very good. Oh, we got a right. What does it do? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. This is something we needed yesterday. Oh, my gosh. 
That's a really good. That's a really good right. Yeah, Pyrrhic victory, of course. What's the what's the main upgrade for wolf rats here? Uh, they get armor. Oh, plus leadership. Oh yeah, you guys were not kidding. That is really good. Um, is anything here usable? No, all of these are useless. Uh, you know what? We'll get the clan rat one. Why not? And uh, onwards to Kislev. Nice. This force is so beat up from the last battle. Uh, this should be really good. Better yet, if they sally out. Easy win. Easy win. What's your favorite faction in the game? Vampire Coast. 100% Vampire Coast. Uh, they were... Yeah, they're the faction that that really launched my multiplayer career. What a, what a great faction, man. Oh, whoops. I went the wrong way. I need to defend Erengrad. Run back. Run back. Will I get there in time? I think so. But, uh, but yeah, Vampire Coast, um, it was, uh, roughly, like, what, two years ago when I started really, uh, playing them a ton. Um, and I haven't gone bored of them since. They've, uh, they've been my multiplayer main, and, of course, I've played a ton of campaigns with them, too. I'm gonna save the money just in case I need it. Ah, uh, you know what, we'll upgrade Hell Pit. That's a pretty good upgrade to get. All right. Always take the right spawn engineer and march him far away from the continent to start an undercity. See, I feel like uh, I already, and uh, for those of you guys who haven't seen, these are the rules that I'm trying to adhere to. And it says no heroes, just to make it a little bit difficult. A little bit more difficult, that is. Oh yeah, this is an easy fight. This is an easy fight. Yeah, so these are the rules. Um, I'm free to use summons and garrisons, and I feel like that's enough to make this run uh, difficult enough. And besides, uh, I don't expect this to be an extremely long campaign, so no under-Empire shenanigans just yet. Oh, Silostra is a really fun campaign. The first one that really drew me in, though, was Aranessa, just because of how close she is to uh, other... sort of a bunch of other things. She's really close to the humans. And as we know, Empire is a really uh, easy faction to abuse, so... I really like the Aranessa campaign. Um, you know what? I'm gonna go over here. This is a little bit too clean of a formation, and I don't want to do the mad dive in on them just yet. Uh, yeah, these forces are... Whoa, maybe not. <laughs> maybe not. That's a lot of dudes. That's a lot of dudes. Uh, I want to chase off these Outriders and Pistoliers. They're the number one priority because they can get really good value on my Wolf Rats, and I don't want that to happen. Meanwhile, let's go ahead and pull these guys back while I deal with those guys. And uh, we also have the Molder Clan Stone, so really, there's no way we lose this fight unless I make an absolutely disgusting mistake. But I don't think uh, that should be happening. Also, all of a sudden, it started snowing, which is great. Uh, changes up the map a little bit. A couple units of uh, swordsmen over here. Do I have the leadership breaking wolf rats? I do. All right, so that means I can take this fight. That's very good. Let's go ahead and line them up. And then uh, here's, a, here's a quick tutorial on how to route off units in five seconds. Just got to get the full surround on them, and then you get the you get the right-click charge in. And then just like that, they take a million points of damage, the so leadership tanks. And then it's an easy chase off. This is, this is the main reason why I like my wolf rats. Um, they will, in multiplayer too, they will just destroy elite cavalry like no one's business too. Um, if you get the proper charges in, uh, which is really, really always just uh, just a great thing to see. Of course, this only works if uh, if you can manage the micro, but that's what multiplayer is for. <laughs> Whoop. Uh, what's this? Just completed a Marcus Wolfheart campaign. Nice, nice. Uh, from the Hunter and the Beast. Ah, yes, yes. Um, what's it? Uh, the Marcus campaign. I had uh, a really fun time playing it. You get a lot of uh, diversity with your units, which you don't usually get to see. I'm just going to heal these guys up just a little bit. I know uh, I could be a little bit more efficient with it, but I'm pretty sure this battle uh, is going to be quite one-sided, so I'm not too worried. All right, nice. And then we just got to loop in and deal with these range units. No problem. Thwat is on the run. My uh, Zergling micro drills are paying off. You know, the one where you have to run a probe around? <laughs> for, for all the StarCraft players out there. Um, the one where you have to run a probe away from a Zergling while also um, 
microing an army at the same time. Sort of those challenge custom maps. Uh, I feel like that did that did prepare me for this run rather well too. Let's see. What else is going on in the chat? Oh, you actually quit the game when Vampire Coast came out. That's unfortunate. You missed out. You missed out on, uh, on a pretty great campaign. Uh, let's see. They took the suggestions about Karen rates. Okay, wait. I need to put them on Sirens and Morangles. Oh, I see. I see. Yeah, that is true. If if you're a fan of the vampires, just the normal vampire accounts, uh, then yeah. It, it is a little bit disappointing to see sort of Vampire Coast getting a lot of those fun tools. But actually right now in the multiplayer meta, at least, Vampire Accounts is pretty... They're pretty great. Um, and I, I sort of assume everything's good in, in campaign. It's sort of just how good do you want something to be? Uh, like Skaven and their weapon teams, of course, are very strong. Uh, but overall, I think you can you can make any any faction work if you cheese. If you choose not to cheese, then uh, it does limit yourself a little bit. But I'd be really interested to see if you can beat every campaign fairly easily without cheese. I don't know. What what are your opinions, guys? Because I did a poll earlier um, on YouTube, and I think most people said that they. Most people said that they do cheese in campaigns, uh, at least a little bit. Is this, uh, is this winning? Nice. Where's Thwop? Getting surrounded? No problem. I still have my Rat Ogre summoned, so I think that's that should be fine. Let's go ahead and do a little bit more cleanup. Uh, Thwop can just fight that, actually. Let's get uh, the Rat Ogre summoned up. That should help. Pull these guys in. Pull all of them in. Get the good old heal and look at chat. Karen Wraiths used to at least be able to beat two Empire Swordsmen. Uh, I did not know that. Oh, hey, look at that. Uh, I need to chase off these units. Sorry, one second. Let's pull out some Wolf Rats here. And uh, begin chasing them down. Because if I can chase all the units off here, um, then that means that there's going to be no garrison. And then I won't have to uh, fight the siege battle. Which will save us some time. Legendary, no cheese, probably means three times the amount of effort required, if not more. Uh, I, I actually did try a run. It's, um, it's, it's sort of strange. The campaign actually progresses really quickly. Uh, for spoilers, I completed a Marcus Wolfhart campaign. No cheese in like 10 hours. Uh, which, you know, some battles will last 10 hours if you're cheesing it really hard. So um, I feel like that, that's something that I really want to show off. It's just that editing 10 hours of content is pretty intense. Close victory. The AI thought that was close. We had zero losses. Why is it a close victory? I call shenanigans. What? A close victory? We lost nothing. <laughs> oh, whatever. Whatever. I'm used to it at this point. I've played enough campaigns, but this is a bit silly, right? I feel like uh, it's because you take a lot of damage and when you heal it back up, the AI's like, well, I don't know, you took a lot of damage. That's a little bit sketchy. Feeling a little bit close there, but... Such is the way of things. Uh, I could sack this, but that would give me no money. Instead, uh, we'll just basic Occupy. How about late game dwarves balanced army? Ooh, that'd be fun. Why not, uh, you know, just do the whole campaign. Whole dwarf campaign that is... That is balanced. Oh, the potion of toughness. Best item ever. Not useful on Thwop because he regens. But on this guy, that's going to be good. That's going to be really, really good. All right, nice. And then we have a little bit of a Kislev army over here that I need to deal with. Can we rec recruit here? We can. Very nice. We'll just park him right over here. Buy a million of these guys and we'll be good. You normally play balanced dwarf armies, you think? Uh, well, it depends. If you have fewer than... If you have 8 range units max in a 20 stack, then uh, then that's generally pretty balanced. If you go for more than 8, then you're probably cheesing the AI quite a bit. Uh, which, you know, is no problem, but... It's generally what it means. Now, these guys... I have no idea why... Oh, they just... They just, they just have aversion to me. They just don't like me. Well, what if I... What if I join some wars for you? They are winning, so... Uh, I do sort of want to get them on my side. And we can get a non-aggression pack. That's good. Uh, can we get them to join the war against Kislev? Oh, we can. 
How about crack a drac? Nope. All right, we'll do this. Agreed. All right, so we're gonna get some friendly relations with the very scheming vampire counts, and then uh, Kislev should be down in just a second. This is so confusing. What is the definition for dogs? Um, these guys, basically. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's basically it. Uh, wolf rats are, are more or less the only dog unit I can recruit. No heroes, and uh, the specific rules are over here. Um, so while I while I finish up my end turn, you guys can take a look at that. Uh, ooh, Norska likes me. I just need to deal with these dwarves. They've been building up for a while. And dwarf armies are the worst in campaign. They are absolutely brutal. Oh, come on, Sertha. Come on, not like this. How about just military access? Just defensive alliance? All right, whatever. Yeah, four legs, floof, and, and bork. Now... I don't know if these guys actually have much floof, but but they do bork, and I think that's good enough. There we go. End turn. On to the next one. So I was thinking about skin wolves. Uh, I feel like skin wolves would be a little bit OP in the Norse skin run. Oh, what do you want? Non-aggression pact? Uh, I will... I'll decline just in case that screws up relations with the undead. But, uh, but yeah, skin wolves feel... I, I don't think skin wolves actually bark, though, right? So I feel like they, they don't really qualify. Um, but, you know, thankfully we're not doing the Norse skin campaign, so it's fine. Wax and Wayne. Oh, now that is bad. That. That is bad. Um, we'll, we'll figure out how to deal with it. How big is this army? 12 against my 13. This is unwinnable on the kiss left front. Also, I screwed up. I did not claim my growth rat early. And now I only got one wolf rat from it. That is unfortunate, but what can you do? Let's go ahead and uh, get our upgrades going. The uh, contaminated debuff is a lot more important than this hunger one. At least early on, just so I can route off the Kislev forces easier. Try to stack some food to get higher leadership. Yeah, I am planning to. Just, uh, not yet. Not quite yet. Yeah, F's in chat for no leadership. It's fine. Um, as long as the battle isn't extremely close, uh, we should be good. We should be good. Oh, I forgot that I have the rules still up. Let's go and get that blocker out of the way. Yeah, can you remove the rules? Thank you. Thank you. Good call. Good call. It is a little bit subtle on uh, on my streaming setup. It can be a little bit hard to see. What's really great about the wolf rats, though, they deal so well with these uh, skirmishers who are normally extremely annoying. Um, so that, that helps out a ton. And to make sure that I do this properly, hotkeys! Hotkeys as always. Here we go. One, two, three, and four. And those guys are going to be dealt with. As soon as they route off, I can get the disengage. And then it will be A-OK. -okay. Nice, let's pull this way. Let's disengage with all of these guys. Support my lord. There we go. Support him. He has the potion of uh, that thing. Nice. Army's getting pulled apart. Very good. He's winning against the enemy lord. All right, nice. This battle is all but mine. And yeah, I, if you guys haven't noticed, uh, I do like playing at times four speed. It's just so much more efficient, you know? I'm not a huge fan of burning ammunition on uh, units either. But, uh, but you know, it's definitely a very strong tactic. Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, definitely. I'll, I'll get the revenge on the Wood Elves for sure. For sure, for sure. Yeah, Wood Elves. This army is so good against them. Oh, my goodness. Uh, I want to run these guys down so that I don't have to deal with chasing the uh, the rebellion because that can be really annoying. Nice. I think we only got like a couple losses there. Uh, war dancers. Oh wait. What? Oh, only war alliance of Trace and Alistair. That would be pretty fun. I feel like uh, you could do quite a bit there. Decisive. Hey, look at that. We finally got a decisive victory. 19 losses. 
So you just have to lose some units and then it'll be decisive. Only War Sphinx. Cat only run as the Tomb Kings. Uh, actually, that, that's sort of getting Doom stacky, but uh, War Sphinxes, of course, are insanely hard to control. I was thinking uh, another fun challenge, Vaughn. Uh, can you beat Warhammer without making any units? I feel like it might actually be possible if you play as Belagar. Because you have the Ethereal Heroes, which uh, could be really strong. You might be able to pick up the Sword of Cain somewhere. And then you just have a Belagar Hero Doom stack. Um, does anyone feel like that's possible? Because I did do a challenge run earlier where it was... Oh, finally, an auto result. I did a challenge run earlier where the challenge was to survive as long as possible without building any units. And uh, it turns out you can basically be unkillable. Oh, yes, I've been watching Giant Grant Games. Who hasn't? His videos are amazing. Uh, he's, he's the main inspiration for me wanting to do challenge runs again. Just because of... Uh, just because of... How fun it is. Crushing defeat. This game. My goodness. But yes, Giant, Giant Grant Games. He basically does challenge runs for uh, for StarCraft. And um, and they're insane. He beat StarCraft without making any units. And that means he was beating some missions with only his workers. That's like beating Warhammer with only peasant mobs. And speaking of, I should do a peasant mob only run. That sounds amazing. Does Raise Dead count as making units? I would say yes. Um, unless it was like, you know, unless I really wanted to do a, a Raise Dead only run. But like, in terms of, uh, in terms of the challenge, yeah. Raise Dead would be pretty, pretty broken. Oh yeah, the StarCraft video is absolutely god tier. Uh, it's great because of sort of the, how well he can abuse the mechanics and show off tons of bugs in the game. Unfortunately, I don't have nearly as much of that in Warhammer. So, uh, this sort of challenge run is a lot more generic, unfortunately, but what can you do? What can you do? I like to, I want to capture the, uh, the essence of his video, so that's sort of, uh, the no cheese campaign run that I've been talking about. That's sort of the idea that I'm aiming for. But nice, uh, some classic, uh, just pick-offs, you know, go for the archers, and then I can probably just get a big surround on these units and hit, hit my wolf rats with the healing. And then that should be a pretty fast win for this battle, yeah. Yeah, here we go. Get the Throt in there, get the Wolf Rats engaged, get a few uh, surrounds in there. Ah, uh, come on. Commit! Commit with more of your forces, Empire. There we go. There we go, that's what we needed. Rapunce? Ooh, Rapunce would be... Well, what would, what would be the challenge? Peasants only, I guess? That would be okay, yeah. Um, this is a settlement garrison, so I think I have to chase them down. I'm not sure. I'll chase them down just in case. Oh, wait, no, there is no... Yeah, this settlement garrison. Never mind. We can just end it. Uh, Bretonia do a lord's only campaign and win pretty easily. Oh, that's true, because they don't cost um, supply lines. See, I want, like, legit challenging ones, so, you know? Those, like, really close battles where you're winning against... 4,000 different Kislevites. That's really fun. Uh, the Rakarth campaign actually is one that would be really fun just because of the early game challenges. But I don't know how difficult it would be later on. I'm thinking of a Sack and Occupy here, by the way. Maybe even a Raise, but let's go with Sack and Occupy. That money's pretty nice. This is a melee attack debuff? Yeah. Ooh, movement range. That one's actually really good for me. You never played a campaign with Bretonia without having at least 20 lords at once. You know, I never even considered it. Um, but uh, it does make sense that that is a very strong strategy. Okay, nice. So we have the money now. We can start upgrading our buildings. And then uh, we finish off Kislev. And then the war against the dwarves will begin. And I just have to hope that this guy, Sortha Ek, doesn't get captured by Throg or something. Meanwhile, these guys are slowly liking me more and more. If I can get a trade agreement with them, that would be great. And uh, possibly we want to attack uh, sort of the, the eastern side of things, but I'm not sure about that just yet. Building upgrade. All right, nice. The Bretonian campaign would be interesting to actually win just because 
You'd only have one lord to do the final battle. Oh, that is true. Um, you'd have to go and pick up the sword of Cain then, right? Rapunz buffs peasants decently, while the enchantress buffs all melee units. That's interesting. Non-aggression pact. See, the moment I sign this, he's going to start raiding my lands. So I'm going to give that a no. Thank you very much. All right, nice. So we've dealt with all the southern Kislevites. And uh, what do I actually need to do to win this campaign? I remember it's pretty short. Complete three of the following. Ensure that one building... Yeah, the depths of Hellpit. Uh, some growth vats. That's pretty easy. Upgrade the flesh laboratory. All right. That's not too difficult. Uh, and as for this guy, I can probably start thinking about attacking these... Uh, yeah, sort of sending him into the Empire. But I do want a few more wolf rats on him before I fully commit to that. Uh, you know what? I'll probably just send him out to, to deal with the dwarves too, I think. I think the beastmen are probably going to sack Frag and take that out. So no problem there. And we'll turn off the building upgrade available so we can blast through these turns like no tomorrow. Is someone here playing Battlefield... Uh... Battlefield Gothic Armada 2. I've never heard of that. Oh, great. We got the dwarves in on the action. The dwarves are going to be the biggest problem here. Uh, of course, I do have the armor debuffs. But uh, that that's not going to make it easy by any means. Kislev has been destroyed by turn, uh, turn 18. That is a very fast Kislev destruction. Um, what's it? By turn 18 and not only that. Oh, whoops. Trespassed. My bad. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Um, yeah, by turn 18 and only, uh, only what, two hours into the run? Not bad. But the dwarves, what do we got here? I'm, I'm very afraid to try and uh, face these guys, but you got to do it. Uh, for now, I will get some of these upgrades, though, so I have a bit more money and that I don't have to worry about rebellions as much. Then we'll see how this plays out. I have a couple armor-piercing wolf rats and a couple that destroy armor. So I'm hoping that will help carry me. The problems with uh, vampire counts, no magic campaign, is it becomes an auto-resolve campaign very quickly. Oh, that's true. Yeah, I need, uh, I need some sort of campaign that doesn't have auto-resolve spam. Unless it is just an auto-resolve challenge campaign, but that's not super exciting. My bad, yes. The foods. Oh, negative growth. Oh, we definitely need food then. Alright, let's just tentatively scout them out. What do we got? Uh, some dwarf warrior great weapons. The really good thing is that they're quite slow. And I might be able to abuse that a tiny bit to my advantage. Meanwhile, we got some settlements over here. Uh, let's see. We could save money to make sure that there's no rebellion there. But I don't think we have to do that just yet. Do I have a quest to... Okay, no, I don't. Oh, wait. Move a Warlock Engineer into the following Lord's Army. So I might want to just get this quest done by recruiting the Engineer, putting him in, and then getting rid of him. I'm not sure. I don't think it's fully required, though. Chaos without Archeon? Well, that, that, that wouldn't be too difficult, right? You know, you could just go Sigvald or whatever. I was thinking of uh, putting out some campaign guides, possibly, too. Like, uh, you know, fastest, like, like having an OP campaign in less than one hour or something like that. Where uh, I just sort of lay out a really nice path to get a really nice early game. I feel like that could be pretty fun to do. Uh, let's see. Yeah, all of these upgrades are pretty bad. I do want these plans eventually. But let's go ahead and get that campaign movement range, why don't we? Can Thwat get here? Oh, just barely not? That's unfortunate. It's fine, this'll do. Don't use Sigvald, he's horrible. Uh, in campaign, maybe. In single player, he's amazing, but I could see how he's not great in campaign. First turn, uh, first 10 to 20 turn guides are really helpful and popular. Okay, I'll try it out then. Um, I think I have one for Marcus Wolfhart that is really good. Just because of said earlier campaign. 
Um, you can take out Master Mundi extremely quickly with Marcus. So I'd be excited to try that out. Uh, of course, for everyone who's... Oh, nice. Classic AI, leaving the artillery to die. Classic AI. But um, yeah, I know there like a lot of my old school viewers really do enjoy the sort of multiplayer side of things exclusively. Uh, but I definitely won't be dropping multiplayer entirely. I'll still be hosting tournaments and stuff, but I feel like I feel like having a lot of this sort of uh, sort of campaign focused content could be really interesting. And it is something that I do really enjoy doing, too. So I'm quite excited. Let's get Thwad in here, too, real quick. Um, and I need to figure out a way to pick off the dwarves. I think I nearly have enough power to just fight them outright. But I need to wait for the main army to show up first. And in the meantime, I can just sort of uh, surround some quarrelers. And they'll do some nice pickoffs. And it will be good to go. <laughs> this man has a family. Look. He's just food. He's just food. Alright. Uh, oh man, this is... This is a little bit... A little bit sketchy. I don't want to get fully surrounded, but uh, you can sort of see the effects of having high leadership now coming into play. It is helping me out a ton. And actually, with all these units sort of spread out, I think I can start taking multiple engagements at once. So uh, let's start doing that. One fun thing about wolf rats, they can sort of path through units uh, to an extent. Definitely uh, something you might want to try and do. We're going to take a few extra losses here that we don't really need to. But uh, for the sake of time, um, I don't need to cheese this out longer, uh, really. Let's see. And uh, not to mention, I also have the regeneration effect on all of my guys, which uh, will make things a lot easier. And then I can probably just heal them all back. But you can see the, the huge problem here with the dwarves. They keep on fighting for a really long amount of time. And that makes it where they essentially um have problems routing off but as i say that they do hit army losses so pretty good i'm going to uh just group up all of my guys over here and then give them a good old good old healing bath just to pick them all back up and then make it so that the losses from having to times four aren't too much of a problem but uh, i think we're starting to get to the point where we're where we're really steamrolling armies now you just have to make sure you take good engagements on multiple sides are you wearing a gamer poncho? A gamer poncho? It is a poncho, actually. Um, it was uh, it was a gift to me made by my wonderful sister. It's pretty great. I gotta say, ponchos... Uh, I live in Canada, by the way, so it's absolutely freezing. Uh, so I'm wearing, like, millions of layers. Uh, but, I don't know, I guess it's fitting for the location we are in in the campaign. I'm going to uh, loot and occupy a lot of these places, too. I don't intend to stay very long, but um, I definitely want to... Oh, look at that. Norsk is doing good this one. Yeah, I don't want to stay here too long. I just want to make sure that the dwarves don't resettle. See, so you somehow made it once to defeat a friend in Total War Rome. With a cav-only army. Nice. Wait, you said you beat him with a cap only army while AFK? Am I reading that right? Because that's pretty that's pretty intense. That would be quite the feat indeed. I think it's safe to march here. Worst case is a giant dwarf army, but I think we're okay. It was an actual gift or a blood raven? Quote unquote gift. Uh no, it was an actual gift. It was a Christmas gift. I don't know if you're referring to anything specific and Sort of your, uh, your, uh, oh, what, man, the, the words are lost on me, but sort of your, your references are lost on me. A lot goes over my head, guys, unfortunately. You, you guys can make the best jokes in the world, and I'll probably miss it if I look in chat. I take a lot of things at face value. I'm throwing that out right now for those of you who uh, do not know me well enough. That is, that is me. But nice, things are going really well this campaign. We've beat the dwarves. Honestly, can we win this campaign today? That would be hilarious if we just won the entire campaign in one day. Um, I feel like probably unlikely, but, you know, maybe. Are we capped out on food? Nearly, nearly. So we'll probably settle this at full uh, strength and actually use it as a main uh, source of strength. Very nice. 
I'm also going to turn one of these dogs into an undead dog. Because, um... Oh, never mind. I don't have... And we're down one mutagen. Look at that. Blood Ravens are a Space Marine chapter. Oh, well, there you go. That's why I didn't get it. Someone needs to play Dawn of War. I've never... I've never... Uh, I've heard of it, but I've never played it. Is it good? As you guys can imagine. Wow, our peace treaty? That's going in the book. How could you, man? But, uh, yeah. If you guys haven't noticed, I play a lot of Warhammer and not a lot of anything else. Blood Ravens even stole a weapon from the Emperor's... Wow, this, this is like a whole... This is a whole lore... Lore book's worth of Blood Raven material out there. It's interesting. See, a lot of these, uh... Oh, man. Not, like, cultural references. Ah, the words are completely lost on me. My poor vocabulary. Um... But yeah, a lot of these things are lost on me. Unless it's very Warhammer specific, I probably won't get it. Except for the 101 Dalmatian. Dalmatian? Dalmatians? There we go. Um, I got that. I can be proud of that at least. Now, does this give my dogs fear? It doesn't. It just gives them undead and the hunger. Well, that's a little bit unfortunate. That makes that a lot uh, weaker than I would have hoped, but whatever. Let's go ahead and uh, keep giving these guys a ton of buffs. That'll make him quite strong. And at some point, I want to start stacking on the speed onto all of them. Oh, no, he got uh, instability. That sucks for him, but he'll live. Uh, and actually, you know what? I think, I think we're doing pretty good. We don't really need to waste more upgrades on those guys. Uh, you didn't know about Dawn of War and Bot 3. Terrible mistake. Oh, is that, uh... Is that something people buying Dawn of War should know about? Is Dawn of War 3 just an absolute garbage game? From the sounds of it, uh... From what you guys are talking about in chat, it seems like it is so. What What is Dawn of War? Is it like, uh... Is it a strategy game? I feel like it might be a strategy game. If I'm remembering correctly. See, let's van. Let's tunnel over here. That should be safe. Oh, he has mostly quarrelers. He's doomed. And then, how big is this settlement garrison? Not big, so I think Thwat is fine dealing with that. And we can settle this ruin. It's a 40k RTS. Ah, I think I might have seen it. It's the one where you have a bunch of rally points, right? And you just sort of rally units to uh, one location. Maybe I'm grossly oversimplifying here, but. Um, sort of, I think that's the general idea of it, right? I might be thinking of a different game, though. Feel free to correct me. Oh, what the? We got a random Groth Drake beard over here. Fun. Uh, but I think we can move on to the next turn. Warhammer Starcraft to oversimplify it. Okay, well, there you go. See, Starcraft is a sort of particular type of RTS. Um, I don't think there's too many games as polished as Starcraft. Maybe it's sacrilege to say that, but definitely out of the RTS, StarCraft is really high up. Oh, did uh, did Sortha Ek get conquered? No, he's still here. Is he at war? No. Alright, what do we got? Oh my gosh, what? The Norskins are... Throg! Wait, Throg got conquered by, by these guys? Alright, poor guy. Um, let's go ahead and settle this. And take it at, uh, at tier 2. That should be fine. Dawn of War is a classic RTS. Oh, never mind then. That's pretty cool. Maybe I should check it out. Although, uh, although then again, my life is Warhammer. So maybe not. Uh, the second game is similar, but with more of a focus on small scale, small scale skirmishes. And then the third game is a dumpster fire. That is very unfortunate. Alright, I think Thwat is going to camp out over here. Yeah, overall, RTSs. Whoops, wrong ability, but whatever. Overall, RTSs have sort of had a, a rough time recently. Oh, if I have to fight the undead, that would be terrible, wouldn't it? But yeah, um, small-scale RTSs. They just, uh... RTSs, just as a genre, hasn't been doing too great. But at least Age of Empires seems like it's doing okay. I can be happy about Age of Empires at the very least. 
The lore is mostly bland, but the writing has some weird problems. Interesting. I'm also just going to stretch my legs real quick and take off this poncho because the PC makes the room hot, which is a blessing and a curse. All right. Oh, there we go. All right. Nice. A little bit cooler now. Thoughts on Company of Heroes? Never heard of it. Like I said, I'm a, I'm a big Warhammer Starcraft buff. A little bit of Age of Empires in there, too. But uh, that's basically me. No wonder they're trying to make a MOBA out of it, at least. Like what? Let's see. For reference, the first game. Oh, like they made uh, Out of Dawn of War. Yeah, a lot of uh, MOBAs were really big for a while, right? But um, what what's the big game type right now? Our first, I think first-person shooters are still pretty big in the overall gaming market. Uh, what else, though? I know I know Rust was really big for a while, but that, I feel like that was uh, a couple months ago, and it's not as big anymore. Maybe I'm wrong, though. Feel free to correct me as usual. I guess, uh, I guess we just take some settlements, right? That's going to hurt my food a little bit. Um, hmm, I really want to take this. Do I want to go with, to, to war with Throg? Honestly, it wouldn't be terrible, right? You get a few Norskin settlements. You know, it'd help our relations with uh, Sortha Ek. Oh, it's tempting. I'll wait until after this fight. If he raises the settlement, I guess we can just resettle it too. So it's actually not too much of a problem. Yeah, I think we'll be fine. Most indie games? Oh, that's true. Indie games have, like, the top tier indie games have always done well. Have you guys, uh, do you guys enjoy Hollow Knight? Hollow Knight is great, I will say. Um, it's, you know, not related to Warhammer in the slightest, but definitely a very fun indie game. <laughs> Everything wants to be Overwatch, that is true. Is Overwatch still doing really well? I played it a while, but... Um, it's been a while. It's been a long time since I really got into it. Uh, I think they what they just released Ash, I think is her name, or was it Ash? It started with an A. Uh, but yeah, they just released her, and and then at about that point is when I stopped playing it. I feel like it wasn't Ash, was it? I don't know. The lady, the lady with the robot. You guys know who I'm talking about. What's a Roblox? Oh man, Roblox. I don't think I ever. I ever had that, but... Yeah. What is that big right now? I know Minecraft is still running strong. This, <laughs> against all odds. Oh, man. Well, I guess not against all odds. Minecraft is humongous, but... Minecraft is like a... It's been big enough where generations of players have played it. Ash with an E? Okay, there you go. Uh, yes, I am trying to beat Thwot Legendary with dogs. That is true. Uh, I think we got past the first hurdle. We've killed Kislev. Uh, the dwarves are more or less dealt with. So it's pretty good. Things are pretty good right now. Valve ruined TF2. That's unfortunate. I remember uh, being pretty big into TF2 early on too. I never really got into it, but yeah. And people are still playing TF2. I have seen uh, a few videos on it recently. It's doing, it's doing all right. All right, Frag, you will be mine. Prepare to be colonized. What do we got? Just, uh, just a basic city. Uh, oh, wow, okay. Donating himself, I'll take it. Thank you very much for the food. He didn't even give food. Wow. What a guy. All right, uh, I think that's, yeah. Osterland has been destroyed. The vampire counts doing some good work there. I need to... At some point, get into a war with the Empire, though. Otherwise, the Vampire Counts are definitely going to ruin my face. As fighting undead with dogs only sounds like the worst idea I could possibly go for. Let's see. Whoa, what? Roblox had 40 million daily active users? That's insane. But yeah, the, the market with uh, younger kids is is humongous. Oh, um, you know, I, I'm pretty sure if I went all in on Minecraft, I could probably actually do decently there. Um, oh, what the? What is this? Flash bomb? <laughs> wow, you can get flash bomb? That's pretty sick. Um, what's this? Growth. Plague claw. Honestly, honestly, flash bomb is pretty sick. 
minus 1,000 treasury. That's fine. Yeah. I'll take it. The uh, minus melee defense will be really good when we're taking selected, selective battles. Until we die. Ooh, that sounds very familiar, but I don't remember exactly where that's from. Let's put Flash Bomb on. Well, why don't we? There we go. Against the dwarves. How fitting. You still play uh, SC2 co-op? Oh, yeah. SC2 co-op is really fun. I would highly recommend it. All right, what do we got? Some puzzles. Uh, da -da. Swirly. Is that the only swirly? Yeah. Success. Speed. Amazing. These are the puzzles in Warhammer. I think... I feel like there's a little bit more to be desired. It, it's sort of weird. How do you guys feel about the Warhammer puzzles? I feel like they're... They're very okay. You know, nothing... Nothing mind-blowing, but... I guess they sort of get the job done in that they mix up the gameplay. And it is a strategy game, so perhaps people do... They would enjoy puzzles, but I don't know. Alright, is Norska gonna win this? I'm not entirely sure. I feel like they're gonna lose, and then I can... Take over, uh... Clean things up afterwards. Uh, a question. Is there a way... You can make gunnery mobs broken in-game. Yes, uh, play multiplayer. <laughs> gunnery mobs are insanely good. Oh my gosh, especially before the nerf. Um, nowadays, you know, bombers probably outclass them, but I think they're I think they're a pretty good unit. One challenge you always thought was a dwarf bolt thrower only. That sounds that sounds like it'd be pretty difficult. I don't know about you, but. Let's see, would that work? I feel like that'd be a little bit sketchy. I don't know. You'd need, like, a massive army to actually pull that off properly. It'd be a little bit sketchy for sure. Um, let's see, do I need food here? I only need a little bit, so I'll just do that for the extra money. Uh, stacking gunnery mobs behind leviathans. Oh, uh, actually, if you, you can go budget gunnery builds where you have a whole ton of... Um, oh, we're losing food now. Let's do this. Let's get some food back. This place need food. Where can I squeeze out more food? I guess this is it. I guess help it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, if you if you get zombies and you turn them sideways, your guns can shoot along the side. So uh, I would I would definitely recommend trying something like that out. What's this? Ambush speed. Pretty cool, but it's only on him. Uh, actually, all these are pretty garbage. We'll take this though. So. All right, nice. Hopefully this finishes up soon so we can start heading south. Dwarf Ranger only. I feel like that's just a normal campaign. You know, honestly, I feel like we could do with a few more chat, like even more challenging campaigns, but I don't know how much people enjoy the super challenging stuff. 85 minutes and 85 watching. Hey, very nice. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. Right above Legend. What about Legend? Oh, I showed up in your recommended above legend. That is insanity. That is absolute insanity, especially considering that, uh, you know, we're doing a stream right now instead of a normal video. Honestly, the channel is, uh, the channel has been doing very good as of late. It, it is, it is so exciting, guys. Hopefully it does. Hopefully it keeps going, though. But, uh, what are, what are the plans here? We got some empire over here. I do want to beat um sort of the this very problematic dwarf group but i don't know how long that's going to go for um first things first though i guess we're just going to turn a couple of these dogs undead just to give them some more healing gotta make sure i take care of them and then uh i guess we just start finishing the campaign right ensure that one of the oh we need to beat the chapter objective so that's this uh, that's pretty easy. We'll get that done very soon. Ensure that one of the following uh, buildings has been constructed. The depths of Hellpit. So I believe that's this. Yeah. We'll have to wait till tier 5, but there's a way to cheese it pretty easily. So I'm not too worried about that. Um, and then Flesh Laboratory three times. We don't have the money for that just yet. And then what's this? Upgrade. Uh, okay, yeah. Yeah, just upgrade it. Okay. 
Actually, uh, this is a really short campaign. We might be able to end this very soon, guys. Probably before the end of today. Corpse carts only? That's hilarious. <laughs> I should definitely do that. Mazda Mundi, this is Total War. Oh, that's pretty fun. That would be pretty fun. Ogre only legendary. That's one I was talking about earlier. Ogres only? Um, I don't know how you can quickly get ogres, though. Like, even as Skaven, we haven't gotten it. I don't know if that's just because it's Skaven or what. But, yeah. Okay, now they're starting to get hit by massive attrition. So, Throg is definitely going to raise that settlement. Which means I need to get a little bit of food for uh, my Skaven guys. I'm tempted to go to war against the Vampire Counts. I'm very tempted just because they're nearby and they're sort of fresh pickings, but I guess I'll resist the urge and go for the Empire instead. Just so that we don't get any disaster situations here. Maybe when Warhammer 3 comes out? Ah yes, the easiest campaign ever. Alright, Throg, do your thing. Finish the fight. Let's do this. Ah, oh, wow, that's really expensive. Uh, let's just save up money for laboratory upgrades, why don't we? Pretty sure there's a minimum turn count for ogres, but forget what it is. Okay, well then that would make things very hard. I don't think it's impossible though, simply because you can uh, really, you can defend your main settlement for a really long time. Dark Elf DLCs only. Uh, what's it? Oh wait, no. <laughs> oh my gosh, Phil McDonald. You know, I feel like uh, I feel like maybe. You know, you can, you can do a run that, that sort of just has those specific units. Maybe I wouldn't call the run, maybe I wouldn't label the run as that, just so that YouTube doesn't take down my, my video. But, uh, but perhaps, perhaps. I do really like the much more difficult challenges. The thing is, I'm much less of a cheesy player and much more of a uh, micro-intensive one. So, it, it's sort of a... Uh, it'll depend. It'll depend on whether or not I get units that I can actually control really well. Oh man, okay guys, uh, tell me, should I go to war with the vampire counts? Uh, I'll put up a poll in chat, because it would be faster for me to get food, so that I can colonize that settlement. But then again, I would also be at war with the vampire counts, which would be terrible. I'll, I'll set up a poll. Let me, let me do that real quick. Should I fight the vampires? Yes or no? Okay, there we go. Vote away! Vote away. There we go, there's the poll. Hey, uh, nice! Norska took out the dwarves for me, so actually they were a lot less of a problem than, than I would have uh, initially thought. So I'm going to go into my sort of raid stance there to get a little bit of food. This guy is going to do the exact same. And uh, we'll we'll just try to get to 120 so I can settle that nice and quick. Oh, can I get a can I get some loot real quick? Is this the same puzzle we got earlier? I think it is. All right. Well, there we go. Hey, there we go. Get your ogres, my lords, out. All right. Thank you very much, advisor. Ogre mercenaries arrive. So I guess it is a turn 30 thing. Perhaps we can't recruit them, so they're not actually that important but you know there we go okay everyone wants me to fight the vampires well there you go the chat has decided vampires can't be that scary right what they're just undead we're gonna have minus 10 leadership on our guys it'll be fine it will be fine wow 71 percent okay you guys are vicious all right the end of the empire or the end of the vampires is nigh uh, let's see, how can I get a little bit more food? I guess fighting the undead, right? Alright, that's the plan. That's the plan. Let's go ahead and close up this vote before more people <laughs> vote yes. There we go. It's done. The vote is decided. So I should be able to sneak some pretty fast fights over here down in the south. Uh, win, that, win those battles and then um, colonize that big settlement in the north. In fact, you know, I don't even need uh, that northern settlement, right? It's not actually that important. Um, I could probably just go go south. What's this? Foe Seeker? Or tons of experience. Um, that's really expensive, though. This isn't actually that great of an item. 
I'll just go for the experience instead. Campaign movement range, very good. All right, to the south. To the south, I hope you're ready, undead. The wolf rats are hungry. We're so screwed. We're doomed, absolutely doomed. Uh, can I get an upgrade going to finish this campaign a bit faster? What do we got? Increase mutagen max. Uh, we don't really need that. Food from recycling units. We're not doing that too often either. Yes, we'll do this. There we go. And then at some point, we'll take these and we'll be good. After claiming eight growth vat batches. Um, one of these is pretty good to continuously claim, right? Yeah, this one. The mutagen uh, buyback. I'll need to do that a few times. They don't have arrows. That is true. They don't have range units. That Oh, plus 10 leadership when sieging. Yes, please. Leadership buffs are the true wolf rat upgrades. What can I get for this guy? Uh, yes. We want hero defense against the vampires because they have a million heroes. In campaign, they spam them out like no tomorrow. And we definitely do not want any of that action. Now, uh, the surprise attack. I could attack the south or go for the north. I guess, uh, I guess we might scout them out a bit before actually launching the invasion. I assume the Greenskins are also going to come after me, but that should be fine. Greenskins are really weak against wolf rats. You think the, the weakest Primarch would be able to defeat the whole Warhammer fantasy world? Well, yeah. Yeah, 40k is insane. They can blow up planets like the Warhammer fantasy world. At best, they have Croak. Who, like what? He can move continents? Compared to Warhammer 40k, like, not even close. Not even close. Go to the south? All right. I have a few turns where uh, they won't attack me right off the bat, so I can sort of just march through their lands and get hopefully what is a really nice and spicy surprise attack. They'll never see it coming. Let's go ahead and upgrade this so that our uh, sort of, not our leadership, but our uh, public order stays nice and healthy. General question. Are the ogres in Warhammer supposed to be the Olag from Lord of the Rings? Oh, I feel like that's just trolls though, right? I feel like trolls are, are a much similar equivalent. Trolls or maybe giants. At intensity, Mazamundi uh, moved the continents because he felt like it. Croak. Okay, there we go. Croak held against bloodthirsters. I feel like Croak would do okay against very generic... Um, Warhammer 40k guys, but I don't think he'd be able to do well against any of the, you know, the top tier guys. I feel like he would not really be able to, to stand his own very well. Uh, there's a lot of things that could kill a, a, siddle, a single Primarch. How strong are they? Is he, uh, like, would Grimgore be able to win against them? I feel like Primarchs are mostly melee, if I'm getting it right. Maybe with, like, uh, I feel like well, I feel like any ranged weaponry would probably shut down Grimgore real quick. So that'd be pretty unfortunate for him. What do you mean with Olag? Uh, I think uh, in Lord of the Rings, there's, there's like a big troll-like guy. Olag? Oh, well, never mind. <laughs> yeah, I, I assume that's what you were talking about. Yeah, they're, they're sort of troll-looking guys. Most playable characters would get wrecked. It's good to know. Shadow of War is not canon. I, I heard about that, but uh, you know, I'm I'm sure it's it's good head canon, right? At the very least. All right, so we got tons of wolf rats. I'm going to uh, I'm gonna wait before I. Yeah, let's get it out of the way now. We're gonna recruit a ton of them. And uh, you know, if we can take out the vampire count's main capital, that would be a pretty big win. I don't know if that's a terribly good idea, but um, we'll, we'll try it out. Worst case, we recruit a new army and we're more or less set. What is this? Norska. Norska just camping out my front door? Come on. We're friendly, right? Hopefully we are. There's some things in lore that are strong enough to kill Primarchs. If you remember right, it's like Schrodinger's cannon. I have no idea where chat's going at this point, but whatever. Let's see, like, uh, okay, let's, your most basic troop 
in Warhammer 40k. Like sort of those basic human infantry guys. How strong are those guns? Would it be strong enough to kill like, you know... I feel like the basic gun in Warhammer is strong enough to kill most things in fantasy, right? If I'm getting this right. A Dread Saurian could probably eat a Primarch. Oh yeah, I feel like... I feel like that's getting there. Like, uh, Warhammer 40k does have the jungle worlds that are essentially Lustria on steroids. So I could see that working out. Alright, but we're getting close. We're getting close to the Vampire Count's uh, mainland. We're gonna go for the quick snipe on the capital. Do a little bit of a sack and settle. And then uh, we'll be good. We have tons of extra wolf rats in case of emergency. And uh, we're going to continue upgrading these guys to be as strong as possible. Now, I'm thinking we're going to get the uh, this AoE ability as an emergency. If the battle is not going very well or if there's a ton of vampires, we can use this to sort of uh, sacrifice a wolf rat to ensure that we win the fight. I feel like uh, that should be a pretty good idea. We'll get one on Throt too as our emergency contingency plan. And then we're more or less set. Uh, and then from there we can just expand outwards and deal with the vampires. Usually they're fighting the Empire for so long that their armies back here are pretty weak. Fantasy used lead ball ammo and that's easily comparable to a 50 cal. That is true and cannons are pretty dangerous. Cannons are like the epitome of overkill. Um... For, for most fantasy monsters, so... Yeah. Undead, that's true. Undead uh, have a pretty strong advantage there. Oh, thank goodness for that money. I definitely needed that. Okay, do a little bit of leapfrog action. We're nearly there, guys. We're nearly there. I'm gonna stab Manfred in the back. Exactly what he deserves. Boris could probably kill a Primarch? Really? I don't know. Is Boris that good? I guess it's sort of sacrilege for me to even question, but... Is he actually that good? In in Warhammer, uh, you know, in Total War, he definitely doesn't seem that good. Bullets are much more humane compared to Lead Balls. I feel like both uh, are sort of pretty sucky. I would not want to get shot by either of those problem when you compare the scale of 40k to fantasy well like you know scale wise you know of course they have multiple planets but yeah guardsmen are about similar value to skaven slaves yeah we're just trying to find a nice balance here but uh anyways i think we've more or less got there here we go castle drakenhof we have a ton of undead we have thwat and we have uh ramsey over here we're going to need to go to war with them, but it looks like he's just recruiting right now. So I think if I underway over here, can I support in this fight? I feel like he can. If he can't, that'd be a little bit awkward, but, uh, you know, we'll make do. And I think, uh, I think we just siege the city. It's tier three. Wow, that's really low. But, uh, yeah, let's just do it. It's gonna, we're gonna, no one's gonna like us, but we're scaven. I don't think anyone's gonna like us anyways. And what do we got? We have a million dogs. You know what? I'm feeling pretty good about this. Let's get our one battering ram up to encourage our guys to get into the fight. And uh, and just try to overrun this guy. If we can actually win these battles, it would be really, really good. Uh, because we'll be getting tons of food, tons of money from doing these fights. We should be set. And then, uh, and then we can probably win the campaign in the next, like, two hours. Someone quote him without context, saying Boris could kill a Primarch. Alright, 40k is hard to gauge because they don't get spiritual buffs, like Sigmar and Moor. I see. If you die in fantasy, Moor will protect your soul. If you die in 40k, the Chaos Gods will eat you. Huh. Uh, yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure then. I am not sure. Let's go ahead and uh, encamp real quick for the fight. Get a little bit more leadership in. Crushing defeat. Classic. Um, but this should be pretty straightforward, I think. 
let's just go ahead and fight the battle. Yeah, I, I'm not sure, because, yeah, you got fantasy. I'm sure Croak, he's on the upper end of the strongest beings in all of Warhammer. So I feel like he probably has something up his sleeve. I'm sure bullets, like, you know, basic bullets from 40k would not be that good against Croak. Especially since they're not good against, uh, you know, shields and such in 40k, I think. If I know my lore correctly. So that should be pretty nice. Now, uh, as usual, the goal here, and looks like we're getting a little bit of FPS drops, but you shouldn't notice on YouTube. The goal, I want to get into the city so I can get better surrounds. Alternatively, I could use these guys to get uh, huge AoEs and try to bust in through too. But I think overall, we're just going to try and get through to this gatehouse at the start. We'll get these guys. They're going to be sort of just a distraction at the start to keep these guys uh, where they are. But we really want to get over here. Um, real quick, where is the Lord? If they have any amount of AoE, that'd be pretty bad. Vampire counts usually don't. Just Spirit Leech. Wonderful. That is very good for us. And uh, most of these guys, you know, you have a couple Grave Guard, a couple Armored units, but I'm feeling pretty good about my chances here. I just have to make sure that these guys don't uh, swarm in too, too quickly. Looks like they are doing a bit of repositioning there. Uh, but we might be able to spill through in time. I'm not sure. It's a close one. 40k has more bodies than tech, yeah. I think, like, in an all-out war, 40k, of course, is going to be much stronger. It's more the one-on-one uh, -on -one duels that I'm personally interested in. All right. Now, these are Graveguard uh, great weapons. So the first thing we want to do is to get our armor-piercing dogs, put them on two, and use them to try and punch through the Graveguard. If I can get enough of these guys to sort of clump up too, that would be really good for me. Because then I can use these guys to sort of bomb in and hopefully get a lot of damage in. Uh, we've established that they don't have any AoE, so it's fine to sort of group up with my guys here. And we'll see how this goes. Uh, let's see, we'll throw down a... Uh... Oh, this is a single target flash bomb? Oh, yeah, yeah, it's, it's that, yeah. Alright, but uh, the biggest hurdle here really is getting through the front gates... I'm not sure what the best way to do it is. I guess we'll start with the with the suicide rats. We'll get the the sort of big AOE here. I think that should be able to do quite a bit of damage as it costs a ton of money. Um, so we'll just sort of just get them in there. And then hopefully that goes okay. At some point, I'll get the rat ogres too and summon them in to sort of uh, help and body block and so forth. And that should work out quite well. Okay, so let's see how much value this gets. We've hit the undead. They're taking damage. Oh, it is pretty good damage. That's not bad. So we can uh, cycle out those dogs and then get these ones in to do the same thing. And then after we start spilling through, it's going to be really just a cakewalk from there, I think. Let's see, this thing, that tower is a little bit annoying. We'll shift a tiny bit to the left and then we'll be good. Here we go. AoE number two coming in hot. Logar is the uh, is the weakest indeed. Uh, rip Logar. Why? What? What makes them bad? Uh, how do you four x speed? You think you can only three x? Oh no, this is four x. Three uh, x is should be impossible. Um, as as I understand it, anyways. Whoa, that was laggy. All right, there we go. We're gonna hit them with another big AOE. Then we're going to get Throt. We're going to throw down the Rat Ogre Summons. Going to get this guy. We're going to grab a few Wolf Rats. And then we're going to try to force path our way through. This should be fairly straightforward. Um, given that most of those guys are engaged. But uh, we'll see. If I can spill into the courtyard, the Crypt Ghouls will have a very hard time. And then uh, we'll be good to go. The strongest is very much up to debate. I feel like that's with most things. So you don't know what you just tuned into, but you're simultaneously terrified and intrigued. Uh, well, it's been a pretty good stream so far. Quick, uh, quick rule showcase uh, over there, you can see. Um, it's mostly, it's basically you just got to use a lot of wolf rats. That's the general idea. Um, there's no heroes, so that I'm not allowed to hero cheese. And um, all I got to do is, is just, uh, it's just micro my rats a lot. We did some really nice surrounds earlier, which crushed the Kislev forces. And then from there, uh, 
chat felt confident enough to have me go to war with the vampire accounts. And so far, it's actually going really well. Um, just uh, the masked the mass dog strat uh, with the surrounds. Um, the AI is really bad at keeping their infantry group together. And that allows me to get some really nice surrounds in the back. We've got a ton of really strong mutations on all the dogs, too. And that means that they can even kill Graveguard. Uh, yeah, normal Graveguard quite easily. Crypt Ghouls are no problem, of course, because of their lack of armor. And from here, it should just be cleanup, I think. Let's go ahead and uh, kill off this Lord, just so that they stop spirit leeching the dogs. And then we'll be good. Mistake number one, assuming chat has your best interests in mind. That is true. But uh, a mistake, I do not know yet. As, uh, as this fight is going really well, I must say. What are these? Some more Crypt Ghouls? Maybe some Zombies? Now, of course, things will get a lot more dicey once we start involving um, AoE. As it will be a million times harder to actually micro properly. Of course, uh, cycle charging is super important. And we can just sort of get our dogs into to do that. Uh, charging in the back is really, really important here. But the sort of choke point of the settlement battle will limit me a little bit. But overall, the dogs are doing insane damage. Look at that. These are black knights getting just absolutely munched on. Um, but I do need to make sure that I'm cycle charging. So let's go ahead and deal with these Graveguard great weapons with just this gigantic swarm of dogs. That should be fairly straightforward, I think. And then we're just going to push through into uh, into the courtyard, I think. Or maybe just hit them with the army losses. It's probably much more straightforward. My heroes are getting caught up in the undead a little bit. That should be fine. And we have been stacking leadership buffs. Which uh, will help my guys out a lot. Um, you can see actually early on, oh my gosh. My dogs are routing to just basic Kislev infantry. And that was, that was pretty bad for them. But now, true terrors. Um, they've been, uh, they've been munching away quite well. I'm quite proud of them. Lucky the AI sucks at using magic. That is true. Um, but when it comes to AoEs, uh, they have auto tracking with it, uh, which makes it a lot scarier indeed. All right, so we got a few of these guys in the courtyard. Um, we're gonna set up a good surround on these grave guard that I'm moving in, and that should speed up the battle quite a bit. In fact, I'm, I feel safe enough where I can times four this. So honestly, the undead, you know, I, I thought they would be a little bit scarier, but uh, things are going quite well over here. I'm going to do a little bit of a push through here and then send in another wave to do uh, the cycle charging action. That way we get as much coverage as possible. When it comes to dogs, you just want to make sure that as many of them are attacking as possible. And then we're just going to continue loading up this left flank to make sure that, uh, that they are able to flank. Some Vargites are going to be landing in. That is the worst decision they've ever made in the entirety of their undeath. Dogs are really strong against them because of their low armor. Then another charge. The lion can change his swing without even thinking. Is this, uh, we're still talking 40k? Alright, let's see. Imagine a wind of death. Yes, yes. It's why we have to take these battles super quickly. Uh, before the AI starts really stacking those really super dangerous armies. But this battle at least was very straightforward. I think uh, they hit army losses. So yeah, these guys will start disintegrating at the mere sight of my hundreds and hundreds of dogs. How many guys did we lose anyways? I think we barely lost any. That was a really good siege battle. Decisive. How decisive. This video is pretty cool, although uh, without some hard numbers, it's difficult to say how reliable it is uh, to use as a whole. Uh, what's it? Wait, which, which video are we talking about? I guess, uh, I guess probably a video someone mentioned in chat. I got no idea. But all right, what do we got? We didn't lose any dogs. That's very good. We got a, we got some food back. We can go ahead and settle this at tier 5. We'll be down all of our food, but like, come on. A tier 5 settlement in Manfred's territory? How could one pass that up? Here we go. Uh, Do we go for the Eshin pick? I feel like 
feel like that's a little bit risky. Like, I want to sort of just uh, garrison this place up first. And the number one priority is to simply defend. Get that money going. Get the more money going. Yeah, this is good. All right. So I'm feeling quite good about this. Uh, do we need spelunking holes? It costs five turns, but uh, it'll make sure our public order is good. Talking about medieval. Uh, you wish the AI was better, was built better. I think I think all of us wish the AI was built better. Unfortunately, it seems like with Warhammer Three we might not be getting that. But I feel like uh, I feel like with Warhammer Three, I'm cautiously optimistic that we'll get a better AI than we have currently. Especially because CEA still has a good amount of time to keep working on that. So fingers crossed, it all goes okay. I'm sure most of you guys have seen Legends video on the. Uh, on the siege battle, where the AI was derping out a bit. Excuse me, but uh, but I'm I'm cautiously optimistic as I always am. But nice, we've invaded the home of the vampires, and I forgot we're right beside the dwarves. So uh, you know, if Thorgrim decides to end us, that would be something. And uh, nice, we've successfully destroyed our um, our communications with all the other factions, so they won't be spamming me. Spamming me with their mail anymore. So uh, that's also a plus. Yeah, Warhammer Empire is definitely Renaissance level. They got cannons. They got guns. And they have magic, so they're even stronger. Uh, oh yeah, the AI on Wood Elves is insane. Because just everything is skirmish mode. Uh, that's bad. I accidentally let myself run out of money. I'm sure it'll be fine. Let's go ahead and take out Eshen while we're here. Pyrrhic victory. Yeah, right. Let's get some random buffs going. All right. This is just a couple of zombies, so no problem there. Is your final uh, wolf rat goal to have uh, Okai level of destructive? I, I have no idea what you mean by that, but uh, the goal is just to win the campaign. I think we can do that. The steam tank is totally renaissance. Oh yeah, that's true. Full on steam tank tech. Okay, so this guy's staying back. We got these guys. Here we go. Alright, now this is my first field battle against the undead. They don't have ranged and they have mostly zombies. So I feel like wolf rats are actually strangely enough fairly well suited for this. How's my leadership doing? 42? Not bad. Uh, mostly because they have silver chevrons, which helps them out a ton. What does this guy have? Basic spells, nothing too scary. Bellbats diving on in. They'll get munched down rather quickly. And I think we're good. Uh, oh, yeah, the video um, I talked about where the AI was derping out. Uh, let's see. I, I forget your comment on that. But yeah, anyways. Anyways, I think I think we'll be fine though. And uh speaking fine for Warhammer 3 anyways, and I think we'll also be fine for this campaign as uh Max Chevron Wolf Rats is actually pretty intense. I don't even really need to cycle charge here. Of course, this is just a, a basic garrison, but I think we're pretty good. Let's get Thrott in. Let's give him some uh some action. Let's see, you give the steam, uh, you give the tank a pass because it's reverse engineered dwarf tech. Uh, I guess that's true, but it, aren't cannons also reverse engineered dwarf tech? Like, what isn't dwarf tech, you know? Dwarves have been dealing with, uh, they, didn't, didn't they give the Empire fire, right? Like, basically everything that the Empire has, except for, you know, their Sigmar religion stuff is, is dwarf tech. Do you feel like some coast units were a tad over nerfed? Uh, I feel like Vampire Coast, I feel like they're in a pretty good position right now, but they're relying really heavily on the gunnery whites. So I think they were appropriately nerfed, but uh, they could still use a bit of rebalancing. Everything uh, gunpowder is based on the dwarves. Yeah, there we go. All right, now I really need the money. So we're going to start sacking some settlements. There we go. Oh, hey, we got uh, our first Regiment of Renown. Very nice. We'll pull back so that we don't have to worry about any fights over here. 
And then we're going to look for more leadership buffs. It's weird that I can't get these yet. I need a cavern. All right. I guess I will work towards these food capacity buffs. What race are you most excited for for Warhammer 3? Zinch, because I love my gun builds. I'm really excited about Ogre Kingdoms, because I'm just a huge fan. And um, there was a third one. Oh yeah, and Corn and Cathay. Cathay because they're defensive, Corn because I feel like you can actually kite with them. And I want to prove all my clan rate, all my clan mates wrong. But uh, I guess I can't really count on that. Still, though, I feel like Corn is actually going to be really good uh, with Kite. And I, I will I will be waiting to be proved wrong on that. I guess we'll have to see. Uh, let's see. I guess we just pass the turn here. Yeah, it's not much to do. And just uh, weather the storm of the vampire accounts. I think our armies are strong enough now where we can win quite handily, though. Corn is going to be so hard to balance. Uh, yeah, that is true. He is a little bit strange. And hey, we get to play a normal settlement battle here. Um, I don't think I can really give these guys a whole ton of losses. So I'm fine just just losing it. Uh, this, this settlement isn't super important to me anyway. So I don't really need to fight for that. How do you kite with corn? Uh, so he has hell cannons and he has soul grinders. Oh, no. No, not like this. Norska, why? Um, oh, look at that. They've been camping out there for a while, finally taking their territory. Yeah, so Corn, Corn has hell cannons that do uh, that reload in combat. Your conquests. Yes, yes, uh, yeah. So they reload in combat. So that means you can actually just route off a single unit with Corn's hell cannons, and then um, and then just chase them down and reload your ammunition. Um, it's basically just an an infinite loop of ammo. Uh, that you can do with corn, and I feel like I feel like that's that's basically all you need, really. Um, you just continuously chase down units and reload ammo, and then shoot at them again. Uh, real quick, I need to see these guys over here. Not to mention the soul grinders are pretty fast too. Oh, it's Gorst. Okay. Uh, yeah, the soul grinders are pretty fast too. So I feel like they'll be able to actually. Um, kite, and they do have a ranged attack on Corn also. Not to mention, he Corn does have dogs. So when Warhammer Three drops, we might do a dog only run uh, with him too, which would be rather exciting. You feel like Zinch will be able to skirmish Kite really good as well? Yes, but that's a given. Uh, I sort of like playing a bunch of. Uh, I like doing things that most people wouldn't. Sort of like very unique styles. Um, so like, you know, kiting with Zinch is a little bit too vanilla for me, you know? If I'm going to play Zinch, I want to go for a mass gun line rather than, uh, you know, sort of a generic kite build. Unless the gun lines become meta. Then that's a different issue, but, you know. Does this guy have Wind of Death? I assume he doesn't, otherwise he would have cast it by now, but... Yeah, he just has Nahak. Okay, we're good. <laughs> but yeah, Zinch gun lines are going to be insane. They're going to be insane. Um, so I'm, I am very excited about that. Kite with Nurgle. Now, there we go. Now we're talking. Zinch hold the line. Yes, a full melee build with Zinch. Honestly, you could do it. If you just continuously sub units in and out, uh, you could probably take very little damage. Yeah, I'm a total hipster. I think <laughs> you figured me out. Maximum hipster over here. Um, but yeah. Still though, gun lines are my bread and butter. Whether they're meta or not. I'll definitely be going, though. When you saw uh, one of those trailers, you saw that the corn dogs appeared to be large. Ah, that's fine. I'm fine with a full large army. All right, Gorst. Uh, I don't know how scary Gorst is. I guess we'll just chill out in uh, in Drakenhof for a little bit. And then this guy's probably going to have to retreat. In fact, he might get caught out, but honestly, a fight against Gorst wouldn't be too terrible. Meanwhile, over here, uh, the Norse skins are trying to come out. But uh, I think we're still okay. This guy's taking over Kislev. That's fine. It's just a tier one. In fact, our biggest settlements are Ostrosk. Uh, what is this? Ostrosk. Okay, yeah, sure. Ostrosk. Um, and that's fairly well defended. Same with Hellpit. So I'm not worried in the slightest. And we can even get a few more dogs. Very nice. 
Ramsey has maxed out dogs. Throt could use a couple more. Uh, let's see. Yeah, we'll, we'll just slap them in. Whoops. We'll just slap them in just to make sure that we're not limited on our army size. Oh, whoops. We had too much mutagen. Whoopsie daisies. Ostrosk. All right. Ostrosk. That's such a weird name. Maybe it's just, uh, maybe it's just because I'm Canadian. And my, my range of, of sounds is not as good. At the high level, uh, what sort of micro do you think is the hardest in Total War? At the highest level? Uh, I think probably... I think honestly single entities can be a little bit... Uh, I think single entities actually, yeah. Uh, strangely enough are really hard to micro super well. Darn it, we lost like 25 mutagen. That sort of sucks, but whatever. Uh, but yeah, at the highest level, strangely enough, I think single entities are really hard to micro optimally. The reason is because they have animations that can knock units around. And to do that optimally is a lot harder than you would expect. Um, not only that, but you have to position them extremely well. Uh, if I do this, that's minus five leadership to me, right? I feel like that's, that's a bad thing. Um... But yeah, at the highest level, uh, your single entities, you have to position them extremely well. And if you can, it's insane value. But uh, I don't think it's something that even the top level players do very often. Um, so it's sort of that would be my vote. Now, uh, the contaminated is a lot less useful here now. In fact, I think the weeping... The Weeping Blades is probably what we want to do. Of course, fire damage is nice, and it will increase damage, but I don't really have enough mutagen to spam that out just yet. Physical Resist is cool. Guardian is cool. Leadership is pretty cool, too, but... Charge Bonus plus 25%. This is probably the biggest damage boost I could take, so I'll probably just spam that out. Yeah, because they already have, like, 50 charge bonus. Honestly, these dogs are insanely strong already. I would be pretty comfortable taking on most armies with this... With this dog army. Oh, it's a siege battle. Look at that. What does Gorst have? Oh, he left. Yeah. Um, I guess we'll, we'll just take the siege fight. Wonder if Karanek... The Cerberus ripoff Flesh Hound would be a candidate for a DLC Legendary Hero. Uh, I've never heard of that, but it sounds pretty cool. I would be excited to see something like that. I think my garrison here is finally strong enough where Thwap can move out, so we will do just that. And uh, no Warlock Engineering today. Now, I want to get this upgraded as soon as possible. And then we'll just continue uh, securing the south. I think these two settlements are strong enough to hold their own, so I'm not particularly worried about them. So I think we're good. We just have to win some fights. Ost means East in German. It's not that strange of a name if you keep that in mind. Okay. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah. It is just uh, my lack of cultural diversity then. I don't know if that's the right term, but there we go. And as for Gorst, oh, look at that. Gorst is going for his own mini dog build. Good for him. Uh, speaking of, Gorst's army is really weak, so I can probably fight that out as long as he doesn't have any devastating magic. Alright, uh, do you have a favorite hockey team, or are you uh, not patriotic? I I'd say I'm like medium patriotic, but um, hockey teams, uh, I don't really watch that much hockey really. So I'm not super into it. As you can imagine, I'm not that heavy of a, you know, classic sports type of person. Um, I mostly play Warhammer. Although, uh, although I can, you know, if, if I do end up watching hockey, I will... Wow, Crushing Defeat? What is this? Uh, yeah, if, if I do ever end up watching hockey, I will still cheer for any Canadian teams. That's a guarantee. Who's a good boy? All of them. They're all very good boys. Um, not a single wolf rat has, has done me wrong this campaign. Except for that one time when they all ran away at the same time. But, uh, you know, we, we got a trainer. Uh, we've, been, we've been keeping them nice and, uh, 
nice and well trained. I don't know where I'm going with this bit, but but yeah, you know, they know when to sit, they know when to stay, which is the most important command, and they know how to fight. They know how to sick, so that's that's pretty good. Now I'm gonna try some shenanigans for this battle. We're gonna get our single hero, and he's going to kick down the gates. We're gonna take a few free shots from uh, from the garrison, but sort of by doing this, I ensure that uh, I ensure that the AI doesn't reposition just yet, and then afterwards I can move in with my dogs and then spill through a little bit easier. Okay, so let's get that gate down. Let's turn on melee mode. Is that guy not hitting the gate? 1% damage. Wow, he's gonna take a while. Maybe we send in a couple units of dogs just to help him out. Uh, as long as the AI is mostly garrisoned in the middle, it'll ensure that I can get over here and sort of overwhelm their forces as fast as possible. Maybe you can replace hockey with a uh, total warhammer as a national sport. Oh, how I wish. How I wish. I feel like the skill ceiling on Warhammer is insanely high, but sort of as an eSport, it's probably not the best eSport in the world, as much as I hate to say it. Um, yeah, Warhammer, it, it has a few problems with it, unfortunately, that would hold it back. But honestly, it wouldn't be the worst. Uh, in terms of skill ceiling, it is extremely hard to sort of work around the jank of your many units. What do you think Warhammer 3 DLC factions will be? Oh my gosh. Uh, well, I'm sure Dogs of War. Everyone everyone wants to see the Dogs of War, for sure. Maybe baseball is, is that way, too. Uh, let's see. You enjoy sports where physical attributes aren't the biggest determinant of who's good. Oh yeah, that that is, that is pretty cool, I would say, yeah. There's a lot of uh, sort of deck sports. How do you guys feel about sort of uh, shooting sports? Cause like I know in the Olympics they have, um, they have yeah where where you literally just have to shoot a target. Um, I feel like a little bit conflicted about that. Cause like, of course it takes a lot of skill, and it takes strength too. And not all sports, you know, rely on just being the strongest person ever. But it it sort of a, it definitely feels like an outlier at the Olympics. I don't know. I definitely wouldn't just outright remove it from the Olympics. I'm not qualified to to make a call on that, that's for sure, but but it's always felt a little bit strange to me. You want Nippon? That would be sick. Uh, I, I doubt it would ever uh, get added to the game, but it would be very sick indeed. Black Knight's coming in. Let's give him a slow and a Rat Ogre summon. But yeah, I feel like uh, there's a... You know, a lot of people really like Halflings, too. Um, I feel like Halflings would be a really fun faction to add. Um, but I feel like they might just be uh, sort of not exactly a full-on faction. Maybe they might just be like a DLC. Maybe they'll be part of Dogs of War. I'm not sure. See, they added Cathay. Now everyone's asking for Nippon. Am I saying that right? I feel like I might not be, but... Yeah, I feel like I'm pretty happy that we got Cathay, though. Um, especially just because, you know, you... You never really get to see, uh, you never really get to see Cathay. Like, well, yeah, you, no one really knew anything about Cathay until, uh, until Warhammer 3. Like, that is a, a huge, like, a huge achievement for Total War. Um, the fact that they got to help introduce the faction, the fact that Vampire Coast sort of got to come in from nowhere too. It's great. The Olympics are basically four obscure sports. There's no reason for shooting to go. Okay, I could see that, yeah. Because, like, all the big sports already get their things, but yeah. Olympics have, like, you know, diving and all that, where it's a lot more niche. I could I could get behind that. I will say, oh, wow. We have one dog unit at basically no HP. I'm going to send him home so that uh, he can get nice and healed up. We got the horde of zombies over here. I'm not uh, particularly worried about that as uh, zombies don't do that well against dogs. Who would have guessed? And I think uh, we're ahead enough now where I can just times four this. Our dogs are immensely strong now. We've stacked them with the correct buffs. Of course, these are undead, and uh, to optimize them, of course, the usual. Some classic cycle charging. You just pull out one unit, and then you pull in the rest. And then you just rinse and repeat until the enemy is dead. Uh, let's see. 
almost certainly going to be the mystery lord. We're talking about Bellacor, yeah. Like, uh... Like, everyone's saying it's going to be Bellacor. Unless CA wants to pull a fast one on us, but... Um... Yeah, definitely, like, who else would it be, right? Uh, I, I personally am a big fan of the advisor as sort of a meme legendary lord, but that would not really work in terms of, like, sort of uh, the advertising for Warhammer 3. I don't think having a meme lord for the final guy would really uh, sort of advertise Warhammer 3 super hard. Imagine if, it's, if it was Thankful. Now that would be really cool. That would be pretty hype. Um, I feel like... Oh man, that'd be great. Alright, this uh, this battle's dragging on a bit. Let's see if I can get a little bit more cycle charging. Fun fact, uh, when you try and make formations within the city, um, the, the walls of the settlement actually really, really bug out the game and make it where uh, it just lags like crazy. I'm not sure entirely why, but... You know, probably just some op unoptimized... Uh, little thing. Bone Daddy Nagash. Okay, yeah, that one would be pretty cool. I feel like Nagash is totally gonna be a DLC, though. Based on uh, current predictions and so on. Man, Nagash would be pretty sick. How does he play? Is he basically the Vampire Counts roster? Or is he more of a... Um, is Nagash more of a, like... Does he have his own roster? Because I don't remember him being in any of the books or anything. Um, if he's just sort of the Vampire Counts roster, I feel like that's a little bit less exciting. You know, but um, but Nagash as a whole is is pretty cool. Can't deny that. Oh my gosh. I, I need to find an open battle. These siege battles, uh, unless I can really sort of get around these corridors, it's uh, it gets a little bit awkward here. There we go. We're getting we're getting some good coverage though, finally. So that should be most of the damage out of the way. Uh, we're probably going to lose a few dogs here, but I'm entirely confident that things will go all right. There we go. It's all about getting these charges in the back, especially on the on the knight units and everything with higher melee defense. As long as we're getting in the charges and making sure that things are fully surrounded, we're pretty good. Tomb Kings, Counts, and Coast Fuse. All right. All right, I want Nagash. You have me on the uh, on the Nagash hype train. So it's just all the undead. That's pretty hype. Hybrid of well, will he have the like the powder units of Vampire Coast though? If he doesn't have the gunpowder, then it's a lot less exciting. Okay, but apparently he's just all the undead combined. I wonder how that will play out though, because all the undead factions have a very unique um sort of playstyle associated with them. Oh no, we lost one. But yeah, they all have a sort of a very unique playstyle associated with them. I feel like the merger between all of them is uh, is a little bit less exciting, you know? Maybe that's just me, though. But all right, we have another settlement. I'm feeling good. We have uh, our wolf rat upgrades. Hopefully Throt will be able to... Yeah, I can get the... This huge buff to all of my all of my wolf rats soon. Physical resist, armor, and leadership. That's going to help out a ton. And we have a tier 5 settlement. Which means uh, chaos might actually invade us soon. We'll see how that goes. Meanwhile, in the north, we're losing a few settlements. But our most important ones are holding. And then uh, we can just sort of raid and sack our way through the, the undead settlements. Take out the undead face up against some empire and uh and we have our food back which is really nice because then we're not getting hit by these massive debuffs croak is way stronger than the gash oh okay croak is just insane especially in campaign his aoe's insane he could probably do a, a croak only campaign with those aoe's all right now we have a proper battle here we have the masses of undead against a normal Skaven army. It says it'll be a decisive defeat. Um, it may very well be, but I think uh, I think we'll. We should at least be able to take out quite a few undead. That's the goal. Just trade effectively, and uh, it is mostly crypt ghouls too. So I'm not particularly worried. 
He's still very strong when dead, yeah. Are we talking about Croak alive is stronger versus Nagash? Or is Croak dead still stronger stronger than Nagash? We, we have a few power levels that we have to go over here, right? All right, so we got uh, a bunch of guys storming the walls. We got the Grave Guard, all right. I can uh, put these guys at the front, actually, to skirmish. That should be a pretty fun mini tech piece. We'll hold the walls for a bit and then get rid of them uh, and then sort of take some fights in the courtyard, I think. That'll probably be what I want to do. Let's go ahead and put these guys on the walls. Oh man, this is getting a little bit glitchy. There we go. So we got our slingers. I want to take a fight in the courtyard so that I can cycle charge with the rat ogres. And then we should be A-OK. -okay. Nagash is ranked uh, way too OP. As in, uh, as in he's overrated, or as in he's actually just straight up OP. He's no croak. All right, the vote is in. Everyone says croak is way better than the gash. You heard it here, probably not first. But all right, this uh, early skirmishing should do fairly decently for me. I want to start abandoning the walls. These guys are just gonna go on a jog as. Um, I can distract quite a few of the undead by pulling away like this. There we go. We'll turn on skirmish mode just so I don't have to micro that. So we've done a pretty good pull of the undead now. We're going to regroup and then uh, see where our rat ogre strike team can attack. So we have a couple of guys over here that we can cycle charge. They are just crypt ghouls, so they don't worry me too much. And over here on the flank, we just got a couple units of undead over there. Nothing to worry about. Now, looks like uh, the captured towers, I forgot. That's going to be a little bit of a pain. But uh, overall, not too much of a problem. We'll put these guys on two, my ranged units. And they're going to deal with the Graveguard great weapons. As I don't have too many tools that can easily deal with that. Oh yeah, a lot of people have been talking about Neferada. And uh, a few people were predicting that she would actually come in with uh, as a free LC, but she but she never did. Um, what is the hype around her? She's like one of the people that separated from Nagash early on, right? If I could lore master of Sotek a bit. I feel like that's her general lore. She seems pretty cool. Such a greater than Nagash. Blasphemy. I think, uh, well, I don't know. There's fans for both. Such was in Warhammer 2, though, so that, that's a big win in my books. The Warhammer universe does not make sense at all. 40k and fantasy qualify. Let's see, where's Nagash? Oh, man, I need, to, I need to get into the habit of reading these full comments before I actually read them. Because I end up just making absolute no sense uh, in stream. By the way, I think the siege battle, uh, it seems like we'll, we'll probably end up losing it. But uh, I think we've we've done some pretty good trading so far. Especially the Grave Guard are really annoying. Uh, I want to finish them off as soon as I can. Ooh, actually, we have a pretty nice uh, surround and shoot in the back here. So Slinger's directly behind the Grave Guard. Just to uh, get a lot of damage in. And then I'll just cycle charge with the Rat Ogres. Uh, oh, he was she's Vlad's old wife. That's pretty cool. You know, uh, the wife of Vlad is... Uh, I can get behind them. They had a battle of wills, and the gash had to cheat to come out on top against Setra. All right, well, I'm sold. I'm sold. And the gash, I don't know. He's seeming pretty weak. I don't know. I'm, I'm not. I'm not a type for him anymore. Uh, let's see. These crypt ghouls actually trade really well against my clan rats, but there's not much I can really do uh, do against that. Someone post Setra's full name list. Can you even foot? Can you even fit Setra's uh, full name in um, in a single message? I feel like maybe not. It is rather lengthy. Will not power, I guess. All right, so uh, I'm going to do a little bit of a uh, tech maneuvering here. So this position is sort of bad for my slingers, but if I can just get the crypt ghouls fighting like this, I should be able to shoot onto their sides lengthwise. Um, I might even be able to kill the Lord, but uh, sniping out Lords is actually not that useful in uh, in Warhammer. Just because they get they get a free respawn. 
so it doesn't really do much for you. The limit is 200 characters. His name is 2,500. Well, there you go. I guess that settles it. You'll have to use 10 different messages to fit his name in. All right, slingers, go! Kill the crypt ghouls. So far, uh, trades are going okay. What do we have? There are still some units of grave guard that will probably be the end of me. But, uh, but that's all right. Now, rat ogres, they want infantry support so that they don't get obliterated. We'll give them that. And yeah, the grave guard are probably, uh, gonna win this battle, so we'll just times for it. And try to crumble away as many units as I can before the end of the fight. Cycle charging is pretty uh, HP efficient, but uh, sometimes it's not damage efficient. And since the battle is nearing its end, I'll probably cycle charge a little bit less as we get into the later stages. Yeah, it looks like it's going to be army losses. We did some pretty good damage, though. I took out a couple units of, uh, of Grave Guard. I can be happy with that. If you wanted to really cheese this battle, though, you would, um, you would put the battle limit on 20 minutes. And you would just stall for as long as possible and try to uh, time out the AI. Because then you actually, I think it's a tie or you win if you can stall for 20 minutes. Oh, oh nice. This is, uh, you're putting in, you're putting in Setra's title. Nice. Or his many titles. There, these are some good titles, though. Is there a good amount of lore for each um, for each title? I feel like probably not, but uh, it would be pretty fun to have a full rundown of everything. Croak could revive at any moment. Is that part of his lore? He just chooses to stay dead. What a guy. We have. I think we have two people putting in the title, but. Uh, but Olav sort of took over. But what do we got here? We have some, what? We can go for public order. We could get some leadership, which is always nice, but I don't have the money for that. Uh, so let's just, let's just keep our leadership up. I don't know how his situation is right now. 10 out of 10? Okay. Completely useless choice, but what can you do? Uh, and I guess we just continue the conquest. I want to take out fewer... Um, capitals because siege battles are sort of a pain and it said i'm going to work on the smaller settlements decisive victory i don't trust that for one second not a single second we're gonna play the battle and just times for it master of all necrotechs but he can't even heal constructs useless well i guess he's the master of them so he just tells them what to do crow can't revive himself uh, but he can resume action. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, let's see. He manifests through it. What are we talking about? Man, uh, the the lore, the lore nerd in me is only is only so strong. My lore is actually pretty. Uh, it's limited to basically whatever lore master of Sotek posts. So if I know anything, he's already said it. All right, nice. Very quick battle. I think we, we still took a few losses, but that's fine. 81. We'll have to live with it. It ends with and many, many more. That's sick. I like it. Well, like, you know, when you're that long lived, right? People who live for a single lifetime in real life can get a lot of titles. If you've lived for, you know, 2000 years, I'm sure you could. You could really stack them up. Right. So, so far the war against the undead is going well. Uh, I still need, I still have some money issues. If I sack, I think I'll have the, enough movement to still settle. Yes, thank you very much. So we'll go ahead and resettle it and hope that a vampire army comes in to fight me. Oh, Drycha is still around. We can probably get some uh, revenge on her. That could be pretty fun. Our money situation is doing okay, and in the laboratory, um, yeah, we'll we'll do this. Get a little bit more mutagen, just to buff up my wolf rats that tiny bit more. The one that I'm spamming out right now is this charge bonus. Uh, that is just way too good to pass up. There we go, nice. Tons of charge bonus added. 
I think uh, we're doing pretty well on our campaign objectives, too. Uh, yeah, it's just the depths of Hell Pit that we really need to construct. And then we're basically set. And right on over here, our Wolf Rats are now going to be great as soon as they get a couple more Chevrons. This guy can start marching uh, this way. And then the Vampire should be done for very soon. Um, I'll clear out everything over here and then... Uh, we'll let Vlad sort of take over. Oh, we got the spam bot. Thankfully, uh, someone deleted it. Thank you, whoever managed to do that. Yeah, the Slanesh bots. Classic, classic. Such a would be a great Game of Thrones character. That'd be pretty cool. See, the thing about Game of Thrones, though, you don't have as much uh, plot armor. And uh, we'll just talk about the Game of Thrones books, why don't we? Let's let's not talk about the Game of Thrones show series. Uh, I won't go into any spoilers, I guess, just in case, but... Oh, man, it's very sad. <laughs> very sad. Alright, ooh, we should be able to get some fights against the Norskins, too. I expect that to actually be pretty fun. Is this a... Uh, this is nice, just a settlement battle, so... I will happily take that. And this is Gorst? It is! Gorst, my dude. I see you got some crypt horrors. You have no wind of death, and that will be your downfall. Ah, chaos trying to corrupt this chat. They will try, but they will not succeed. Gonna go carry in some firewood. Nice. Is that um, is that just saying, or like, are you legit getting a nice fire? It is winter, for most places. Oh, have a good stream, all right. Cool, cool. Good luck with your firewood. Peace out, man. All right. So this should be a pretty straightforward battle. Of course, the the auto resolve does not like us because the auto resolve thinks dogs are absolute garbage. Which, you know, I guess I can sort of understand, but they are much stronger than you would expect. Uh, some bats flying in early. That's just some free pickings. And then we're going to start picking off the dire wolves, probably. Let's go ahead and send these guys in just to finish them off. We have Throt in the action. He'll take to the flanks, I guess. And then the dire wolves. They stand no match against the dogs. There we go. They went. They died almost immediately. Jeez. Uh, let's see. There's a, a vampire lord here, too. We should be able to get them down rather quickly. And I have to be a bit careful here. The crypt horrors... Um, I basically don't want to stay in any prolonged fight, but uh, I can let them surround Thrawn, especially since he's anti-large, and these guys are unarmored, so they should have a pretty rough time. Just to make sure that my dogs don't take too much damage, we'll give the summon over there, and then uh, just more or less pile in. We'll use our first heal, and that'll make sure that we don't take too many losses over here. Then we can simply fight until the Crypt Horrors are down. Pull back with those dogs, pull back with these guys, and the splitting begins. Alright. Uh, yeah, we'll pick off some skeleton warriors and then uh, just chill and chat. Uh, do you feel that the cavalry patch made impact damage better? I think it nerfed impact damage, actually, uh, pretty drastically. The thing that the cavalry patch helped with the most is that damage that uh from counter charging was reduced almost on all fronts which um is sort of a nerf to shock cavalry they'll be having a much uh, harder time than they did before so i don't think cavalry is as strong as they used to be but um but it's definitely a buff from where they were at before all right let's get these dogs uh we're gonna pull all of our dogs together these guys are a little bit out of position now so uh, we can sort of regroup and then swarm this tiny pocket of undead. But yeah, Cavalry Patch overall is... Uh, it is a buff, though. In terms of impact damage, definitely not. Alright, nice. The goal right now, uh, I'm just sort of picking out the sides. And then I think we'll be good. But yeah, overall, uh, this is actually going really well. Like, compared to a traditional Skaven army, the dogs are actually doing pretty good. Um, I think, like, if we just got a bunch of Poison Wind, I guess that would probably be really OP against the AI. 
but uh but i'm pretty happy with with the results i've seen so far rome 2 or napoleon really i played a little bit of three kingdoms and i noticed that their cavalry was insane their the cavalry in three kingdoms it feels like they have basically infinite mass um i would to, to imagine that there's cavalry even stronger than that is is quite quite the thing indeed. But yeah, nowadays it's all single entities instead of cavalry. Which, uh, you know, I guess it depends on what you're a fan of, really. Alright, so we'll sit here for the 15 seconds of the healing. Regroup, and then uh, the rest of this army should be a pretty easy cleanup. Alright. Oh, speaking of single entities, um, for, uh, what's it? What, what's that new Total War that came out? Uh, Troy? Yeah. Is it Troy? I feel like it's Troy. Oh man, I feel like that might be wrong. But anyways, um, how are the single entities in that game? Are they good? Compared to Warhammer? Because they did, uh, recently have, uh, the Mythos DLC stuff, right? So I feel like um, I feel like those single entities have to be pretty strong, but maybe I'm mistaken. You think uh, the cavalry and warhammer should have better shock damage? Yeah, maybe. I feel like um, I feel like that would. Oh wow, they hit army losses. Um, I feel like shock damage in warhammer. I, I feel like it could be a little bit stronger, but like I wouldn't want cavalry to basically have infinite mass. Otherwise, um, especially with how good players are right now, there'd basically be no counterplay. You want uh, Warhammer 2 mixed with uh, Europa Universals for campaign. I he haven't heard of that, but I assume it would be cool. The single entities in Troy get shafted by javelins and archers? Oh no. They don't have high armor or anything? That's, that's very unfortunate. I would have wished better for them. But, uh, such is the way of things. Oh, fear and terror. Now that is good. I need to get that on Throt or my assassin as soon as possible. Jeez. Then again, potion of toughness is pretty great. Let's see. You feel there's a missed opportunity there. Diplomacy is so limited. You can't trade. Oh, yeah. Warhammer 2. Look, uh, if we get a diplomacy upgrade in uh, Warhammer 3... That would be amazing, you know, just even the slightest amounts of upgrades to the diplomacy system would be, it would be so good. Um, and Warhammer 3 is basically the last chance that they have to make really big sweeping changes. So fingers crossed we get, um, we get something nice there. Alright, help it. Uh, if I have to get this to tier 5 by normal means, that would actually take a really long time. I might just have to abandon the settlement at some point to swap it out or let it die to a... Um, actually, oh, can I not abandon it? I guess I have to let it die to a rebellion. That's a bit awkward, but uh, we'll, we'll get there eventually. So I won't really spend too much time upgrading it at this point. And those settlements aren't too important. Let's see here. I still want to make sure that there's no rebellions. So we'll continue upgrading this. Very nice. They die, die. By the way, Thwart's campaign, uh, I did do a speed run of it a while ago. You can finish Thwart's campaign extremely quickly. Like, very, very quickly. Um, I think I got it down to like around turn 40 or something in like a couple of hours. Uh, yeah, you could, you can one session Thwart's campaign. It's pretty great. Would highly recommend uh, giving it a go, especially because you can go for even stronger armies. The legendary myth units are bonkers, as they should be. Okay, that's cool at least. And yeah, the heroes. I know the heroes in Troy are really strong. What do I do for a living? Uh, I am a programmer. I do software development, uh, but I'm currently unemployed. Right now, I'm, I'm trying to make things work with uh, with YouTube, and it's going okay, but... Not for the long term just yet. Your hopes aren't high per se for Warhammer 3, I presume. Uh, but you're certain there will be moderate changes. Yeah. Um, 
at the very least, one thing that they changed that I was really hoping for. Um, when your Lord gets attacked, the icon that sort of gets in the way all the time, uh, they, they finally made it a lot more readable, which is such a huge blessing for me. It's like a really small nitpick, at, uh, especially for a lot of players. But when you're trying to play quickly, uh, that icon can be super annoying. So it seems at least CA cares about uh, putting in those improvements. Alrighty, how do I want to do this? Uh, I might just... Yeah, now nah, we're, we're going to go for the, the side gate strategy again. If the AI is going to deploy all of its guys over here, there's no reason not to go for the side gate. In game three, braced spear halberd units get instant damage. Oh yeah, yeah. So Warhammer 3 is actually changing a lot of uh, campaign or mechanics too in general. Um, like the return damage from braced spears and not only that, but fire damage against healing units. It's going to be a huge shift for, uh, for all things multiplayer, really. Oh, uh, what's it? Look at the Tory changes. You think we'll get make it work. I don't know exactly what you mean by that. I don't know if that's something optimistic you're saying or unoptimistic. But um but I think I think Troy did get some pretty good innovations. So that's quite exciting. Uh I'm okay, this this blob in here is super inefficient. Uh -huh. so what I'm going to do, I'm going to just leave two units there and then get the rest of my dogs to split up. Cause you know, if you sort of just constantly blob on, uh, you don't really get any more efficiency on your units. And instead, what I should be doing is sort of more controlled approach where I'm uh, where I'm getting units to actually flank properly. We'll get a few of these guys to surround that hero. It's just a garrison guy, so he shouldn't have any uh, any spells. That would be a problem. And actually, um, I'm just going to go straight into the center here and just capture the point. That should be much faster. As long as the warnings don't get in the way anymore, you're okay, yeah. There's a lot of small quality of life changes. Um, but yeah, you know, I think uh, Warhammer 2 is already a pretty sick game. Despite all the things that we don't enjoy about it, it's because we've played the game for so long that, that we sort of want these optimizations. So honestly, if they just give a slightly improved Warhammer 2 for 3, um, honestly, that'd be pretty good. I could live with that. I think uh, after this Graveguard dies, it should be army losses. Optimistic uh, when you have to check how much money to bribe someone, etc. And Troy just tells you what, it, what you need to make a deal. Yeah, that would be, that would be very helpful. Because most people will just spam it out and waste time trying to get a good deal. Um, to just sort of have it show it to you would be nice. Or sort of change the mechanics entirely to make it a more fun system. Oh yes, flyers can land. That one's a huge quality of life change. Honestly, yeah, there's a lot of quality of life changes that they've been uh, revealing over the past while. Now that is good sacking. All right, now we're starting to get rolling. Uh, I will resettle at tier 1. I don't plan to stay here very long. Uh, and I think that's all the vampire counts in this area. So I can start... I can start moving out, I think. And that's enough money to upgrade this uh, main settlement, which is really good. Alright, nice. Can I get Fort Jakova? I can't. I don't trust that decisive victory for one second. Yep, improved diplomacy is going to be great. Overall, overall pretty good. The one thing you fear for Warhammer 3 is how bad the AI appeared in demo battles. That is true. Uh, but I think the AI overall, uh, like worst case, they'll just use the old AI and it'll be the same. So I don't think it'll be, um, oh, actually I can times four this while I, while I pour water for myself. Let me just do that. Yeah, I think the AI is, um, like, they can't make it worse, right? I guess they could. They might make the AI worse, but it can't be that bad. So, I think... And, like, at the very least, the AI is serviceable right now. 
uh, in open battles, like, all the AI really has to do is march forwards and you're fine. Um, so, you know. I, I think... I'm not optimistic about the AI improving that much, but I feel like it won't get worse. All right. I hope I can finish this campaign today, by the way. That way I don't have to do a second super short stream. I jinxed it. Uh, probably, probably. But yeah, if I can end this campaign today, that would be really nice. Just, you know, a single Warhammer stream campaign. That feels pretty good. Uh, we'll go for the normal Occupy this time. And look, we got a little bit more Mutagen. That's nice. All right, what do we want here? Uh, yes, we want to get these crazy upgrades for the dogs. That's going to be really good. And then for these guys, we're just going to keep boosting their damage. What are we looking at here? Uh, yeah, base damage, 20%. Give me that, please. Okay, so we have these dogs hitting for like... They're hitting for like four times more than they usually would. Maybe five times harder. So, uh, compared to, you know, um, compared to multiplayer. So, they are way, way stronger than I'm used to, which is always a pleasant treat. And then, uh, eventually, yeah, we'll just get Thwat to move on up and defend the main cities up above. And then we should be able to get these campaign objectives soon. What are we looking at? Flesh Laboratory. Yeah, we just need to wait eight turns for that. So I'm feeling pretty good. McRider facing Wolf Wolf. Indeed. It's going quite well. We've uh we've conquered all of the undead. We've conquered all of Kislev and all of the dwarves to the north in about 40 turns. Using only dogs. Um, so overall, I'd say this campaign, even by normal legendary campaign standards, I think it's going really well. Uh, of course, there's a little bit of cheese here and there, but uh, that's only natural if you're playing a challenge one. Alright, here we go. Let's take a look. Uh, we got settlement sacked, so we have uh, this castle here. It's not especially important. Um, this is my main money maker area, so I have to make sure that this stays nice and defended. But overall, I don't think I need more units there at the immediate moment yeah only minus two so no rebellions there for a while either and Thwat can uh, continue on his rampage to the north we can reconquer Kislev but I sort of feel like taking this group of buildings over here actually you know what I feel like going north and properly defending my lands will be good so let's just do that and underway is really good to make sure you don't take any attrition damage at some point I want uh, I'll want help it to be abandoned so that I can uh, resettle it at tier 5, and then we'll be able to win the campaign. What's your favorite incorrect way to play a race? Ooh. Ooh, that's a good one. Um, ooh, I'm not sure. Most, uh, most of my campaigns aren't actually challenge campaigns, and if they are, they're generally just uh, speed runs. So uh, I'm not entirely sure. But uh, it's definitely something that I want to explore more. Since it's just such a it's just such a fun format to to play challenge legendary campaigns. Let's see, maybe like a melee vampire coast style, but then it sort of becomes a vampire counts, right? Um, a full whoa! What the dwarves are gone? Grimgore, what have you been doing down there, you madman? All right, well I guess the dwarves aren't a problem anymore. Um, which means things should be pretty good. Uh, oh, yeah, wood elf. Tree only wood elf style. That'd be pretty fun. All right. Uh, so, yeah, we can just go over here. Thwat will be able to defend that quite handily. This guy is going to start heading up north to conquer these lands. Oh, even the empire is eating away at the vampire counts. That's pretty good for us as uh, we are advantaged versus the, empires, versus the empire generally. Uh, let's see... Yeah, and I just have to start worrying about getting a hell pit to rebel. So I need to get rid of that building. I don't need that anymore. And then I'll keep the rest just to give me money. 
we can almost get our third army too, which will be very fun. Grimgore is uh, always a boss in the games you play. Yeah, yeah, Grimgore, uh, ever since their DLC, you know, they just get 40 stacks, essentially. So anyone that they want to fight, they can run over pretty hard. But um, for me, I have a ton of dogs, which are really good against unarmored greenskin units. Who is this handsome man? Well, thank you, Stan. Um, I am but a humble Warhammer gamer. That has spent an insane amount of time playing Warhammer, but uh, I'd say it's definitely worth it. Ooh, this is useless. Uh, except for the experience, I guess. Um, honestly, I'm sort of tempted for the money. Like, the growth is pretty good, but... Um, a lot of my stuff is at tier 5, too, so I don't really need it. Alright, and now I can uh, sort of deal with this now. Frag, about to go down. I can finally... Um, Take this fight. Oh, it's not the Rebellion that's that's actually sieging it. It's the Norskins. And Throg's about to get there. It's risky. I'm willing to lose Frag if the Norskins decide to take it over. That's not as important for me. The Fort Ost Ostros? I don't know. I'll never say it right. I'm so sorry. But, uh, but that one should hold as it's fairly high tier. Oh, fire damage. That's actually really good with one of the um, Skaven mutations. Uh, but yeah, overall, uh, I think I think we are good. We're just sort of blitzing towards the win condition now. The campaign victory. This clan, too, if I can friend up with them, that'd be good. Our, rela our reliability is almost there. And as for the green skins, I don't think there's much I can really do to make them happy. I guess I could go to war. With, uh, you know, I could go to war with some Skaven clans. Would even let me do that? Moderate? Oh, right, there we go. We'll go to war with some Skaven clans just to make Grimgore a bit happy. And then we'll be set. Oh, yeah, a no cavalry Bretonian style. That'd be fun. It'd be a lot of peasant bowmen. Download the handsome Grimgore mod. You know... I, I would not be surprised if that existed. What's it? There's like the upside down head Archeon mod, right? <laughs> These mods, man. Oh, hey, look at that. Throg decided to face me in the field of battle against my extremely powerful dogs. They're hitting for like 80 damage on the charge. That means they basically two shot infantry. Uh, when they charge them. It's insane. So, I don't think this will be too bad. Of course, if this was a normal Skaven campaign, we'd have a whole ton of uh, weapon teams and so on, which would also do well. But this is, this is good. It's real Grimgore. Uh, Grimgore is a blonde. Does it just add blonde hair? Is that the whole mod? So that's brilliant. All right, here we go. We got a million dogs. We got tons of buffs on Thwot. And we have a, a little uh, Norskin army here. Now, we're going to see which dogs are the true strongest dogs in the game. Normal wolf rats or skin wolves. We'll have to see. Oh, they, they do have AoE. All right. That's a sign for me to be careful. Um, As, yeah, if we get hit by enough AoE, that's going to be... That will be rough. Um, immediately right off the bat, the AI is grouping up a ton. Let's see, where are my explosive dogs? I'll probably throw these guys in. Just to give uh, that big AOE bomb onto all of this juicy infantry. Um, if I can get that down, that would be a huge win. Oh my goodness. Is this it? Is this... Is, this, is it going to be just as easy as uh, clicking this one button? It may very well be. It may very well be. We do have to sacrifice this unit of dogs to get that off, though. But uh, I think they served well. We lost a little bit of our mutagen. And uh, the AI does have a lot of AoE, so I do have to be a little bit careful here. Um, the skin wolves do go down rather quickly, though. So at least we have that blessing. Um, and Thwat, he is getting a little bit gooned out here. So let's go ahead and uh, give him some defenses. And then give him a little bit of support. I forgot. We, we've been winning so many battles, um, 
I might have gone a little bit overconfident here, but uh, I think we're still okay. We've cleared out uh, most of these Norskin forces, but I do want to uh, sort of get Thwat into a bit of a better position. He's in a little bit of an awkward place right now. At least the mobility for the Norskins is down, though, so it's a simple matter of splitting them up and then uh, picking them off from there. All right, nice. Uh, let's see the Marauder Hunters. They shouldn't be too much of a problem. This Skin Wolf is nearly isolated, so I think I can actually get a surround on him now. And then, uh, then we'll be good. These Ogres will be a little bit of a problem. And I do want to throw down a heal just to make sure that they're okay. Then we'll be good. Uh, have I seen Grimhammer? I've seen a lot of posts on it. It's like a big old... Uh, oh no, that's bad. <laughs> there goes a lot of dogs. Um, yeah, Grimhammer seems pretty cool. <laughs> okay, wait. Wait, are we going to lose this battle? I sure hope not. Uh, but yeah, what is that mod? It's uh, it's part of SFO, right? I don't know. It seems cool. But uh, but I, I do like my vanilla gameplay. As it's just uh, very familiar, you know? All right. Oh, Grimgor has a nice roar of teeth in the mod, too. That's nice. But all right. We have to play this a little bit more carefully now. Um... Especially with this, uh, with this big feral worm in the in the sky, he's gonna be a bit of an issue because of how much uh, how much damage he does to our leadership. Jeez. So I'm thinking we're just gonna regroup here real quick. Uh, we've thinned out the initial Norskin forces quite well, so that is in our advantage. All the skin wolves are down, and I think we can take another fight here with Thwa. Let's go ahead and try it out. Hit him with the flash bomb. Uh, I imagine another spell is going to drop, so I'm just keeping a close eye on that. The skin wolves are down. This guy over here is uh, he's doing okay. Lots taking a little bit of damage, and I think we're going to have to pull out again. All right, we're going to have to play this a little bit carefully, but uh, but this is definitely a win. Grimcore with the wig and teeth, perfection. Yeah. Let's see how's the skin wolf doing. He's real low. He's really low. Oh, uh, where's that feral worm? Oh, sorry for the quick camera pan. It looks like he was just chasing off a few units, so he won't be back for a while. And most of the Norskin forces, thankfully, are pretty isolated. There are a couple of spear units here that I will have to worry about, but that's one skin wolf down, which is very good. These spears are going to be a little bit of a problem, though, just because they're sort of catching Thvot. And, uh, oh, actually... Throg is going to be a little bit scary, too. Let's go ahead and uh, just play the avoidance game. We'll uh, times four speed just to buy a little bit of distance. Throg. Come on, Throg. Okay. I think we have a pretty good fight here. This one unit of dogs seems like he's distracting quite well. We can do uh, the big surround on these spears. And then throw down uh, the big old healing over there. As long as there's no devastating AoEs that drop, I think we'll be A-OK. -okay. Hit him with the Flash Bomb. Give a huge ton of combat buffs. I think uh, the Spears just got deleted off the face of the Earth, but Throg used his, uh, his Helm of Command, which uh, did bring them up quite a bit. I think that's a Breath Attack. Yeah, we'll be able to dodge it. But uh, overall, I think, yeah, the Spears should be routing in just a second. Ooh, but we're going to have to pull away. All right. Changes everything. Bigger health, bigger models, count disparities. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, although right now I'm not really too big into the mods just yet. We'll probably do a few uh, standard campaigns first. All right, now the Frostworm is generally known for having extremely low HP in multiplayer. So in theory, it should die rather quickly to a bunch of wolf rats in the full surround. Uh, we'll see if that actually, if that theory actually holds as I tried to take it out. It is taking a lot of damage, but I didn't get a completely clean charge there, which wor which worries me a little bit. Um, it looks like it will be going down, though, but I'll have to pull out. Ooh, it is trying to disengage, though, which is really nice. Um, units take a lot of damage while they're trying to... Uh, when you're hitting them in the back. So as long as I keep some dogs on its tail, I think we're good. Yeah, there we go. Full surround. Can we get it to route? This is probably the, the biggest threat to my dogs right now, so I'm committing a little bit to try and take it out, but I think Throg's leadership aura is going to keep it together, and we'll have to disengage again. 
Is it just me or does this remind anyone of uh, playing Zerg in StarCraft 2? Uh, honestly, yeah, it is sort of like my coring Zerglings, yeah. We're dodging side storms and so on. Oh, actually, wait, can I stop him from taking off? Come on. Don't you dare take off. We'll throw, uh, we'll hit him with a flash bomb too. What? He's doing okay. Um, he's getting a little bit bogged down, but he's doing okay. And nice, the Frostworm is down. That is a big win for us. Even if we do lose this battle in the next one, it'll, uh, that'll be huge. All right, nice dogs. Retreat. Times four, engaged. And regroup. Oh, we're going to lose our lord. That's not good. All right, well, Thwat might be gone, but, uh, as long as he doesn't die, I can live with that. We might have to do a quick retreat, but we've definitely whittled down the Norskin forces quite a bit. All right, Thwat is gone. He's running for the hills. We'll see how that affects the leadership on my dogs. Presumably a lot. Let's take a look. Ah, the leadership is holding okay, actually. Yeah, yeah, the holding okay. Okay. All right. So now we just got to settle in and deal with the rest of the infantry. We don't really need Thwat. Of course, he's very important, but uh, he's not super integral here. Do a little bit of a blobbing just with this last heal. And then we'll pick off these units on the side since they're fairly easy pickings. All right. Let's go ahead and dive in on those guys. And we just want them to take a ton of damage and hopefully route off soon. Even if they don't route, uh, we should be able to disengage and sort of pull through into these units. Oh, wow, that's a big leadership hit, though. Hopefully, uh, we do manage to keep a couple dogs together. It looks like they do manage to hold. That Norskin Marauder unit is down. And I think these Marauder Berserkers should be pretty easy to finish off. Uh, they are in loose formation. I don't know if I got a clean charge there, though, but it looks like they are taking a lot of damage. Oh, we might have to retreat from this one, but we've done a lot of damage. Maybe high thought, maybe. Um, he is sort of important for grouping up units, but yeah, maybe. Let's go ahead and kill this guy, though. If we can kill off the Norskin Lords. Um, oh, wow, that was really fast. Yeah, if we can kill off the Norskin Lords, uh, it'll make sure that they're not very high level. And then a lot of their units won't get too many buffs, which is always nice. Random unit of uh, javelins there. Easy to pick off too. And uh, so far it seems like the AI is derping a little bit, which may be our saving grace. I should have gone to a bigger surround there. would have saved me some time, but there we go. That's another group down. We're going to put these guys on hotkey one so that I can micro them a little bit better. Finish off the javelins. And you know what? We might be able to salvage this. I'm not entirely sure though. Um, these dogs are much stronger than at the start of the campaign, where I was facing off against Kislev. But uh, the Norskin units are super scary too. Can I get a can I get a good pick here, man? They're splitting really well. But I think uh, I think I finally managed to get the army to split. If I can just keep baiting them out over here on this flank, I can loop around and deal with those guys. A couple spear units out of position. That's an easy pick. At least, uh, maybe not a full pick, but at least some good damage in. Ooh, and if I can kill the sorcerers, that would be huge. Oh, yes, please kill the sorcerers. Oh, no, that's another big AoE. Oh, okay, we caught it a little bit late. But a couple dogs are left. I'm going to try and finish them off. Because if they go down, then that is just so much uh, free surrounds that I can get. Without having to worry about getting, you know, mulched by these AoEs on times 4 speed. Oh yeah, this is extremely fun to play. Um, I, I love my dog units. They're great. Come on, kill the sorcerers. Oh, that's all I needed. Oh, sweet vengeance for the hundreds of dogs that they killed. Sweet, sweet vengeance. Oh my goodness. Alright, so now it's just uh, whatever cleanup I can do with my remaining dogs. I think that's a free unit of spearmen that I can pick off. Yep. Let's pull back. Free unit of uh, Marauders over here. We'll do some free splitting with the dogs so that I can charge them in the back. Oh, but the army losses. Brutal. Absolutely brutal. But I think we did well. That was a really good trade. Uh, oh, we only traded one for one, but we killed some very high priority targets. The Skin Wolves, the Frost Worm. I think that's really good. It's uh, legendary. Very hard. Max difficulty settings. 
which I gotta say was hilarious early on because uh, all my dogs would run at literally anything. It was brutal. They ran to nothing. They ran off the battlefield to nothing. But yeah, that was a really good trade. Um, we'll see if he decides to chase. If he does, it could be a little bit scary. But maybe not. Hey, look at that. He didn't chase. Hey, so we get a nice replenishment round. Uh, I think... Yeah, there we go. The AI. The, the uh, rebellion decided to siege, but it looks like they're they're pretty chumpy, so I'm not too worried there. And uh, how it reinforces Frag? Not very. But um, I think we'll go and fight that rebellion army. Let's go ahead and get some more wolf rats in there. And Thwat's army, and then see if we can take some more fights. Meanwhile, uh, this fight, we'll do this first, just because it's uh, really easy and straightforward. We should be able to win more or less immediately. Yep. Yeah, yeah. The morale. The morale hit from Thwat. It's super important that your leadership is up. Uh, this, this, this challenge is uh, it's interesting. As we've sort of developed into the middle stage of the campaign, um, it's definitely gone a little bit more... Uh, a little bit more, like, uh, it, it's not exactly a cakewalk, despite the fact that we have so many, um, despite the fact that we have so many mutations on all of our dogs. But uh, once we can really start farming mutations and so on, then I think we're in for a little bit of a better time. Since, like, especially the AoE one, that one is huge just because of how much damage it does. Alright, how's the AI splitting? It seems like uh, they might leave the right gate open. And then I'll be able to push through there. These are Graveguard, but my dogs are actually pretty strong against Armored. Yeah, you can see they, they have Armor Sundering, which helps them quite a bit. No, uh, you know what? We'll give them a heal. Um, this battle is mostly a 1A. I don't really have to worry about it too much. Uh, yes, battle difficulty is very hard. It's maximum settings. Overall, though, it's not too bad. The AI doesn't uh, play well enough to really do well against, uh, you know, basic army tactics and so on. It's mostly composition that will be your downfall. And in this case, the dogs, uh, you know, they do okay. All right, nice. We're finally getting into the phase where we can spill into the city, which means the rounds will be much easier. And then uh, it's just a simple matter of cleanup. Let's go ahead and throw down another heal over here, just to make sure we don't lose any units. I think we've kept all of our units of dogs, which is good. Graveguard are down. Let's get the cycle charge action in. Uh, my dogs do basically, you know, they do like plus 200% extra damage on the charge. So I just need to remember to do that. Dogs biting bones seems like a no-brainer. Yeah, it makes sense. Actually, strangely enough, the dogs have been really strong against the undead. Um, I'm not sure why exactly, but... Yeah, maybe it's just like their low armor or their low melee attack, but... The dogs have done really well against the undead. We cleared Manfred, like... Instantly. This makes sieges kind of fun? Yeah, yeah, there's a, there's a lot to sort of manage. Um, and you don't have to worry about just shooting them at their walls awkwardly. Which is always a big plus. Yeah, yeah. I, I enjoy my higher campaign difficulties, but, uh, you know, no problem for anyone who doesn't play at max settings, because, of course, um, if, if you don't have uh, what it takes you, it has to get cheesy sometimes, you know, to win battles. Not all strategies are super viable either, so uh, you, you're playing for very specific reasons if you're on Legendary. I guess I'll say it like that. More battles equals more food, faster city development, yeah. It's why I think going for the undead was actually a pretty good idea. Oh, I haven't gone for lightning strike yet. I know lightning strike is pretty good. Um, I guess I just haven't... I never... I didn't really have a big need for it until now. Since there haven't been that many armies. Meanwhile, help it. We're waiting for that to get into a rebellion so that we can uh, recapture it for huge value and let's see if we can uh deal with this rebellion pyrrhic victory yeah i'm i'm gonna fight that battle <laughs> this should be a really easy one though since it's all clan rats 
I call them dogs, yet they're rats? Perhaps they're both. They are dog rats. Oh, Skaven are more powerful on higher campaign settings? Oh, I see what you're saying. Uh, I guess in a sense, yes, because the AI has a lot more armies. In a sense, yeah. I could, I could get behind that. Alright, but we're going to do the classic strategy of using your reinforcements to tank for you. So just going to get those guys, send them on in. And then uh, while they're fighting, I should be able to get, you know, millions and millions of cycle charges with my wolf rats. You suspect ogres might be like that too with raiding and stuff? Oh yeah, that'd be fun. That would be very fun indeed. Alright, so uh, the AI seems like it's preoccupied with standing its ground against my wolf rats. Which means I should be able to easily chase off these guys. Remember, uh, they're getting hit by the leadership debuffs too. So, it's going to be a pretty rough time for all of these Skaven forces. And actually, I, I would say they are sufficiently split up at this point. Where I can just clean them out with the wolf rats. Hey, there we go. Oh, whoops. This is times four speed. I tried speeding it up even more. Honestly, that'd be pretty nice for people with really souped up PCs if uh, if they made it where Warhammer, um, where you could speed it up times like a million. I think there's a mod for that too, actually. Oh man, I can't wait to try out Ogre campaigns, by the way. And uh, even in multiplayer, just uh, the play style of so many large units is is super interesting. Um, I hope it's not just Noblar spam, that would be pretty boring. Uh, I hope that they sort of balance it the right way, but it's it's a difficult thing to balance. Just a primarily large unit army. We haven't really had anything like that in Warhammer. And uh, most Norskin armies sort of trend close to that. So maybe Ogres will sort of be like Norska? I'm not sure. I only hope that they're viable, though. Also, uh, this <laughs> the, the losses to kills ratio here is insane. I love facing uh, Skaven. Snoop Dogg is proud, I'm happy to hear. I wish we could recruit more lords so that I could use all of the names that chat came up with earlier, but uh, I guess this will do. All right, let's take, uh, let's take a bit of replenishment just to make sure that we don't randomly lose this very expensive army that we've spent like the whole campaign developing. And then uh, we're going to do some sneaky strats. Throg is going to attack the middle guy. Wow, they're running? Come on, Throg. No, not like this. Not like this. Come back. All right. Guess we'll have to do with that. Uh, so cool. He knows what's coming for him, though. We'll take uh, the replenishment, probably, and then the damage boost. Oh, but this is really good. That's a lot of stat buffs. I'll take that. Oh, and there's a Brood Horror mount too? Oh my gosh, Thwatt's um, level like 14 has so many good things. Meanwhile, this guy, he's going to bounce back here to clear out the best, the rest of the vampire counts. Um, you know, if we keep fighting them, the Empire might actually like us, which is pretty fun. <laughs> Maybe we'll just be the friend of the Empire, Thwatt. What a campaign. And hey, we can even upgrade this. You know, we're rolling in cash, so... Not a terrible idea. Let's go and do that. Three hours. Yeah, yeah. It's it's been a it's been a bit of a long stream. What? Actually, no. It's been like four hours, right? I'm not tired of rat doggos. Hammond, have you seen me play multiplayer? Come on, you've seen me play multiplayer. You know I can play the same thing for ages at a time. Like I played Vampire Coast Gunlines for like a year before they got nerfed. So. You know, that, that's sort of me. Uh, I don't get bored easily. And also, we're getting close to actually winning the campaign. So, I just want to win the campaign and... and be done with it, you know? Alright, what are we looking at? We got, uh... Oh, yay! We can get more wolf rats. Let's just do that now. Very nice, very nice. Um, and then over here... Let's just, uh, soup up this army a bit. We'll get more of that charge bonus going. Very good upgrade to have. Uh, okay, wow. All of them are, are at tier 1 upgrades. Look at that. I guess I don't really need to spend more. Maybe I can start saving up on mutagen. 
Let's go ahead and do this. Never trust the auto resolve, no matter what it tells you. I did a, a test run earlier. You'll lose about half of your dogs if you auto resolve this. It's silly. I feel like an, an adaptive auto resolve system would be pretty cool. Where if you have very similar armies facing against each other, it'll just give you, uh, you know, it'll, it'll look at your auto resolves in the past and then uh, sort of determine how many losses you should get based on that. I feel like that would be a lot uh, that could help sort of this late game a situation where you have to play so many battles that are essentially easily won. But I guess that's sort of a, that's not a huge issue, right? Hey, there we go. How many did we even lose? 42. Okay, well, we lost more than I would have thought. But all right, just a couple more things on the checklist. We just have a, a few more upgrades to do with the um, with the lab. And then a few more. Uh, what's it? And then we just have to construct a building at our main settlement. All of those are pretty easy to do, so... It's just, uh, it's just cleaning up at this point. Alright. Dogs are coming for the bones. Let's go ahead and get this. Are these gold chevrons yet? No. Man, the, the dogs, uh, they're taking a while to chevron up. I wonder if that's just a dog thing or what. But alright. Uh, oh, yeah, we can, we can fight this for sure. A Pyrrhic victory. Wow. I guess it is a bigger army than last time. Is Snicket a good lord? In multiplayer, yes. In single player, eh. He's okay. Definitely looks like a Luther. What? Which name? Which name are you talking about? I'm missing out. Alright, here we go. Here we go. We got the reinforcements on the flank. The AI is going to derp out a little bit. Because he's going to see these guys. And then he's going to turn his entire flank towards my dogs. Let's go ahead and just make a huge line with these guys. Just make it a little bit easier. There's no need to take this too slow. Alright, march to victory! <laughs> yeah, quite the challenge. We're on turn like 50 right now, KV. And uh, honestly, dogs are pretty OP. And by OP, I mean you have to micro insanely hard just to barely get good trades out of them. But if you do micro hard enough, you will get good trades, which is quite nice. Uh, and by the way, since we're nearing the end of this uh, challenge run, if you guys have any suggestions for what you'd like to see next, I would be happy to uh, to try things out. Like, I've been playing War uh, multiplayer so much, I've sort of just been itching to get some proper, uh, you know, campaign action back again. Uh, so I'd be really happy to see any cool uh, sort of shenanigans that you have in mind. Oh yeah, AP Gutter Runner stacks. Yes, that is insanely strong for sure. Nurgling composition. Oh my gosh, man after my own heart. Yes, that would be great. Nurgling Doom stack. I wonder if that'll actually be OP or not. It depends on how many buffs that they have. Alright, what are we looking at here? I gotta send my lord in. Whoop, slipping on the micro. Losing a couple dogs. That's not good. Come on, move. Move, darn you. Yeah, I'm getting a little bit lazy with my micro, but um, I think we're ahead enough. Sirene's only Silostra. Yes, and then we'll start our war with uh, with Warzag just to see how it goes. I'm sure it'll be fine. What's the worst that can happen? Against some armies, it's essentially, you know, minus 50% HP armies. On tabletop, they're OP. What's OP? Nurglings? That seems pretty exciting. Nice. A battle won. Skeletons only Kemler. Isn't that pretty meta? I guess, of course, you would usually be transitioning into more uh, expensive guys. I'm looking for, like, some real difficult challenges. But, like, I don't know. Maybe, maybe people don't want to see, like, the super difficult stuff. Nakai all skinks. Ooh, yes, yes. I want to play some, yeah, those underrated lords and then add a difficulty challenge on it. I feel like that would be pretty fun. 
And a Skink's only army would actually be pretty good. Oh, I was thinking uh, Oxyodl. A gunnery mob doom stack? Now that's that's pretty fun. How about an Oxyodl campaign where you don't build units? Do you guys think that's possible? Because everyone says Oxyodl's campaign is like way too easy, right? So what if you just use your starting units only? Maybe that's an idea. Maybe it's way too difficult though, and it wouldn't be fun to watch. Sartosa only living units. That's a good one. That's a good one. Wow, it would still kill my nine my nine dogs in an ambush too. Brutal. Nurglings have wounds plus four and bravery ten. Wow. That that seems pretty high from what I remember of tabletop. That's crazy. Yeah, I never actually uh I never actually faced a demon's army back in my tabletop days. So I have no context for her, for what to expect from them in Warhammer 3. Doesn't the little red dude boost uh, skinks to high heavens? Uh, yeah, yeah, I believe so. Dryads only Drycha, that's pretty good. With lore-friendly diplomacy, yeah. I think someone said, uh, do it. this is Total War run with Mazda Mundi, that could be fun. Archaeon, only him. <laughs> An only Archaeon campaign, wow. Hunt traits like, wait, Archeon? Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah, okay. That could be cool, that could be cool. The thing is, battles would take forever. That might not be super uh, exciting, but yeah. That was a fast battle, indeed. Indeed. We have uh, we have the perfect cleanup crew over here. We're gonna let um, them raid over here. Just because I want that uh, city to fall so that I can resettle it at max level. Pro Skaven things, all right. I actually prefer this over the Brood Horror because Throt is sort of getting carried by his dogs right now. Meanwhile, over here, we have the biggest settlement ever. Amazing settlement, giving me tons of money. And how are we doing on this? Things are looking good. Can we upgrade this? Uh, oh, we can. Look at that. What do we want? Ward save. For units with four plus augments, if only. Uh, adds additional unit to the growth vat. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, you know, we'll just pick one of them. Go with that. Uh, let's see. Oh, we can go for a few of them. Never mind. Let's let's increase the mutagen just in case. Yeah, we still have money. So I think we're nearly done. Yeah, we got all of these. We need. We can get our last flesh laboratory thing in three turns. And then it's just the depths of hell pit, and then uh, one of these objectives, which is like what? Capture some battle captives? Oh yeah, yo, this this campaign one is finishing today, guys. It's finishing today, Slanesh bots. Thank you, whoever deleted them. Thank you very much. Oh wait, Elithinar units with stock only. That seems like a pretty normal campaign. Once again. All right, what do we got? We got a fairly big army here. We got the Manfred crew. Uh, I'm going to take the fight and then probably retreat. But then again, it's mostly skeletons and crypt ghouls. So this could actually be really favored for me. Slaneshbot inspired you with murderous intent. Sister's Doomstack with Hellebron. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. I want to make sure that See, okay, I want to make sure that there's a bit of a challenge. Whoa, that's a hill. What is this map? What is this hill? I've never seen this map before, but I want to make sure that there's a challenge. But I don't want to just have it be a super, you know, boring campaign, right? I have to make sure I'm not constantly just cheesing all the time. So uh, I'm not sure, but I guess the suggestions are will more or less get me there. He even has some, some Mornfang cavalry. That's fun. All right, let's get a good surround on these knights. Thankfully, this is a fairly small army over here that I don't have to worry too much about. Can pull over this way. I think uh, the cavalry is having a pretty rough time now. We've got a really nice surround. And now we can spend this time to check if Manfred is going to end my life. Nope, he has pretty terrible spells, so we're actually pretty good. We're actually pretty good. Meanwhile, uh, what? 
this lord here. I love how the wolf rats just mulch lords like no tomorrow. Because they try to run away too and they take extra damage. Uh, so overall, yeah, they, they do not have a good time on the charge from wolf rats. They'll, they'll take about a thousand damage on the charge too, it's great. Looks like we got some ROWRs over there that I need to deal with. And uh, I guess my lord is just going to start harassing their enemy lord. Low cure without normal additional armies. Only black arcs? Oh, that's pretty fun. So it's just a, it's a black arc run. Oh, that's pretty fun. I like that. Just uh, really command the high seas. And then low cure is the one that actually moves in and conquers stuff. Oh, man. Let's see, I'll, uh, I might need to, because it's going to be hard to remember all of these sort of suggestions. I might have to go to the, uh, you guys might have to comment after the stream ends for me to actually decide. Gorse with 19 zombies only. Now that would be a true giant, giant, giant Grant Games run. Only zombies. It would be, uh, it would be pretty cool. I don't know how strong that would be. Um, I haven't, I haven't tested, a uh, sort of, since the Vampire Counts rework where those zombies got super strong, I haven't really seen how strong they are yet. So I'm a little bit unsure on sort of how viable it is. A lot of, uh, what makes this work too is the fact that I can micro my units to get a lot of value off of them. And zombies are sort of the complete opposite of that, which does make it a little bit more difficult. Empire, this is total war. Oh my gosh. Okay, yeah, that one would be pretty fun. Um, there's a lot of good Empire units that can get uh, good value too. So yeah, that'd be pretty good. Let's see. If it's Kemmler, he can give zombies the hunger. Okay, that's pretty cool. The thing is, it's like, I'm really capped on the micro front. Uh, but yeah, we'll, we'll see. I, since this stream has gone pretty well, I think I probably will be doing, uh, I probably will do a few more things like this in the future. Um, so there'll definitely be time before Warhammer 3 to, to go and, and try that out. Alright, so what are we looking at? We got, uh, what we got? We got a Manfred over here at basically no HP. I'm gonna give him the death blow. You can see one of the strongest vampire lords in the world. Gonna be getting surrounded by a bunch of good boys and falling shortly after. He did take less damage than I thought just because he is uh, still fairly tanky, but he will go down to the dogs. And actually, uh, because of how slow undead are, I feel like dogs are actually like one of the optimal tools against them. Uh, of course, I guess weapon teams are also really good here too, but, but I gotta emphasize how strong these guys are. Alright, a little bit of cycle charging and then we should be good. Eh, maybe not. I might have to be a little bit more careful here. Just because um, the undead are so good at grinding it out. Let's go ahead and make an escape with my lord. And then pull my dogs over here. What is this is total war? It's, uh, you play a normal campaign, but you declare war on everyone you see. Everyone. So you'll have, and it's on legendary. So you'll have, like, just tons and tons of armies barreling down on you. Um, just, just constantly. Uh, it's a pretty fun challenge mode, though. Grom with pump wagon spam? That, that'd be a fun one, yeah. Can you beat, uh, Grom legendary with pump wagons only? I would assume yes. Pump wagons, they're okay. Um, I feel like they're, they're just barely serviceable, so... I feel like that would be pretty possible, but it'd be a quite fun run, especially when it comes to low, um, if you really want to do well on smaller scale battles, it'll be a lot of fun cycle charging things to death. Hey, Zatch, saying let's go. Things are going pretty well. You can't even beat a normal campaign. Hey, it's completely fine, man. For the record, I have like, what, 5,000 something hours now? I've played a lot of Warhammer, so. Not only that, but I also played, uh, I also play Warhammer multiplayer pretty avidly. And that is already like, you know, a lot more than what most people would do. So, yeah. 
Still though, uh, if you want to do well in campaigns, you know, I will be having some very campaign specific videos probably coming out soon. So if you uh, if you're interested in that, you know, I might uh, I might actually dive into that and then hopefully there'll be some good helpful tips there for anyone interested. Oh, whoops, we lost another wolf unit, but that should be fine. Come on, come back. We're going to do the big old group up and heal. Here we go. Get some cuddles in. Come on, get in there. There we go. Oh my gosh. Quick breather. Let them all regenerate. And then back to cycle charging. Honestly, I feel like dogs are actually stronger than cavalry in Warhammer. They're a lot more maneuverable. And they get a lot more coverage uh, when they charge units. The biggest downside is that generally their stats are a lot weaker. But um, there's a lot of ways to compensate for that. Especially once Warhammer 3 comes out. The corn dogs, as I like to call them, are going to be insane. You basically have unbreakable dogs that are going to be as strong as Norsk and Ice Hounds. You can't really get much better than that, right? Alright, what do we got? Uh, some Graveguard over here, some more zombies. Okay, I'm gonna finish off this Vampire Lord in the back. Because if I can get these guys to start crumbling, then, then we're set. Undead in campaign though, they have so much leadership. It's so hard to get them to crumble. If they have the right uh, composition. But we'll get there eventually. Alright, nice. That's a few more of those guys down. Let's spread these guys out. Finish off them zombies and then we'll be good to go. The only thing you haven't uh, dared yet. Oh yeah, the, the missing achievements in, in multiplayer. Yeah, there's a, there's a few achievements that are really rare among players. Like, honestly, even just completing campaigns is pretty rare. Just because, uh, to be honest, the late game Warhammer campaigns, they can become really grindy and not very fun. So most people don't really complete them. Um, but yeah, I was thinking like a long time back, I could actually do a full on speed run for the Warhammer uh, achievements. But that would take like a few days to, to finish. It'd be a little bit unreasonable, I think. All right, nice. We got a little bit more uh, guys spread out here. That is that is terms for a good surround. I feel like I said that phrase wrong, but whatever. Oh, yes. Multiplayer is amazing. Um, for those, Oh, hey, look. Army losses. Uh, for those of you... Heroic, too. That's our first one today. Uh, multiplayer is great. I really got into it when... Uh, sort of when I got when I got bored of playing legendary campaigns basically uh, it's a really nice way to get a new challenge from Warhammer because even the best Warhammer campaign players will lose every single battle in multiplayer so it's like a whole new challenge to dive in if you really enjoy the game also by the way we got a uh, that's over 10 kills per dog that's pretty good Man, look at that value. Insane. Absolutely insane. Alright, uh, I guess we'll take the replenishment. Is there any way to play Empire in the Vortex? Uh, you can play Marcus Wolfhart. He is technically Empire on the Vortex. Turn times take too long in Mortal Empires? Yeah, they can. Or vampires? Oh yeah. Sadly, they didn't ever add vampires to uh, to the vortex. I feel like that's a little bit of a missed opportunity, but I don't know. Maybe they'll they'll release Neferata as a last minute free LC. Who knows? One can wish, right? But yeah, the Hunts Marshall Expedition. I would. Uh, it's a really fun campaign too. I would recommend it. What are we doing with this guy? Stand your stand or die? Yeah. Let's finish off the vampires, get that food going. Yeah, they are hurting for a DLC. Vampires is now probably like one of the the factions that really wants a DLC the most. Them and maybe Norska. I think Norska could use a little bit of love. Um, I was I hosted a tournament, a multiplayer tournament a while back, where you're allowed to ban two uh, units or lords. And it was sort of an awkward situation because uh, if someone had gone for the Norska sub-faction, 
you could ban both of their lords that they could choose from. Because they only have two. Uh, if you went for Throg or Wolfric, the only two lords you can pick are the generic lord, or is the generic lord, and their actual legendary lord, and that's it. So I feel like, you know, they could they could use a little bit of love at this point. But uh, I'm sure once Warhammer 3 comes out, we'll see some more Norska action, right? Like, Warhammer 3 is all about the, you know... It's all about the chaos. It'd be a pretty big missed opportunity not to have some cool action there. Come on, don't die, my lord. The achievement stats are pretty interesting. There are those you expect, and then... Stuff like crafting all items and the mortuary cult. Oh my gosh. That took me... I, I do have all the achievements in Warhammer. Because I wanted to grind them out. Just because. Um, that achievement it was like a 300 turn campaign. Crafting all of those items. It was insane. What a grind. I don't even... Why would they have something like that? Just randomly tacked onto a DLC. It's insane. Uh, let's see. I think I can afford to go for replenishment here. Norska Chaos and Vampires, yeah. Yeah, yeah, they, they need that DLC. I assume, okay, so if we get Bellacore in game three, I assume that's basically going to be the DLC. Ooh, an ambush. That's basically going to be the DLC for Warriors of Chaos, right? Um, yeah, yeah, very long battle, these, these fights. Dogs are actually one of the highest DPS units in the game. Um, it's crazy. Aside from, you know, weapon teams and such. But, yeah, you can basically get all the models attacking. Alright, classic. Uh, number one. Number two. Group lock both of them. One and two. And then you times four and then you look at chat. What a glorious day. Marcus is fun, yeah. Marcus is like, I would highly recommend that campaign. It's great. It's amazing. Also, by the way, I'm so happy that I've played speedruns before, because it makes these campaign grinds uh, so much faster. Special thanks to myself for, for the times for speed practice. I wonder, sometimes I wonder if doing campaigns like this help me in multiplayer at all. I feel like, because on one hand it can give you bad habits, but on the other hand, you know, you're playing on times for speed, maybe, uh, Everything seems a lot slower afterwards. Who knows? Looking at the DLC now on Steam. Hey, nice, nice. It's a good one. And we still have a ways away before we hit uh, Warhammer 3. So you could definitely finish a Marcus campaign before that comes. Lots of people complain about Marcus and the fact that the Lizardmen armies pop up uh, constantly. That is true. Um, you have to maintain it, but like... The other me mechanics are quite fun, and those armies, uh, they're not too hard. They're not too, too terrible. But, uh, but it is something you'll want to be aware of if you plan to play that campaign. Oh yeah, they are good experience farm, that is true. On, uh, on the later stages of the campaign, if they pop up in, like, really inconvenient areas, it can be a bit annoying. But yeah, overall quite nice. Yeah, it's uh, you want to be fighting a lot of battles in Total War games. Who would have guessed? Who would have guessed? You beat the campaign two days ago. Hard but very fun. Yes, it is. Uh, it is very hard for sure. You've accepted. You'll never get the Vortex achievements. You got the game late and therefore never played the main Vortex races and never will. Yeah, the Vortex campaign. Uh, it doesn't have the the same sort of excitement that you get from having a full combined map but i do know that there are a few people that uh really do enjoy it what are we getting on this guy we got basically all the upgrades there i guess we work towards lightning strike now uh ambush chance always a very nice what do we got here more uh public order and growth i'll take it marcus's last battle was really hard for you Let's see, which one was that? I don't remember that one. He does have insane huntsmen, I will say that. Is Helpit gonna rebel soon? Soon. Soon, but not now. 
Okay, uh, we're going to turn off the damaged building notifications. One of the least useful notifications out there. And then, uh, yeah, we'll just get some buildings for a little bit more money and then we're set. And we'll take this too, why not? So the vampire counts are all but done, essentially. They have a handful of settlements. I just have to finish them off now. Uh, Norska. Oh, Norska, you like me. Because we've been dealing with the vampire accounts. That is sweet. Allies with Wolfric. Very nice way to go. You enjoyed your first couple of Vortex campaigns to see how the characters went about things. The, yeah, they are uh, more laid back. Um, there's a timer at the top usually. Uh, I didn't realize that it was so lenient. So my first Vortex campaign, I was stressing about uh, finishing the timer really quickly. But it turns out it's actually... You can play Vortex a lot more sandbox than you might expect. Oh, peace treaty now. You want peace? Yeah, no way. Get, get out of here. Not today. And the short turn timers are really good. Of course, if you have like a, a really souped up PC, um, you don't have to worry about it as much. But of course, not everyone has that. Can I auto-resolve? I don't trust it. Boo Radley saying, Anticity, what are you recommending? Marcus on Vortex or Mortal Empires? I think both, both are fun. Uh, it's based on your preference on which one you enjoy more. Some people are saying Vortex in chat. At least one person anyway, so you can try that out. Uh, but both of them are... Both of them sort of work out, I would say. I played, uh, I played it on Mortal Empires recently. And, and it was pretty fun. The thing is, Mortal Empires doesn't give you a lot of the same uh, campaign like coolness, right? It becomes a lot more generic when you play on Mortal Empires. So I would say probably if you haven't played a ton of Warhammer, Vortex is probably more fun. It depends on your preference. If you played other Vortex campaigns before and enjoyed them, play it on Vortex. If you like Mortal Empires, go for that. Oh, oh, we got the we got the spam bots back. Do we have a mod in chat to delete that? No one click it. Don't click it. It's a ruse. Thank you, mods. Thank you, mods, very much. I I sure hope uh no one has fallen for that. I guess I guess it's always like you know, man. I remember back when I was a kid. I got freaked out so much by chain mail. Did anyone uh, get that way back in the day? It's like, you know, forward this to 10 people or you're going to die tomorrow or something. It, it freaked me out so much until someone told me that, yeah, no, it's it's nothing. Um, so, you know, although I, will, I, I would expect uh, someone would fall to the Slanesh box. Although I guess my audience is a lot older, so it wouldn't really be an issue. But you never know. You never know. You like creating trade empires. You don't know how practical that is on Vortex. Um, I think you can trade pretty well with the High Elves because Marcus has a tech upgrade that gives you huge diplomacy buffs. Um, I would say probably go for that. That's, uh, that, that's a really nice way if you want to trade it up. And I think both Mortal Empires and Vortex allows for that. Mr. Robot saying, I see you command the dogs to attack the nearest unit. What is that default keybind? Oh, it's uh, it's not a keybind. It's um, you have to group the units and then you have to group lock them. So there's a tiny little uh, button on the bottom that you can click. I'll show it to you in the next battle. But yeah, if you look up uh, locked control groups and give them attack commands, it'll make sure that everything auto targets. It's super useful if you don't have the micro to spare. Techlist likes Marcus? Oh, that's cool. I was unaware. Province secured. Pretty good. Let's go ahead and pick up uh, probably food again, yeah. Food is always something that you need in Skaven campaigns. Alright, so help it. Oh my gosh. Why is the public order so high? What do they have? Faction, buildings, events, food. Okay, I'm gonna need to. Uh, I'm gonna need to raid Help It into oblivion now. Um, we'll we'll get the dogs. We'll get the dogs to raid it up. That should do it. What do we got here? Uh, ooh, 
get some nice buffs for Thwot. I think, uh, yeah, we'll... I'll give him the Brood Horror first, just so that he doesn't get caught out like last time. And then that should be good. Vortex Campaign and the Lustrian Mainland, though, have become really fun for how crazy it is. Yes, yeah. You have tons of different factions, mostly Lizardmen. So if you're not a friend of them, uh, it's, it's insane. Or you can get tons of allies if you want, if you play as a Lizardman. Okay, going to do more stuff for a bit. Hopefully, you're here when you get back. All right, peace out, Boo Radley. We'll see. I'm coming up towards the end of this campaign. We've done uh, most of the requirements at this point. And there's, uh, I think we killed off the, I think we just killed off the entire vampire accounts. Okay, now I'm going to do a quick check because it's a fairly safe place that I'm in. How generous is the auto resolve? Thank goodness. Okay. It only took the biggest army ever to do that. Uh, and they're not wiped out yet. Interesting. You only ever use it for movement? Yeah, it's, uh, it's strangely convenient in other ways too. It's quite nice. Alright, so I'm thinking the war against the Empire will come soon. I know someone wanted me to try and take out the Wood Elves. With an army like this, it's not impossible. So, maybe we'll take a look. This is pretty good. I might be able to kill off uh, the Griffin Wood. Just, just cause. Just to show the Wood Elves who's boss. Alright, meanwhile, Throt, we can upgrade his... Oh, perfect vigor, that's pretty nice. But we'll give him, uh, we'll give him this first. No bomb rats? Uh, no, not too many bomb rats. I only put in a few. But, uh, overall, we haven't really had a big need for it just yet. Alright, so, first things first. Uh, I have no money, so we're gonna do this. Get some regen, and then if we take a look at this... We've got all of our flesh laboratory upgrades. We just need to get the depths of hell pit. And then complete one of uh, two more of these chapter objectives. So that's another occupying of a settlement, a couple more captives. And then we're done. And then we're done this campaign in one sitting. Think about that. Amazing. Um, and yeah, I think the Griffin Wood will be a really nice one to sack. All right. The best part about the Lizardmen is about the ton of Dutch name puns, yeah. Lizardmen are perfect for puns. Man, I'm surprised that the vampire counts are still alive. I wonder where they are. Maybe uh, Manfred con Confederated Vlad? I'm not sure. But I don't see them around here right now, yeah. They're uh, off the screen for me. But whatever. Let's go ahead and uh, show Dreitra who's boss real quick. Yep. Here we go. War is declared. Crushing defeat. Yeah, right. Come on, Ramsey. You got this. Let's uh, give a little bit more damage here. We got souped up wolf rats against a bunch of unarmored elves. I think we should be fine. And I think uh, just a sack and occupy is what I'm looking for here. And then, uh, yeah, then it's just getting that rebellion going back at home base. Yeah, Throt's campaign is uh, one of the shortest in the entire game. So, it's a really fun one to just play out. So, uh, by the way, the group lock thing, you just hit this and then you click the middle of the army and they'll auto-require. Uh, you issue an attack command by right-clicking. So you just hit 2 and right-click and then you're good. Can you gift me this DLC? Well, if you win one of the bronze uh, multiplayer tournaments that I host, uh, you can actually win a DLC for free. So, um, something to consider if you want to get into multiplayer. I forgot the Wood Elves. Uh, deploying right front and center was not a great idea there. We're going to pull back a little bit first. Wow, my Skaven Lord is so speedy. Oh my goodness. Thankfully, uh, we can dodge ammunition quite well. But I do need to get in a pretty big dive in on these guys before, um... I do need to try and get behind them, actually. Oh, this is gonna be a little bit sketchy. Because they're gonna be retreating back to their infantry. But I might be able to catch a few of them out, and that's all I really need. 
A Skaven Lord. We'll just go over here. We'll hit him with a heal to keep them in combat for just a little bit longer. And then see if we can uh, catch as many of those Wood Elf Range Deepwood Scouts as we can. And there we go. We got a few of them routing, which is our cue to disengage and to charge another day. Dryads. Oh, this is a really nice pick. The double dive in from both sides. That'll catch those Dryads out super quickly. There we go. Their leadership is breaking, so they'll be routing, which means I can charge past them now into the Deepwood Scouts. So we've successfully broken into the Wood Elf lines. Tons of opportunities to charge into the flanks. This isn't a fully optimal fight, but it's definitely more than enough at this point. I think uh, I think the Wood Elves are all but done here. Which is great, because um, usually this army is super annoying against many other compositions. But against a full dog squad, it's, it is a cakewalk. Compared to the other fights, anyways. Alright. A couple more uh, Wildwood Rangers. They are extremely unarmored, so they're going to have a rough time indeed. And then let's pull these guys over here. Alright. Uh, I think my dogs are faster. 105 speed against 94. So, indeed. These are the fastest dogs in the land. And there we go. We got the cavalry caught up. Very nice. And then my assassin can just uh, pick off some tree can, I guess. Now, the biggest problem here are these big trees. The malevolent tree men. But I might be able to push them into army losses. We'll have to see. Uh, they might not, but if I can keep my dogs at high enough HP, that will usually be enough. Um, especially when it comes down to just their remaining lords. Worst case scenario, we'll just have to cycle charge. Wood Elves are somewhat of a problem for you. They can impede your flow on the battle quite uh, efficiently, yeah. yeah wood Elves are, uh, they're, they're a pain. They, they have a completely different sort of play style to all other factions. Um, just because they're so mobile, they rely a lot on their kite. Um, it's a whole different beast to get used to, but... Uh, sort of a lot of mobility and a lot of armor is... Or maybe a medium amount of armor is generally enough to deal with them. And uh, once you figure it out, it's not too, too much of a problem. Let's see, these guys finished off the cavalry. Very nice. We're going to go for this big flank and surround over here. And then a big, uh, yeah, good old flank. We're attacking on all sides. And then we can hit them with the heal to keep them in the fight. So that's quite good for them. Our lord is doing quite well. And nice. I think I can almost times two speed this, but um, it's important that... You don't get too hasty with the speed uh, buffs or the speed multipliers because, you know, one big mistake can really just slow down the battle by a lot more. So it's important that you play efficiently first before you speed things up. Okay, but that's a tree kin down. They died super quickly. And hey, look at that. The army losses hit. Um, yeah, just like that. Easy, easy army losses. All right. I don't really have to chase these guys down, but... Uh, yeah, yeah, it's going to take too long. All right, close victory. Yeah, very close indeed. Oh, what did we get? So, one to two losses. That's pretty good. Yes, the skirmish mode. Mandatory skirmish mode on AI. What a strange choice. But, uh, yeah. The Wood Elves do the best with mandatory skirmish mode. Just because of their 360 and move while shooting. Um, so that can be definitely quite annoying, too. Alright, let's go ahead and sack the settlement. We are rich again. We have tons of ROR's. This guy can occupy now, which will get us one of the... One of these things done, I think. Yeah, one... Oh, hey, look, we got the three chapter objectives done. Uh, but it's not showing up on the victory conditions just yet, which means we just have to, uh, get help it. To, uh, to have a, um, have a rebellion, and then we're good. Alright, what are we looking at here? Don't really need recruitment. Uh, let's get looter. Let's turn this into a food production facility. Guys, we're in, we're in for the home stretch. This campaign is nearly done. If you have to fight France or the Empire, it will take a little bit longer, but we'll be okay.
All right. Oh, oh man. So, can't you abandon Hell Pit, or does it not work on capitals? It looked like it wasn't working. Uh, the the option wasn't popping up. I'm not sure why. Also, hey, Gorst is back. Why not abandon Hell Pit? I'll check again. I'll check again. Um, if I can abandon it, I will. It's just a little bit of a hit to my um, public order and stuff, but that's fine. Here we go. Quick check. Can it be done? Okay, help it. Get ready to be abandoned. The fates have surely selected you for greatness. Oh, yep. Thank you. Thank you, advisor. All right. What do we got? Come on. Help it. Uh, yeah, if I click this thing, right, that's usually how you abandon it. Nope. No, it's here. Oh, I'm silly. I'm silly. You can't abandon it. All right. All right, guys. I'm sorry. You know, sometimes you just don't know how to play Warhammer, I guess. This guy's going to finish off the Vampire Counts because I've wanted to deal with him for a while. Let's go ahead and finish our upgrades over here. Why not? Ooh, Tier 5. Look at that. And then Prag. Uh, sure. Get an upgrade in. All right. Next turn, help. It's going to be down. And we should have enough uh, to resettle it. <laughs> Biblington with the lol. Oh my gosh. Yeah. All right. All right. We got there, guys. We got there. And then uh, it's just making that one building and we're good. I might even have to uh, cancel some buildings. Oh, wow. Look at that. The Empire. They did my work for me. Yeah, yeah. We got Ramsey. He's the only other Lord we needed. Oh, there were so many good, good suggestions out there. There's going to be a Lord Emma, uh, Quinn Anwin, Snoop. Snoop Wolfrat, Caesar Millen, Caesar Milan, I don't know. Hydrates, Cer Cerberats, yeah, tons of them. Ratpolian, all, all glorious rat suggestions from chat. But all right. The moment of truth, maximum colonization. We turned food into people. And now I just have to get this. And guys, the home stretch. We done did it. I think we've we finally managed to defeat to win Warhammer as Skaven with rats only. I'm not I won't call it early, but it's looking like a close victory. Do I lose any? Eh, we can auto resolve. Yeah, it's looking like uh like we should have it. Never take this by the way. Casualty Casualty replenishment minus five for five turns is not worth the money unless you're getting a lot of money. More slaves. More All right, there we go. That's enough money to survive just a little bit longer. And we'll see how long we can hold out before the Empire declares war on us. Why don't we? There we go. A little bit more food. Always nice. And it's just ending turns until we get there. Ah, nice. Always nice to finish these in, in one day. You know, you don't leave any loose threads hanging. How long did this last? Four hours, 30 minutes-ish? It looks like we'll finish about five hours. Which, uh... Castle Templehof, oh no. Yeah. In terms of, uh, legendary campaigns, probably shorter than most, I would say. With just the rats, yeah. Rats only escaping. Oh, man. It was fun, though. It was fun. I do really like controlling uh, wolf units in general, if you guys couldn't tell. Um, just because of uh, how much uh, the skill ceiling on them is great. There's no upgrades I can really take that are great. But all right. Um, I, don't, I don't really need to fight the Beastmen at this point, right? All right. So, uh, nice. I guess we just keep passing turns, why don't we? I won't fight the Empire just because I'm starting to get a little bit hungry now and I'm ready to, to go and get some food. I will fight Drycha though because she's going to be annoying just sacking all of my settlements. Uh, yeah, so two dogs only. Dogs only. Oh, did I say rats only? Oh, no. Oh, no. Yes, haha, rats only Skaven. What a challenging run.
Something feels odd about saying, yep, I won, when you lose three settlements in two turns and have negative 46 gold per turn. That is true, but if the game thinks I won, it's good enough. Alright, get over here, Drycha. Come to avenge everyone that has gone punished by the Wood Elves. Show them who's boss. Look, even Drycha has a little bit of uh, dogs only. That's nice, some spiders, some, some birds. I think, uh, what's it, the next runner-up was a uh, Norska dogs only run, in terms of the vote. But a Drycha dogs only would have been pretty interesting. Alright, what do we got? Got a huge wide deployment, we have tons of, uh, of these sort of ranged glade guard. They'll have skirmish mode on though, which means we can more or less just uh, run up and forwards. And just get in the fight. There we go. Got to make sure the charges actually go off, though. And then we'll be A-OK. -okay. I think our wolf rats are strong enough where I can just take this fight straight up. But if things start going south, I can just uh, pull back and retreat. Okay, and things are going a little bit south. So let's go ahead and pull these guys back and focus on this left flank over here. Why don't we? The cave bats will be a little bit annoying. But uh, yeah, these guys need to pull away. Man, it... It's crazy. The moment you're not careful about your army control, things go badly so quickly with this run. Um, but like when you're actually focusing on the micro, it goes so well. You just assume that you can win these fights with one click. Strange, uh, strange position. Rakarth dogs only. Yeah, yeah. I uh, I tried it out because I was worried people would actually vote for it. Rakarth dogs only is possible, but you have to disband your entire starting army. And uh, to get dogs, you have to raid a Norska, Norskan region until until they give you dog drops. Um, it's uh, yeah, it's a little bit awkward of a start, but it is actually possible to win from there because uh, with enough good control, the dogs will more or less carry the day for you. Oh yeah, yeah, just blitzing it, blitzing through the campaigns. Uh, although this Wood Elf army gave me a lot more trouble than I would have thought. But uh, as soon as the numbers start thinning, we're good. Um, and my dogs will rally. At least some of them anyways. And then we'll be fine. We'll be fine. Alright. A lot of my dogs are routing off now. Let's let's restabilize real quick. Okay, let's just let's just <laughs> let's just make sure we don't lose this battle. Alright, there we go. So uh, we'll let them sort of reform their ranks a little bit and then we're gonna deal with these spider riders first here we go uh, a couple of these great hawks will go down pretty easily i think they have pretty low armor seven armor look at that oh this spell by the way will delete dogs um i should note and as you saw it did <laughs> thankfully we're ending this campaign before the ai starts getting a hold of all of their aoe's because those are brutal Absolutely brutal. I swear, are we going to lose to Drycha? Come on, not like this. Whoops. Not like this. Oh my gosh. Come on, rally. I think I only have one more route left on my dogs before they're done for. So I have to be a little bit careful, but... Uh, it's like, it's all Glade Guard at this point. Just range units. Um, they're not too scary. No, not again! <laughs> no, oh my gosh. Oh, the brutality. The absolute brutality. Come on, don't rout. You all have stand or die. If you don't stand, you will die. Come on. <laughs> Alright, so we may have made some misplays there. I will admit. I will admit overconfidence is slow and insidious. And we may or may not have experienced that today. But we didn't lose the whole army. So I guess we'll come back later. Wow. Wow, that is rough. Yeah, I know, the AI using magic properly. Who could have predicted this? Not me. Yep, Awakening of the Woods is, is greater than dogs. You know, I should do an Awakening of the Woods only campaign. Maybe that's, that's the real challenge. Yeah, madness. <laughs> All right, oh my gosh, so many dogs are gone. I'll be back. I'll be back. Hopefully that doesn't encourage the Empire to fight me. That would be unfortunate. 
There we go. Uh, this guy isn't even... Uh, he's not even immortal yet, so he might actually... If he dies, that would be bad, but I have enough dogs where I think I'm okay. Alright, that's enough shenanigans. Let's get back to the hell pitting. I need 5,000 gold. If only I had won that battle. There we go, there's 5,000 gold. There we go, we're done in seven turns. The clock is ticking. Drights are too strong, I know. Yo, Darkest Dungeon 1, I played so much of that. I played a bit of 2, but... Uh, nowadays, I don't have the time to really uh, grind that out. Giants only campaign? Oh, wow, that is fun. And that would be in the theme of uh, Giant Grant games. It would be pretty fun. Wow, she didn't sally out and fight me? Come on, Drycha. At least give me that. Alright. The vengeance for Drycha commences. This is this has become a vengeance campaign. Rot is gonna be blitzing down there as fast as he can to uh, to give her a hard time. This guy's just gonna head up north and defend that city so that we don't get surprise sieged and have to wait longer than we have to. There we go. Some more wolf rats, just in case. You never know. Oh, whoops. We had some extra mutagen, but whatever. <laughs> Mr. Robot. Nice one. Nice. Ogres only. I was thinking about it, but. Ogre is only coming at turn 30, but I think maybe you could pull it off. Maybe. Oh, yes. Yeah, I was thinking about that one, too. Bloated corpses only. I feel like maybe, maybe it would be possible. The amount of cheese that you would have to do would be legendary, but I don't think it's actually impossible. All right, Thwat. The vengeance is here. Oh, what the? He does not have a lot of, uh... Oh, that's the wrong guy. Oh my gosh, he's dead. <laughs> no, oh no, that's not what I wanted. All right, let's see if we can salvage the situation real quick. Let's give, um... Yeah, we'll, we'll make them all bomber rats. This way, uh, they can sort of just suicide themselves to win me the fight. All right, where's that? Uh, hell pit looking good. Pass turn. Yeah, but bloated corpses only. That would be worthy of a giant Grant Games video. But how would you do it? You would need... You can recruit them normally, right? Um, and you can make their upkeep really low, which would help. Um, the thing is, it's just, it would just be really hard to capture settlements. Because every battle, you're just losing your entire army. Uh, oh, Okai is a, is a person. That does a video send. Oh, okay, that's cool. They tried a bloated corpse challenge and it didn't go well. Okay, well, challenge accepted then. Challenge accepted. Okay, let's go over and uh, just sit right there. This guy's gonna continue north. Hell pit looking good. What lord would that require? I feel like maybe Silostra would be good. You could also go Noctilus to basically never lose, but I don't think you'd ever win. Which obviously is a problem. Powell saying I think it's possible. You know, maybe we'll do it. Maybe we'll try it out. You would need a monster or a lord. A lot of them are pretty good. Um, and of course, if you can get the Sword of Cain, you're basically set for one of your lords. But I don't know. It'd probably have to be Noctilus, maybe. Silostra does start closer to the Sword of Cain, though. You know what? We'll, we'll finally give him the peace treaty, just so he doesn't cause me any issues. Just ignore single entities. Yes, yeah, single entities are a pain. Strangely enough, uh, bloated corpses are actually strong against single entities. Um, if you... If you uh, give them unkillable with Eltharian's buff, uh, they actually hit like trucks, which is pretty funny. You just need to finish two, finish three chapters. Yeah, I think I already did it. I'm pretty sure I already did it, but I'll have to double check. All right, so now we're going to do uh, a better deployment here. Uh, so the AI, as you know, is a str strategist master. Oh God, I butchered that. As you all know, the AI is really good at strategy. So if I just show my wolf rats like this, and then have a ton in the forest, then I'm good. Can I get- can I get a rotate? 
Yeah, there we go. All right, nice. Now we just have to make sure we don't eat a bunch of AoEs and then we're good. Oh, thank goodness they, they whiffed one of the AoEs while I was charging in. Thank goodness. All right, what's that? Now we just gotta deal with the archers and then, and then we're good. A couple of them are firing from the sides. I'm not too worried about them as their damage isn't extremely high. And then it's just a little bit of clean up here. Nice. All right, let's get some clan rats there. Just give them a hard time. I think uh, the tree man just used another spell. Thankfully, he did not kill everything. And then Throt with his rat ogre summons. Just the support I need. All right. Nice. Meanwhile, over here, clan rats dying for the clan. As they should. Oh, no, you're talking about three chapters for, uh, for like, a book or something. All right. Sorry, I have, a, I have a bad habit of just assuming everything in chat is about what's going on in, on screen. Just because I have a hard time keeping up with chat. All right. So I think this is going a lot better than it was last time. That's pretty good. There's a lot more of a, uh, a wider gap on this right flank, too. And I can actually start chasing down uh, some of these archers. Finally, vengeance for all the poor rats that they hunted down. All right, what else do we got? I think, uh, I think I just have to make sure I don't group up my units. So let's split these guys off and go over here. Now, sort of the big question is whether or not a long term campaign could actually keep this up. I assume it would, given that you can get just an absurd amount of mutations on your units and then things would mostly play out the same but one has to wonder if like the usual high elf doom stack with a bunch of arcane phoenixes would just run over this who knows who knows but i don't i don't plan to explore that today as you can see in the top left uh the sun is starting to set it is getting pretty late and i'm ready to to finish this campaign and call it a day all right, first things first, though, we got to beat these darned Wood Elves that have caused minor issues that I want to get revenge on. Your least favorite thing in campaign is fighting Wood Elves. Yeah. Of all the different factions, I think the AI pilots the Wood Elves probably one of the best. Like, yeah, the AI probably pilots the Wood Elves the best out of a lot of different factions. But I think we finally got them. Yes, there we go. They're running for the hills. Vengeance is mine. This tree man is um, is unbreakable. So uh, let's go ahead and deal with him real quick. Thwart should be able to win that quite handily. We'll make sure we don't commit too many wolf rats so they don't get deleted off the face of the earth. Who is this? Oh my gosh, that AoE. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, this campaign would not go great if it went super long. Alright, there we go. Tree man down! Victory! Alright, sweet. Thankfully, there's no final battle that we have to play either, since this is Mortal Empires and not Vortex. Alright. Sweet, 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 sweet. I think uh, he actually didn't kill too many dogs with that final AoE. Just because it, it was doing more uh, just AoE damage. Hey, human boy. We are still going. And we win this campaign in about three turns. If, uh, if all goes well. Sure, I'll occupy. Your favorite strategy as greenskins is to assemble four armies outside of the forest. Wah, and then auto-resolve every battle. Now that's a good, that's a good way to go about it for sure. Yeah, we win in three turns, I think. Let's see. Complete. Yep. Oh boy, it's happening. Oh, hey, nice. You don't have to fight the final battle in Vortex? Oh, well, there you go. That's nice. Doesn't Thwat have to... Uh, I don't know if it counts as a campaign victory, but... He does have to fight Ariel, right? I believe... Uh, it was at least part of a, a speed run that I did a while back. All right, there we go. I'm not going to pick too many fights with Thwat, as we have a. Uh, we've dealt with Drycha. All of our enemies are done for. 
If you go and look at this. Oh no, she still exists, but anyways, doesn't matter too much. She's more she's she's effectively done for. We have Hell Pit over here. And two more turns, guys, and then we're good. Yeah, Thwat had a battle. It was it was against the sisters and um Ariel, I believe. Uh, sure, I'll take it. Nice, so our only enemy left is Dreitcha. This is like a, this is a very solid campaign one. But yeah, it's the one where you have to like disrupt the, you know, the summoning or something. Or they're like making sure that chaos doesn't come into the world or, you know, some other lore thing that I have no idea about. That, I feel like that battle is, uh, I feel like it's mandatory, but maybe not. Meanwhile, Throg just raiding me, just cause. And I believe after this end turn, we are good. Oh my goodness. Here we go, guys. Will it be done? Yes, yeah, his, his campaign objective is to eat Ariel, yes. They have like a whole uh, screenshot for it and everything. It's gruesome. Absolutely gruesome, and there we go. There we go. What in the world is this? Is this like Wolfric just going ham in Lustria? <laughs> what? What is this? Wolfric, what are you doing? He's wandering. Anyways, there we go. The campaign's done. I think today we have successfully proven that you can indeed defeat the Warhammer legendary campaign on very hard difficulty with dogs only and actually uh, without too much of an issue gg well played indeed the rules are as follows over here and i hope you guys enjoyed i definitely did um it's a very very fun campaign and i think uh i'll probably be doing more of this in the future just because um it seems like you know if people are coming in to watch there does seem to be some demand so if you want to see more you know campaign exclusive stuff feel free to subscribe only if you want to and you want to see uh, more content like this. And uh, yeah, I hope to see you guys later. Um, I guess it's not much to really go over otherwise. Um, I am morally obligated to talk about the members though who have supported the channel. Rogelio Alonso and M. McRiderface. Thank you very much for being my higher tier members. The support actually does help me a lot to, to be able to produce content like this. So. I think that, that's basically out of the way. Yep, that's right. Boo Radley, hey, you're back. Yeah, we, we finished. We finished. Uh, you can see here. It is, um, it is quite the journey. You just got home. Nice. But uh, yeah, I think that's about it. So I'll, I'll just scroll past this real quick to see the progress. Tons of territory gained and lost. The Empire has conquered. But we have finished the campaign. So thank you very much. And I'll see you guys uh, probably on Wednesday. Peace out, y'all.